the divine comedy of Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfell. Inferno Canto. Midway upon the journey of our life I found myself within a forest dark, for the straightforward pathway had been lost. Ah, me! How hard a thing it is to say what was this forest savage, rough, unstern, which in the very thought renews the fear. So bitter is it, death is little more but of the good to treat which there I found, speak will I of the other things I saw there. I can't well repeat how there I entered, so full was I of slumber at the moment in which I had abandoned the true way. But after I had reached a mountain's foot, at that point where the valley terminated, which had with consternation pierced my heart, upward I looked, and I beheld its shoulders, vested already with that planet's rays which leadeth others right by every road. Then was the fear a little quieted that in my heart's lake had endured throughout the night, which I had passed so piteously. And even as he, who, with distressful breath, forth issued from the sea upon the shore, turns to the water perilous and gazes, so did my soul, but still was fleeing onward, turn itself back to behold the pass which never yet a living person left. After my weary body I had rested, the way resumed I on the desert slope, so that the firm foot ever was the lore. And lo! Almost where the scent began, a panther light and swift exceedingly, which with a spotted skin was covered o'er. Never moved she from before my face, nay, rather did impede so much my way, that many times I to return had turned. The time was the beginning of the morning, and up the sun was mounting with those stars that with him were, what time the love divine. At first in motion set those beauteous things so were to me occasion of good hope, the variegated skin of that wild beast. The hour of time, and the delicious season but not so much, that did not give me fear of lion's aspect which appeared to me. He seemed as if against me he were coming with head uplifted, and with ravenous hunger, so that it seemed there was afraid of him. And a she-wolf, that with all hungering seemed to be laden in her meagerness, and many folk has cost too live forlorn. She brought upon me so much heaviness, with the fright that from her aspect came, that I'd a hope relinquished of the height. And as he is who willingly acquires, and the time comes that causes him to lose, who weeps in all his thoughts and is despondent. And such made me that beast without in peace, which, coming on against me by degrees, thrust me back thither where the sun is silent. While I was rushing downward to the lowland, before mine eyes did one present himself, who seemed from long continued silence hoarse. Have pity on me! Unto him I cried, Which ear thou art, or shade, or real man? Subjulia was I born, though it was late, and lived at Rome under the good Augustus, during the time of false unlying gods. A poet was I, and I sang that just son of Anchises, who came forth from Troy, after that Ilion the superb was burned. Now art thou that Virgilius on that fountain which spreads abroad so wide a river of speech? I made response to him with bashful forehead, Thou art my master, and my author thou, Thou art alone the one from whom I took the beautiful style that has done honor to me. Be it behoves to take another road. Responded he when he beheld me weeping, If from this savage place thou wouldst escape, Because this beast, at which thou crayest out, Suffers not any one to pass her way, But so doth harass him, that she destroys him and has a nature so malign and ruthless, that never doth she glut her greedy will, and after food is hungrier than before. Many the animals with whom she weds, and more they shall be still, until the greyhound comes, who shall make her perish in her pain. He shall not feed on either earth or pelf, but upon wisdom, and on love and virtue twixt Feltro and Feltro shall his nation be. Of that low Italy shall he be the saviour, on whose account the maid Camilla died, Euryalus, Turnus, Nisus, of their wounds. Through every city shall he hunt her down, until he shall have driven her back to hell, there from whence envy first did let her loose. 
Therefore I think and judge it for thy best thou follow me, and I will be thy guide, and lead thee hence through the eternal place. Where thou shalt hear the desperate lamentations, shalt see the ancient spirits disconsolate, who cry out each one for the second death. And thou shalt see those who contented are within the fire, because they hope to come, whenever it may be, to the blessed people. To whom then, if thou wishest to ascend, a soul shall be for that then I more worthy with her at my departure I will leave thee. Because that emperor, who reigns above, and that I was rebellious to his law, wills that through me none come into his city. Inferno Canto I Day was departing, and the embrowned air released the animals that are on earth from their fatigues and I the only one. Made myself ready to sustain the war, both of the way and likewise of the woe, which memory that airs not shall retrace. O muses, O high genius, now assist me! O memory, that didst write down what I saw, here thy nobility shall be manifest. Thou sayest, that of Silvius the parent, while yet corruptible, unto the world immortal went, and was there bodily. But, if the adversary of all evil was courteous, thinking of the high effect that issue would from him, and who, and what? To men of intellect unmeet it seems not, for he was of great Rome, and of her empire in the imperial heaven as father chosen. The which and what, wishing to speak the truth, were established as the holy place wherein sits the successor of the greatest Peter. Upon this journey whence thou givest him vaunt, things did he hear, which the occasion were both of his victory on the papal mantle. Thither went afterwards the chosen vessel, to bring back comfort thence unto that faith, which of salvation's way is the beginning. But I why thither come, or who concedes it? I not Aeneas am, I am not Paul, nor I, nor others, think me worthy of it. And as he is who unwills what he willed, and by new thoughts doth his intention change, so that from his design he quite withdraws. Such I became upon that dark hillside, because and thinking I consumed the emprise, which was so very prompt in the beginning. Replied that shade of the magnanimous, thy soul attainted is with cowardice, which many times a man encumbers so, it turns him back from honor and enterprise, as false sight doth a beast when he is shy. That thou mayst free thee from this apprehension, I'll tell thee why I came, and what I heard at the first moment when I grieved for thee. Among those was I who are in suspense, and a fair, saintly lady called to me in such wise, I besought her to command me. Her eyes were shining brighter than the star, and she began to say, gentle and low, with voice angelical, in her own language. O spirit courteous of Mantua, of whom the fame still in the world endures, and shall endure, long-lasting as the world. A friend of mine, and not the friend of fortune, upon the desert slope is so impeded upon his way, that he has turned through terror. And may I fear, already be so lost, that I too late have risen to his succor, from that which I have heard of him in heaven. Fester thee now, and with thy speech ornate, and with what needful is for his release, assist him so, that I may be consoled. Beatrice am I, who do bid thee go, I come from there, where I would fain return love moved me, which compelleth me to speak. When I shall be in presence of my lord, full often will I praise thee unto him. Then paused she, and thereafter I began. The lady of virtue, thou alone through whom the human race exceedeth all contained within the heaven that has the lesser circles. So grateful unto me is thy commandment, to obey, if t'were already done, were late no farther needst thou ope to me thy wish. But the cause tell me why thou dost not shun the here descending down into this centre from the vast place thou burnest to return to. Since thou wouldst fain so inwardly discern, briefly will I relate, she answered me, why I am not afraid to enter here. Of those things only should one be afraid which have the power of doing others harm of the rest, no, because they are not fearful. God in his mercy such created me that misery of yours attains me not, nor any flame assails me of this burning. 
a gentle lady is in heaven who grieves at this impediment to which i send thee so that stern judgment there above is broken in her entreaty she besought lucia unsaid my faithful one now stands in need of thee and unto thee i recommend him lucia foe of all that cruel is hastened away and came unto the place where i was sitting with the ancient rachel said she the true praise of god why so curst thou not him who loved thee so for thee he issued from the vulgar herd never were persons in the world so swift to work their wheel unto escape their woe as i after such words as these were uttered came hither downward from my blessed seat confiding in thy dignified discourse which honours thee on those who've listened to it after she thus had spoken unto me weeping her shining eyes she turned away whereby she made me swifter in my coming and unto thee i came as she desired i have delivered thee from that wild beast which barred the beautiful mountain's short ascent but is it then why why dost thou delay why is such baseness bedded in thy heart daring and hardihood why hast thou not even as the flowerets by nocturnal chill bowed down and closed when the sun whitens them uplift themselves all open on their stems such i became with my exhausted strength and such good courage to my heart there coursed that i began like an intrepid person thou hast my heart so with desire disposed to the adventure with these words of thine that to my first intent i've returned I entered on the deep unsavage way. Justice incited my sublime creator, created me divine omnipotence, the highest wisdom and the primal love. These words in somber color I beheld written upon the summit of a gate whence Their senses master hard to me. And after he had laid his hand on mine with joyful mien, whence I was comforted, he led me in among the secret things. Their sighs, complaints, and ululations loud resounded through the air without a star, whence I, at the beginning, wept there at. Languages diverse, horrible dialects, accents of anger, words of agony, and voices high and hoarse, with sound of hands. Made up a tumult that goes whirling on forever in that air forever black, even as the sand doth, when the whirlwind breathes. And I, who had my head with horror bound, said, master what is this which now i hear but folk is this which seems by pain so vanquished commingled are they with the caitiff choir of angels who have not rebellious been nor faithful were to god but were for self O oh, master what so grievous is to these that maketh them lament so sore he answered i will tell thee very briefly these have no longer any hope of death and this blind life of theirs is so debased they envious are of every other fate and i who looked again beheld a banner which whirling round ran on so rapidly that of all pause it seemed to me indignant and after it there came so long a train of people that i ne'er would have believed that ever death so many had undone when some among them i had recognized I looked, and I beheld the shade of him who made through cowardice the great refusal. Forthwith I comprehended, and was certain, that this the sect was of the caitiff wretches hateful to God and to his enemies. These miscreants, who never were alive, were naked, and were stung exceedingly by gadflies and by hornets that were there. These did their faces irrigate with blood, which with their tears commingled at their feet by the disgusting worms was gathered up these things shall all be known to thee as soon as we our footsteps stay upon the dismal shore of echiron then with mine eyes ashamed and downward cast fearing my words might irksome be to him from speech refrained i till we reach the river hope never more to look upon the heavens i come to lead you to the other shore to the eternal shades and heat and frost by other ways, by other ports thou to the shore shalt come, not here, for passage a lighter vessel needs must carry thee. And unto him the guy. Vex thee not, Karen, it is so willed there wearer's power to do that which is willed and farther question not.
There it were quieted the fleecy cheeks of him, the ferryman of the livid fen, who round about his eyes had wheels of flame. But all those souls who weary were unnaked, their color changed, and gashed their teeth together as soon as they had heard those cruel words. God, they blasphemed on their progenitors, the human race, the place, the time, the seed of their engendering and of their birth. For after all together they drew back, bitterly weeping, to the accursed shore, which waith every man who fears not God. Karen the demon, with the eyes of glad, beckoning to them, collects them all together, beats with his or whoever lags behind. As in the autumn time the leaves fall off, first one and then another, till the branch unto the earth surrenders all its spoils. In similar wise the evil seed of Adam throw themselves from that margin one by one at signals as a bird unto its lure. So they depart across the dusky wave, and there upon the other side they land, again on this side a new troop assembles. The courteous master said to me, All those who perish in the wrath of God hear me together out of every land. And ready are they to pass o'er the river, because celestial justice spurs them on, so that their fear is turned into desire. This being finished, all the dusk champagne trembled so violently that of that terror the recollection bathes me still with sweat. The land of tears gave forth a blast of wind, and fulminated a vermilion light, which overmastered in me every sense. And as a man whom sleep hath seized, I fell. Inferno canto if broke the deep lethargy within my head a heavy thunder, so that I upstarted, like to a person who by force is wakened. And round about I moved my arrested eyes, uprise and erect, and steadfastly I gazed, to recognize the place wherein I was. True is it that upon the verge I found me of the abysmal valley dolorous, that gathers thunder of infinite ululations. Obscure, profound it was, unnebulous, so that by fixing on its depths my sight nothing whatever I discerned therein. Let us descend now into the blind world. I will be first, and thou shalt second be, and I, who of his color was aware, said, How shall I come, if thou art afraid, or won't to be a comfort to my fears? There, as it seemed to me from listening, were lamentations none but only sighs, that tremble made the everlasting air. And this rose from sorrow without torment, which the crowds had, that many were ungreat, of infants and of women and of men. That they sinned not, and if they merit had, tis not enough, because they had not baptism which is the portal of the faith thou holdest. And if they were before Christianity, in the right manner they adored not God, and among such as these am I myself. Great grief seized on my heart when this I heard, because some people of much worthiness I knew, who in that limbo were suspended. Tell me, my master, tell me, thou my lord. Again I, with desire of being certain of that faith which overcometh every error, came any one by his own merit hence, or by another's who was blessed thereafter. And he, who understood my covert speech, hence he drew forth the shade of the first parent, and that of his son Abel, and of Noah, of Moses the lawgiver, and the obedient. Abraham, patriarch, and David, king, Israel with his father and his children, and Rachel, for whose sake he did so much. We ceased not to advance because he spake. But still we're passing onward through the forest, the forest, say I, of thick crowded ghosts. Not very far as yet our way had gone this side the summit, when I saw a fire that overcame a hemisphere of darkness. We were a little distant from it still, but not so far that I in part discerned not that honorable people held that place. O thou who honorest every art and science, who may these be, which such great honor have, that from the fashion of the rest it parts them. The honorable name, that sounds of them above there in thy life, wins grace in heaven, that so advances them. In the meantime a voice was heard by me. All honor be to the preeminent poet his shade returns again, that was departed. After the voice had ceased and quiet was, for mighty shades I saw approaching a semblance had they nor sorrowful nor glad. That one is Homer, 
poet's sovereign, he who comes next is Horus, the satirist the third is Ovid, and the last is Lucan. Thus I beheld assemble the fair school of that lord of the song preeminent, who are the others like an eagle soars. When they together had discoursed somewhat, they turned to me with signs of salutation, and on beholding this my master smiled. And more of honor still much more, they did me, and that they made me one of their own band, so that the sixth was I am in so much wit. Thus we went on as far as to the light, things saying tis becoming to keep silent, as was the saying of them where I was. We came unto a noble castle's foot, seven times encompassed with lofty walls, defended round by a fair rivulet. This we passed over even as firm ground through portals seven I entered with these sages we came into a meadow of fresh verdure. People were there with solemn eyes and slow, of great authority in their countenance they spake but seldom and with gentle voices. Thus we withdrew ourselves upon one side into an opening luminous and lofty, so that they all of them were visible. Their opposite, upon the green enamel, were pointed out to me the mighty spirits, whom to have seen I feel myself exalted. I saw Electra with companions many, amongst whom I knew both Hector and Aeneas, Caesar in armor with gerfalcon eyes. I saw Camilla and Pendizili on the other side, and saw the king Latinus, who with Lavinia his daughter sat. I saw that Brutus who drove Tarquin forth, Lucretia, Julia, Marcia, and Cornelia, and saw alone apart the Saladin. When I had lifted up my brows a little, the master I beheld of those who know, sit with his philosophic family. All gaze upon him, and all do him honor. There I beheld both Socrates and Plato, who near him before the others stand. Democritus, who puts the world on chance, Dugens, Anaxagoras, Anthels, Zeno, Empedocles, and Heraclitus. Of qualities I saw the good collector, Hyde Dioscorides, and Orpheus saw I, Tully and Livy, and Moral Seneca. Euclid, Jim Trishan, and Ptolemy, Galen, Hippocrates, and Avicenna, Averroes, who the great comment made. I cannot all of them portray in full, because so drives me onward the long theme, that many times the word comes short of fact. The sixfold company in two divides another way my sapient guide conducts me forth from the quiet to the air that trembles. And to a place I come where nothing shines. Thus I descended out of the first circle down to the second, that less space begirds, and so much greater dull, that goads to wailing. There standeth Minos horribly, and snarls examines the transgressions at the entrance, judges, and sends according as he girds him. I say, that when the spirit evil-born cometh before him wholly it confesses on this discriminator of transgressions. Seeth what place in hell is meet for, it girds himself with his tail as many times as great he wishes it should be thrust down. Always before him many of them stand, they go by turns, each one unto the judgment they speak, and hear, and then are downward hurled. O thou that to this dolorous hostelry comest, said Minus to me, when he saw me, leaving the practice of so great an office. Look how thou enterest, and in whom thou trustest, let not the portal's amplitude deceive thee. And unto him my guide, why crest thou too? And now begin the dulls of notes to grow audible unto me. Now am I come there where much lamentation strikes upon me. I came into a place mute of all light, which bellows as the sea does in a tempest, if by opposing winds it is combated. The infernal hurricane that never rests hurtles the spirits onward in its repain whirling them round, unsmitting it molests them. When they arrive before the precipice, there are the shrieks, the plaints, and the laments there they blaspheme the puissance divine. I understood that unto such a torment the carnal malefactors were condemned, who reason subjugate to appetite. And as the wings of starlings bear them on in the cold season in large band and full, so doth that blast the spirit's maledict. It hither, thither, downward, upward, drives them, no hope doth comfort them forevermore, not of repose, but even of lesser pain. 
And as the cranes go chanting forth their lays, making an air a long line of themselves, so saw I coming, uttering lamentations. Shadows borne onward by the aforesaid stress. Whereupon said I, Master, who are those people whom the black air so castigates? The first of those of whom intelligence thou fain wouldst have. Then said he unto me, The Empress was of many languages. To sensual vices she was so abandoned, that lustful she made licit in her law, to remove the blame to which she had been led. She is Simaramis, of whom we read that she succeeded Ninus, and was his spouse she held the land which now the Sultan rules. Ellen I saw, for whom so many ruthless seasons revolved, and saw the great Achilles, who at the last hour combated with love. Paris I saw, Tristan and more than a thousand shades did he name and point out with his finger who love had separated from our life. After that I had listened to my teacher, naming the dames of Eldon Cavaliers, pity prevailed, and I was nigh bewildered. O oh, poet, willingly speak would I to those two, who go together, and seem upon the wine to be so light. And he to me. Thou'lt mark when they shall be nearer to us, and then do thou implore them by love which leadeth them, and they will come. Soon as the wind in our direction sways them, my voice uplift I. O oh, ye weary souls, come speak to us, if no one interdicts it. Then as turtle doves, called onward by desire, with open unsteady wings to the sweet nest fly through the air by their volition born. So came they from the band where Dio is, approaching us athwart the air malign, so strong was the affectionate appeal. If were the king of the universe our friend, we would pray unto him to give thee peace, since thou hast pity on our woe perverse. Of what it pleases thee to hear and speak, that will we hear, and we will speak to you, while silent is the wind as it is now. Did at the city wherein I was born, upon the seashore where the Po descends to rest in peace with all his retinue. Love that ungentle heart doth swiftly cease, seize this man for the person beautiful that was ta'en from me, and still the mode offends me. Love that exempts no one beloved from loving, seized me with pleasure of this man so strongly, that, as thou seest, it doth not yet desert me. As soon as I had heard those souls tormented, I bowed my face, and so long held it down until the poet said to me. When I made answer, I began. Alas, how many pleasant thoughts, how much desire, conducted these unto the dolorous pass. But, if to recognize the earliest root of love in us thou hast so great desire, I will do even as he who weeps and speaks. One day we were reading were for our delight of Lancelot how love did him enthrall. Alone we were and without any fear. Full many a time our eyes together drew that reading, and drove the color from our faces, but one point only was it that overcame us. When as we read of the much longed for smile being by such a noble lover kissed, this one who ne'er from me shall be divided. And all the while one spirit uttered this, the other one did weep so, that, for pity, I swooned away as if I had been dying. Inferno can't avoid. At the return of consciousness, I closed before the pity of those two relations, which utterly with sadness had confused me. New torments I behold, and new tormented around me, whichsoever way I move, and whichsoever way I turn and gaze. In the third circle am I of the rain eternal, melodic, and cold, and heavy its law and quality are never new. Huge hail, and water some brood, and snow, athwart the tenebrous air pour down a main noisome the earth is that receiveth this. Cerberus, monster cruel and uncouth, with his three gullets like a dog is barking over the people that are there submerged. Red eyes he has, and unctuous beard and black, and belly large, and armed with claws, his hands he rends the spirit's lays, and quarters them. How the rain maketh them like unto dogs, one side they make a shelter for the other, oft turn themselves the wretched reprobates. When Cerberus perceived us, the great worm, 
His mouth he opened, and displayed his tusks, not a limb had he that was motionless. And my conductor, with his spans extended, took of the earth, and with his fists well filled, he threw it into those rapacious gullets. Such as that dog is, who by barking craves, and quiet grows soon as his food he knows, for to devour it he but thinks and struggles. The like became those muzzles filthy ground of Cerberus the demon, who so thunders over the souls that they would fain be deaf. We passed across the shadows which subdues the heavy rainstorm, and we placed our feet upon their vanity that person seems. They all were lying prone upon the earth, excepting one, who sat upright as soon as he beheld us passing on before him. He said to me, Recall me, if thou canst thyself wast made before I was unmade. You citizens were wont to call me Checo for the pernicious sin of gluttony I, as thou ceased, am battered by this rain. Then afterwards behoves it this one fall within three suns, and rise again the other by force of him who now is on the coast. I will it hold its forehead a long while, keeping the other under heavy burdens, how it weeps there it and is indignant. Barinetta Antegea, once so worthy, Jacopo Rustic, Uxe, Arigo, and Mosca, and others who on good deeds set their thoughts. Then his straightforward eyes he turned askance, eyed me a little, and then bowed his head he fell there with prone like the other blind. So we passed onward o'er the filthy mixture of shadows and of rain with footsteps slow, touching a little on the future life. Master, these torments here, will they increase after the mighty sentence, or lesser be, or will they be as burning? Round in a circle by that road we went, speaking much more, which, I do not repeat, we came unto the point where the descent is. There we found Plotus the great enemy. Inferno can't have vi- Pape Satan, Pape Satan, I'll have Thus Plotus with his clucking voice began, and that benignant sage, who all things knew, but not thy fear harm thee for any power that he may have shall not prevent thy going down this crag. Even as the sails inflated by the wind involved together fall when snaps the mast, so fell the cruel monster to the earth. Thus we descended into the fourth chasm, gaining still farther on the dolsome shore which all the woe of the universe and sacks. Justice of God, ah! Uh who heaps up so many new toils and sufferings as I beheld. And why doth our transgression waste us so? As doth the billow thereupon Charybdis, that breaks itself on that which it encounters, so here the folk must dance their round lay. Here saw I people more than elsewhere, many, on one side and the other, with great howls, rolling weights forward by main force of chest. They clashed together, and then at that point each one turned backward, rolling retrograde, crying. And, why squanderest thou? Thus they returned along the lurid circle on either hand unto the opposite point, shouting their shameful meter evermore. Then they each, when he arrived there, wheeled about through his half-circle to another joust, and I, who had my heart pierced as it were. My master, now declare to me what people these are, and if all were clerks, these shaven crowns upon the left of us. Clearly enough their voices bark it forth, when they reach the two points of the circle, where sunders them the opposite defect. My master, among such as these I ought forsooth to recognize some few, who were infected with these maladies. Wherever shall they come to these two buddings, these from the sepulchre shall rise again with the fist closed, and these with tresses shorn. Ill-giving and ill-keeping the fair world of ten from them, and place them in this scuffle whether it be, no words adorn I for it. Now canst thou, son, behold the transient farce of goods that are committed unto fortune, for which the human race each other buffet. I said to him, Now tell me also what is this fortune which thou speakest of, that has the world's goods so within its clutches, he whose omniscience everything transcends the heavens created and gave who should guide them, that every part to every part may shine. Distributing the light in equal measure, he in like manner to the mundane splendors ordained a general ministress on guide. 
that she might change at times the empty treasures from race to race, from one blood to another, beyond resistance of all human wisdom. Therefore one people triumphs, and another languishes in pursuance of her judgment, which hidden is as in the grass of serpent. Your knowledge has no counterstand against her, she makes provision, judges, and pursues her governance, as there's the other gods. Her permutations have not any truce necessity makes her precipitate, so often cometh who his turn obtains. And this is she who is so crucified even by those who ought to give her praise, giving her blame amiss and bad repute. But she is blissful, and she hears it not among the other primal creatures gladsome she turns her sphere, and blissful she rejoices. We cross the circle to the other bank, near to a fount that boils, and pours itself along a gully that runs out of it. The water was more somber far than Persa, and we in company with the dusky waves made entrance downward by a path uncouth. A marsh it makes, which has the name of Styx, this tristful brooklet, when it has descended down to the foot of the malign grey shores. And I, who stood intent upon beholding, saw people mud sprint in that lagoon, all of them naked and with angry look. They smote each other not alone with hands, but with the head and with the breast and feet, tearing each other piecemeal with their teeth. Beneath the water people are who sigh and make this water bubble at the surface, as the eye tells thee wheresoever it turns. Fixed in the mire, they say, we sullen were in the sweet air, which by the sun is gladdened, bearing within ourselves the sluggish reek. Thus we went circling round the filthy fen a great arc twixt the dry bank and the swamp, with eyes turned on to those who gorge the mire. Inferno can't I. I say, continuing, that long before we to the foot of that high tower had come, our eyes went upward to the summit of it. By reason of two flamelets we saw placed there, and from afar another answer them, so far, that hardly could I attain it. And to the sea of all discernment turned, I said, What saith this, and what respondeth that other fire, and who are they that made it? And he to me. Across the turbid waves what is expected thou canst now discern, if reek of the morass conceal it not. Gord never shot an arrow from itself that sped away athwart there so swift, as I beheld a very little boat. Come o'er the water towards us at that moment, under the guidance of a single pilot, who shouted, Now art thou arrived, fell soul, Phlegias, Phlegias, thou creest out in vain for this once. Thou shalt not have us longer than in the passing of the slough, as he who listens to some great deceit that has been done to him, and then resents it, such became Pligias in his gathered wrath. My guide descended down into the boat, and then he made me enter after him, and only when I entered seemed it laden. Soon as the guide and I were in the boat, the antique prow goes on its way, dividing more of the water than tis wont with others. While we were running through the dead canal, up rose in front of me one full of mire and said, who art thou that comest ere the hour? Although I come, I stay not, but who art thou that hast become so squalid? Thou seest that I am one who weeps, and I to him. With weeping and with wailing, thou spirit maledict, do thou remain for thee, I know, though thou art all default. Then stretched he both his hands unto the boat, where it my weary master thrust him back, saying, Way there with the other dogs! That was an arrogant person in the world, goodness is none, that decks his memory so likewise here his shade is furious. My master, much should I be pleased, if I could see him sussed into this broth, before we issue forth out of the lake. And he to me, ere unto thee the shore reveal itself, thou shalt be satisfied such a desire tis meet thou shouldst enjoy. A little after that, I saw such havoc made of him by the people of the mire, that still I praise and thank my God for it. They all were shouting. And that exasperate spirit Florentine turned round upon himself with his own teeth. We left him there, and more of him I tell not, but on mine ears there smote a lamentation. Whence forward I intent unbar mine eyes. And the good master said, Even now, my son, 
the city draweth near whose name is Dis, with the grave citizens, with a great throng. They were. The he to me. The fire eternal that kindles them within makes them look red as thou beholdest in this nether hell. Then we arrive within the moats profound, that circumvallate that disconsolate city the walls appear to me to be of iron. Not without making first a circuit wide, we came on to a place where loud the pilot cried out to us. The bark here is the entrance. Think, reader, if I was discomforted at utterance of the accursed words for never to return here I believed. Do not desert me, said I. Thus undone and if the going farther be denied us, let us retrace our steps together swiftly. So armored goes on and there abandons me my father sweet, and I remain in doubt, for no one yes within my head contend. I could not hear what he proposed to them, but with them there he did not linger long, ere each within in rivalry ran back. They closed the portals, those our adversaries, on my lord's breast who had remained without and turned to me with footsteps far between. His eyes cast down, his forehead shorn had he of all its boldness, and he said with sighs, This arrogance of theirs is nothing new for once they used it at less secret gate, which finds itself without a fastening still. Or it didst thou behold the dead inscription, and now this side of it descends the steep, passing across the circles without escort. Inferno Canto Eighth. That he which cowered it's brought out on me, beholding my conductor backward turn sooner repressed within him his new color. He stopped attentive, like a man who listens, because that I could not conduct him far through the black air, and through the heavy fire. Still it behoveth us to win the fight. Oh, such offered us herself, oh how I long that some one here arrive. Well I perceived. As soon as the beginning he covered up with what came afterward, that they were words quite different from the first. But nonetheless his saying gave me fear, because I carried out the broken phrase, perhaps to a worse meaning than he had. Into this bottom of the doleful conch doth an ear descend from the first grade, which for its pain has only hope cut off. True is it, once before I hear below was conjured by that pitiless Erichtho who summoned back the shades unto their bodies. Naked of me short while the flesh had been, before within that wall she made me enter, to bring a spirit from the circle of Judas. That is the lowest region and the darkest, and farthest from the heaven which circles all. Well, no, either way, therefore be reassured. And more, he said, but not in mind I have it, because mine and I had altogether drawn me towards the high tower with the red flaming summit. Where in a moment saw I swift uprise in the three infernal furies stained with blood, who had the limbs of women on their mean. And with the greenest hydras were begirt small serpents, and serests were their tresses, wherewith their horrid temples were entwined. Each one her breast was rending with her nails, they beat them with their palms, and cried so loud, that I for dread pressed close unto the poet. Medusa come, so we two stone will change him. In evil hour avenge we not on Theseus his assault. Turn thyself round, and keep thine eyes close shut, for if the gorgon appear, and thou shouldst see it, no more returning upward would there be. Thus said the master, and he turned me round himself, and trusted not unto my hands so far as not to blind me with his own. O oh, you have undistempered intellects, observe the doctrine that conceals itself beneath the veil of the mysterious verses. And now there came across the turbid waves the clangor of a sound with terror fraught, because of which both of the margins trembled. Not otherwise it was than of a wind impetuous on account of adverse heats, that smites the forest, and, without restraint, the branches rends, beats down, and bears away right onward, laden with dust, it goes superb, and puts to flight the wild beasts and the shepherds. Mine eyes he loosed, and said, Direct the nerve of vision now along that ancient foam, there yonder where that smoke is most intense, even as the frogs before the hostile serpent across the water scatter all abroad until each one is huddled in the earth. 
more than a thousand ruined souls I saw, thus fleeing from before one who on foot was passing o'er the sticks with souls unwet. From off his face he fanned that untress air, waving his left hand oft in front of him, and only with that anguish seemed he weary. Well, I perceived one sent from heaven was he, unto the master turned, and he made sign that I should quiet stand and bow before him. Ah! How disdainful he appeared to me! He reached the gate, and with a little rod he opened it, for there was no resistance. Oh, banished out of heaven, people despised! Thus he began upon the horrid threshold whence is this arrogance within you couched, wherefore recalcitrate against the will from which the end can never be cut off, and which has many times increased your pain. Then he returned along the Murray road, and spake no word to us, but had the look of one whom other care constrains and goads. Then that of him who in his presence is unwe our feet directed towards the city, after those holy words all confident. Within we entered without any contest, and I, who inclination had to see what the condition such a fortress holds. Soon as I was within, cast round mine eye, and see on every hand an ample plain, full of distress and torment terrible. Even as at Arles, where stagnant grows the Rhone, even as at Polonier to the corner of, that shuts in Italy and bays its borders. The sepulchres make all the place uneven, so likewise did they there on every side, saving that there the manor was more bitter. For flames between the sepulchres were scattered, by which they so intensely heated were, that iron more so asks not any art. All of their coverings uplifted were, and from them issued forth such dire laments, sooth seemed they of the wretched and tormented. My master, what are all those people who, having sepulture within those tombs, make themselves audible by doleful sighs? Between the torments and high parapets. Inferno canto ex. Now onward goes, along a narrow path between the torments and the city wall, my master and I follow at his back. O power supreme, that through these impious circles turnest me. I began as pleases thee speak to me, and my longing satisfy. Their cemetery have upon this side with Epicurus all his followers, who with the body mortal make the soul. Good leader, I but keep concealed from thee my heart, that I may speak the less, nor only now hast thou thereto disposed me. Upon a sudden issued forth this sound from out one of the tombs, wherefore I pressed, fearing, a little nearer to my leader. And unto me he said, Turn thee, what dost thou? Behold there far in it who has risen from the waist upwards, holy shalt thou see him. I had already fixed mine eyes on his, and he uprose erect with breast and front in as if hell he had in great despite. And with courageous hands and prompt my leader thrust me between the sepulchres towards him, exclaiming, Let thy words explicit be. As soon as I was at the foot of his tomb, somebody eyed me, and, as if disdainful, then asked of me. I, who desirous of obeying was, concealed it not, but all revealed to him where it he raised his brows a little upward. Then said he, Fiercely adverse have they been to me, and to my fathers, and my party, so that two several times I scattered them. If they were banished, they returned on all sides. I answered him, the first time on the second, but yours have not acquired that art aright. Then there uprose upon the sight, uncovered down to the chin, a shadow at his side, I think that he had risen on his knees. Round me he gazed, as if solicitude he had to see if some one else were with me, but after his suspicion was all spent. Leaping, he said to me, If through this blind prison thou ghost by loftiness of genius, where is my son? And why is he not with thee? And I to him. I come not of myself, he who is waiting yonder leads me here, whom in disdain perhaps your Guido had. His language and the mode of punishment already unto me had read his name on that account my answer was so full. Upstarting suddenly, he cried out, How saidst thou he had? Is he not still alive? Does not the sweet light strike upon his eyes?
when he became aware of some delay, which I before my answer made supine and he fell again and forth appeared no more. But the other magnanimous at whose desire I had remained did not his aspect change, neither his neck he moved, nor bent his sigh. Continuing his first discourse, They have that art, he said, not learned our right, that more tormenteth me than doth this bed, but fifty times shall not rekindle be the countenance of the lady who reigns here, ere thou shalt know how heavy is that art. The slaughter and great carnage which have with crimson stained the Arbaya, caused such orisons in our temple to be made. After his head he with a sigh had shaken, there I was not alone, he said, nor surely without a cause had with the others moved. Ah! So hereafter may your seed repose. A him entreated, solve for me that knot which has entangled my conceptions here. We see like those who have imperfect sight the things. He said that distant are from us so much still shines on us the sovereign ruler. When they draw near or are is wholly vain our intellect, and if none brings it to us, not anything know we of your human state. And now my master was recalling me, wherefore more eagerly I prayed the spirit that he would tell me who was with him there. With more than a thousand here I lie within here is the second Frederick, and the cardinal, and of the rest I speak not. Thereon he hid himself, and I towards the ancient poet turned my steps, reflecting upon that saying, which seemed hostile to me. He moved along, and afterward thus going, he said to me, Why art thou so bewildered? And I in his inquiry satisfied him, Let memory preserve what thou hast heard against thyself. And now attend here, and he raised his finger, When thou shalt be before the radiance sweet of her, Whose beauteous eyes all things behold, From her thought know the journey of thy life. Unto the left hand then he turned his feet, We left the wall, and went towards the middle, Along a path that strikes into a valley, Which even up there unpleasant made its stench. Upon the margin of a lofty bank, Which great rocks broken in a circle made, we came upon a still more cruel throng. And there, by reason of the horrible excess of stench the deep abyss throws out, we drew ourselves aside behind the cover of a great tomb, wherein I saw a writing which said, Pope Anastasius I hold, whom out of the right way Photinus drew, slow it behoveth our descent to be, so that the sense be first a little used to the sad blast, and then we shall not heed it. The master thus undone to him I said, Some compensation find, that the time pass not idly, and he thou ceased I think of that, they all are full of spirits melodic, but that hereafter sight alone suffice thee, hear how and wherefore they are in constraint. Of every malice that wins hate in heaven, injury is the end and all such end either by force or fraud afflicteth others. But because fraud is man's peculiar vice, more it displeases God, and so stand lowest the fraudulent, and greater dole assails them. All the first circle of the violent is but since force may be used against three persons, in three rounds tis divided and constructed. To God, to ourselves, and to our neighbor can we use force, I say, on them and on their things, as thou shalt hear with reason manifest. Death by violence and painful wounds, are to our neighbor given and in his substance ruin, and arson, and injurious levies. Whence homicides, and he who smites unjustly marauders, and freebooters, the first round tormenteth all in companies diverse. Then may lay violent hands upon himself and his own goods, and therefore in the second round must perforce without avail repent. Whoever of your world deprives himself, who games, and dissipates his property, and weepeth there where he should juck and be. Violence can be done the deity, in heart denying and blaspheming him, and by disdaining nature and her bounty. And for this reason doth the smallest round seal with its signet Sodom and cowers, and who disdaining God, speaks from the heart. Brought wherewithal is every conscience stung, a man may practice upon him who trusts, and him who doth no confidence in verse. 
This latter mode, it would appear, dissevers only the bond of love which nature makes wherefore within the second circle nestle. Hypocrisy, flattery, and who deals in magic, falsification, theft, and simony, panders, and barators, and the like filth. By the other mode, forgotten is the love which nature makes, and what is after added, from which there is a special faith engendered. But tell me those within the fat lagoon, whom the wine drives, and whom the rain doth beat, and who encounter with such bitter tongues. Hast thou no recollection of those words with which thine ethics thoroughly discusses the dispositions three, that heaven abides not? Incontinence, and malice, and insane bestiality. And how incontinence less God offendeth, and less blame attracts. If thou regardest this conclusion well, and to thy mind recallest who they are that up outside are undergoing penance. Once more a little backward turn thee, said I. There where thou sayest that usury offends goodness divine, and disengage the not, he said to him who heeds it, noteth not only in one place alone after what manner nature takes her course. From intellect divine and from its art, and if thy physics carefully thou notest, after not many pages shalt thou find that this your art as far as possible follows, as the disciple doth the master, so that your art is, as it were, God's grandchild. From these two, if thou bringest to thy mind Genesis at the beginning, it behoves mankind to gain their life and to advance. And since the usurer takes another way, Nature herself and in her follower disdains he for elsewhere he puts his hope. But follow now, as I would fain go on, for quivering are the fishes on the horizon, and the wane wholly over chorus lies. Inferno Canto Xi The place where to descend the bank we came was alpine, and from what was there, moreover, of such a kind that every I would shun it. Such as that ruin is which in the flank smote, on this side of Trent, the Edesh, either by earthquake or by failing stay. For from the mountain's top, from which it moved, unto the plain the cliff is shuttered so, some path to give to him who was above. Even such was the descent of that ravine, and on the border of the broken chasm the infamy of Crete was stretched along. Who was conceived in the fictitious cow, and when he us beheld, he bid himself, even as one whom anger racks within. As is that bull who breaks loose at the moment in which he has received the mortal blow, who can't walk, but staggers here and there. The minotaur beheld I do the like, and he the wary cry. Run to the passage while he rough, tis well thou shouldst descend. Thus down we took our way o'er that discharge of stones, which oftentimes did move themselves beneath my feet from the unwanted burden. Now will I have thee know, the other time I here descended to the nether hell, this precipice had not yet fallen down. But truly, if I well discern a little before his coming who the mighty spoil bore off from dis in the supernal circle. Upon all sides the deep and loathsome valley trembled so, that I thought the universe was thrilled with love, by which there are who think. The world oft times converted into chaos, and at that moment this primeval crag both here and elsewhere made such overthrow. O blind cupidity, O wrath insane, that spurs us onward so in our short life, and in the eternal then so badly steeps us. I saw an ample moat bent like a bow, as one which all the plain encompasses, conformable to what my guide had said. And between this and the embankments foot centaurs and fowl were running, armed with arrows, as in the world they used the chase to fall. Beholding us descend, each one stood still, and from the squadron three detached themselves, with bows and arrows in advance selected. Unto what torment come ye, who down the hillside are descending? Tell us from there if not, I draw the bow. My master said. Our answer will we make to Chiron, near you there an evil hour, the will of thine was evermore so hasty. And he in the midst, who at his breast is gazing, is the great Chiron, who brought up Achilles that other Pholos is, who was so wrathful. Near we approached unto those monsters fleet Chiron and arrow took, and with the notch backward upon his jaws he put his beard. 
Someone withdrew from singing hallelujah, who unto me committed this new office, no thief is he, nor I a thievish spirit. But by that virtue through which I am moving my steps along this savage thoroughfare, give us some one of thine to be with us. Upon his right breast Chiron wheeled about, and said to Nessus, Turn and do thou guide them, and warn aside, if other band may meet you. We with our faithful escort onward moved along the brink of the vermilion boiling, wherein the boiled were uttering loud laments. Here they lament their pitiless mischiefs, here is Alexander, and fierce Dionysius, who upon Sicily brought dolorous years. That forehead there which has the hair so black is Azulin, and the other who is blonde, Obizu is of Este, who, in truth, up in the world was by his steps unslain. Then turned I to the poet, and he said, Now he be first to thee, and second I. A little farther on the centaur stopped above a folk, who far down as the throat seemed from the boiling stream to issue forth. A shade he showed us on one side alone, saying, he cleft asunder in God's bosom the heart that still upon the Thames is honored. Then people saw I, who from out the river lifted their heads, and also all the chest, and many among these I recognized. Thus ever more and more grew shower that blood, so that the feet alone it covered, and there across the moat our passage was. Even as thou here upon this side beholdest the boiling stream that I diminishes. The centaur said, I wish thee to believe. That on this other more and more declines its bed until it reunites itself where it behoveth tyranny to groan. Justice divine upon this side is goading that Attila, who was a scourge on earth, and Paris, and Sextus, and forever milks. Then back he turned, and passed again the forward. Not yet had Nessus reached the other side, when we had put ourselves within a wood that was not marked by any path whatever. Not foliage green, but of a dusky color, not branches smooth, but gnarled and intertangled, not a trees were there, but thorns with poison. Such tangled thickets have not, nor so dense, those savage wild beasts, that in hatred hold twixt Cicena and corn to the tilled places. There do the hideous harpies make their nests, who chase the Trojans from the strophades, with sad announcement of impending doom. Broad wings have they, and necks, and faces human, and feet with claws, and their great bellies fledged they make laments upon the wondrous trees. Ere thou enter farther, know that thou art within the second round. Thus he began to say, and shall be, till I heard on all sides lamentations uttered, and person none beheld I who might make them whence, utterly bewildered, I stood still. I think he thought that I perhaps might think so many voices issued through those trunks from people who concealed themselves from us. Therefore the master said, If thou break off some little spray from any of these trees, the thoughts thou hast will wholly be made vain. Then stretched I forth my hand a little forward, and plucked a branch lit off from a great thorn on the trunk cried, As out of a green brand, that is on fire at one of the ends, and from the other drips and hisses with the wine that is escaping. So from that splinter issued forth together both words and blood where it I let the tip fall, and stood like a man who is afraid. Had he been able sooner to believe? My sage made answer, O oh, thou wounded soul, what only in my verses he has seen. Not upon thee had he stretched forth his hand, whereas the thing incredible has cost me to put him to an act which grieveth me. I am the one who both keys head in keeping of Frederick's heart, and turn them to and fro so softly in unlocking and unlocking. That from his secrets most men I withheld fidelity, I bore the glorious office so great, I lost thereby my sleep and pulses. The courtesan who never from the dwelling of Caesar turned aside her strumpet eyes, death universal and the vice of courts, inflamed against me all the other minds, and they inflamed did so inflame Augustus, that my glad honours turned to dismal mournings. My spirit in disdainful exultation, thinking by dying to escape disdain, made me unjust against myself the just. I, by the roots unwanted of this wood, do swear to you that never broke I faith unto my lord, 
who was so worthy of honor. Since he is silent, the poet said to me, Lose not the time, but speak, unquestion him, if more may please thee. Whence I to him. Do thou again inquire concerning what thou thinkst will satisfy me, for I cannot, such pity is in my heart. When the exasperated soul abandons the body whence it rent itself away, Miles consigns it to the seventh abyss. It falls into the forest, and no part is chosen for it, but where fortune hurls it, there like a grain of spelt it germinates. It springs a sapling and a forest tree, the harpies, feeding then upon its leaves, do pain create, and for the pain an outlet. Like others, for our spoils shall we return, but not that any one may them revest, for tis not just to have what one casts off. We were attentive still unto the trunk, thinking that more it yet might wish to tell us, when by a tumult we were overtaken. In the same way as he is who perceives the boar and chase approaching to his stand, who hears the crashing of the beasts and branches. And to behold! Upon our left hand side, naked and scratched, fleeing so furiously, that of the forest every fan they broke. He who was in advance. Now help! Death help! And the other one, who seemed to lag too much, was shouting Lano, were not so alert. Behind them was the forest full of black shimestiffs, ravenous, and swift of foot as greyhounds, who are issuing from the chain. On him who had crouched down, they set their teeth and him they lacerated piece by piece, thereafter bore away those aching members. There at my escort took me by the hand, and led me to the bush, that all in vain was weeping from its bloody lacerations. It said, Of Saint Andrea, what helped it thee of me to make a screen? What blame have I in thy nefarious life? When near him had the master stayed his steps, he said, who was thou that through wounds so many art blowing out with blood thy dolorous speech? Gather them up beneath the dismal bush I of that city was which to the Baptist changed its first patron, wherefore he for this forever with his art will make it sad. And were it not that on the pass of Arno some glimpses of him are remaining still, those citizens who afterwards rebuilt it upon the ashes left by Attila in vain had caused their labor to be done. Because the charity of my native place constrained me, gathered I the scattered leaves, and gave them back to him who now was hoarse. Then came we to the confine, where disparted the second round is from the third, and where a horrible form of justice is beheld. Clearly to manifest these novel things, I say that we arrived upon a plain which from its bed rejecteth every plant. The dolorous forest is a garland to it all round about, as the sad moat too that there close upon the edge we stayed our feet. The soil was of an arid and thick sand, not of another fashion made than that which by the feet of Cato once was pressed. Vengeance of God, oh how much oughtest thou by each one to be dreaded, who doth read that which was manifest unto mine eyes. Of naked souls beheld I many herds, who all were weeping very miserably, and over them seemed set a log diverse. To pine upon the ground some folk were lying, and some were sitting all drawn up together, and others went about continually. Those who were going round were far the more, and those were less who lay down to their torment, but had their tongues more loose to lamentation. Over all the sand -wiced, with a gradual fall, were raining down dilated flakes of fire, as of a snow on alt without a wine. As Alexander in those torrid parts of India, beheld upon his host flames fall unbroken till they reached the ground. Whence he provided with his palances to trample down the soil, because the vapor better extinguished was while it was single. Thus was descending the eternal heat, whereby the sand was set on fire like tinder beneath the steel, for doubling of the dull. Without repose forever was the dance of miserable hands, now there, now here, shaking away from off them the fresh gleeds. Began I, thou who overcomest all things except the demons dire, that issued against us at the entrance of the gate. If Jove should weary out his smith, from whom he seized in anger the sharp thunderbolt, wherewith upon the last day I was smitten, 
And if he wearied out by turns the others in Mongabello at the swarthy forge, vociferating, Help, good Vulcan, help! Not in disdain, and little seems to prize him, but, as I said to him, his own despots are for his breast the fittest ornaments. Speaking no word, we came to where there gushes forth from the wood a little rivulet, whose redness makes my hair still stand on end. As from the Bilicame springs the brooklet, the sinful women laid her share among them, so downward through the sand it went its way. The bottom of it, and both sloping banks, were made of stone, and the margins at the side whence I perceived that there the passage was. These words were of my leader whence I prayed him that he would give me largest of the food, for which he had given me largest of desire. In the mid-sea there sits a wasted land. Said he thereafterward, whose name is Crete, under whose king the world of old was chased, there is a mountain there, that once was glad with waters and with leaves, which was called Ida and out tis deserted as a thing worn out. Rhea once chose it for the faithful cradle of her own son and to conceal him better, when er he cried she there had clamours made. The grand old man stands in the mount erect, who holds his shoulders turned towards Damietta, and looks at Rome as if it were his mirror. His head is fashioned of refined gold, and of pure silver are the arms and breast, then he is brass as far down as the fork. From that point downward all is chosen iron, save that the right foot is of kiln-baked clay, and more he stands on that than on the other. Each part, except the gold, is by a fissure asunder cleft, the dripping is with tears, which gathered together perforate the cavern. From rock to rock they fall into this valley at your own sticks, and fliggeth and they form then downward go along this narrow sluice. If so the present runnel doth take its rise in this way from our world, why only on this verge appears it to us? And I again. Master, where shall be found Levi and Plegethen? For of one thou art silent, and sayest the other of this rain is made, and all thy questions truly thou dost please me replied he, but the boiling of the red water might well solve one of them thou makest. Inferno Cantox Now bears us onward one of the hard margins, and so the brooklet's mist o'ershadows it, from fire it saves the water and the dikes. Even as the Flemings, betwixt cads and unbruges, fearing the flood that towards them hurls itself, their bulwarks build to put the sea to flight. And as the Paduans along the Brenta to guard their villas and their villages, or ever cheer it in a field the heath. In such similitude had those been made, albeit not so lofty nor so thick, whoever he might be, the master made them. Now were we from the forest so remote, I could not have discovered where it was, even if backward I had turned myself. When we a company of souls encountered, who came beside the dyke, and every one gazed at us, as at evening we are wont. To eye each other under a new moon, and so towards us sharpened they their brows as an old tailor at the needle's eye. Thus scrutinist by such a family, by some one I was recognized, who seized my garment's hem, and cried out. And I, when he stretched forth his arm to me, on his baked aspect fastened so mine eyes, that the scorched countenance prevented not. His recognition by my intellect and bowing down my face unto his own, I made reply. Are you here, Sir Brunetto? May it not displease thee, O my son, if a brief space with thee, Brunetto Lautini, backward return and let the trail go on. I said to him, with all my power I ask it, and if you wish me to sit down with you, I will if he please, for I go with him. He said, whoever of this herd a moment stops, lies then a hundred years, nor fans himself when smiteth him the fire. I did not dare to go down from the road level to walk with him, but my head bowed I held as one who goeth reverently. And he began, What fortune or what fate before the last day leadeth thee down here? And who is this that showeth thee the way? up there above us in the life serene. I answered him, I lost me in a valley, or ever yet my age had been completed, and if I had not died so prematurely, seeing heaven thus benignant unto thee, I would have given thee comfort in the work. 
but that ungrateful and malignant people, which of old time from Fissel descended, and smack still of the mountain and the granite, will make itself for thy good deeds, thy foe, and it is right for among crept sorbs it ill befits the sweet fig to bear fruit. Old rumor in the world proclaims them blind a people avaricious, envious, proud, take heed that of their customs thou do cleanse thee. Thy fortune so much honor doth reserve thee, one party on the other shall be hungry for thee, but far from goat shall be the grass. Their litter let the beasts of Fessel make of themselves, nor let them touch the plant, if any still upon their dung he'll rise. Replied I to him, not yet would you be in banishment from human nature placed. For in my mind is fixed, untouches now my heart the dear and good paternal image of you, when in the world from our to our. You taught me how a man becomes eternal and how much I am grateful, while I live behoves that in my language be discerned. What you narrate of my career I write, and keep it to be glossed with other texts by a lady who can do it, if I reach her. This much will I have manifest to you provided that my conscience do not chide me for whatsoever fortune I am ready. My master thereupon on his right cheek did backward turn himself, and looked at me then said, He listeneth well who knoweth it, nor speaking less on that account, I go with Sir Brunetto, and I ask who are his most known and most eminent companions. Know them and some, that all of them are clerks, and men of letters great and of great fame, and the world tainted with the self-same sin. Priscian goes yonder with that wretched crowd, and Francis of a Corso, and thou hadst seen there if thou hadst had a hankering for such scurf. That one who by the servant of his servants from Arno was transferred to Bakshilion, where he has left his sin-excited nerves. More would I say, but coming on discoursing can be no longer for that I behold new smoke uprising yonder from the sand. Then he turned round, and seemed to be of those who had run a run for the green mantle across the plain, and seemed to be among them. Inferno Canto Now was I where was heard the reverberation of water falling into the next round, like to the humming which the behaves make. When shadows three together started forth, running from out a company that passed beneath the reign of the sharp martyrdom. Towards us came they, and each one cried out, Stop, thou for by thy garb to us thou seemest to be some one of our depraved city. Ami! What wounds I saw upon their limbs, recent and ancient by flames burnt in. It pains me still but to remember it. Unto their cries my teacher paused attentive, he turned his face towards me, and He said to these we should be courteous. As soon as we stood still, they recommenced the old refrain, and when they overtook us, formed of themselves a wheel, all three of them. As champions stripped and oiled are wont to do, watching for their advantage and their hold, before they come to blows and thrusts between them. Thus wheeling round, did every one his visage direct to me, so that in opposite wise his neck and feet continual journey made. If the misery of this soft place bring in disdain ourselves and our entreaties, began one, and our aspect black and blistered, let the renown of us thy mind incline to tell us who thou art, who thus securely thy living feet dost move along through hell. He in whose footprints thou dost see me treading, naked and skinless though he now may go, was of a greater rank than thou dost think. He was the grandson of the good Galdreda, his name was Gadagara, and in life much did he with his wisdom and his sword. The other, who close by me treads the sand, Tigeo Olda Brandi is, whose fame above there in the world should welcome be. Could I have been protected from the fire, Below I should have thrown myself among them, and think the teacher would have suffered it. But as I should have burned and baked myself, my terror overmastered my goodwill, which made me greedy of embracing them. As soon as this my lord said unto me words, on account of which I thought within me that people such as you are were approaching. I of your city am and evermore your lovers and your honorable names I with affection have retraced and heard. So may the soul for a long while conduct those limbs of thine. 
did he make answer then, and so may thy renown shine after thee. Valor and courtesy say if they dwell within our city, as they used to do, or if they wholly have gone out of it. The new inhabitants on the sudden gains, pride and extravagance have in thee engendered, Florence, so that thou weep'st there it already. And this wise I exclaimed with face uplifted under three, taking that for my reply, looked at each other, as one looks at truth. Replied they all, to satisfy another happy art thou thus speaking at thy will. Therefore, if thou escape from these dark places, and come to ribhold the beauteous stars, when it shall pleasure thee to say, I was. Not an amen could possibly be said so rapidly as they had disappeared wherefore the master deemed best to depart. I followed him, and little had we gone, before the sound of water was so near us, that speaking we should hardly have been heard. Even as that stream which holdeth its own course the first from Monteviso towards the east upon the left-hand slope of Happening, which is above called Aquechita, ere it down descendeth into its low bed, and at Forli is vacant of that name. Reverberates there above San Benedetto from Alps, by falling at a single leap, wherefore a thousand there were room enough. Thus downward from a bank precipitate, we found resounding that dark tinted water, so that it soon the ear would have offended. I had a cord around about me girt, and therewith all I Willem had designed to take the panther with the painted skin. After I this had all from me unloosed, as my conductor had commanded me, I reached it to him, gathered up and coiled. Where it he turned himself to the right side, and at a little distance from the verge, he cast it down into that deep abyss. I said within myself, To the new signal the master with his eye is following so. How very cautious men should be with those who not alone behold the act, but with their wisdom look into the thoughts. He said to me, Soon there will upward come what I wait, and what thy thought is dreaming must soon reveal itself unto thy sight. I too that truth which has the face of falsehood, a man should close his lips as far as may be, because without his fault it causes shame. But here I cannot und. Reader, by the notes of this my comedy to thee I swear, so may they not be void of lasting favor. Aboard that dense and darksome atmosphere I saw a figure swimming upward come, marvelous unto every steadfast heart. Even as he returns who goeth down sometimes to clear an anchor, which has grappled reef, or aught else that in the sea is hidden. Who upward stretches, and draws in his feet. Behold the monster with the pointed tail, who cleaves the hills, unbreaketh walls and weapons, behold him who infecteth all the world. Thus unto me my guide began to say, and beckoned him that he should come to shore, near to the confine of the trodden marble. And that uncleanly image of deceit came up and thrust ashore its head and bust, but on the border did not drag its tail. The face was as the face of a just man, its semblance outwardly was so benign, and of a serpent all the trunk beside. Two paws it had hairy unto the armpits the back, and breast, and both the sides it had depicted or with noses and with shields. With colors more, groundwork or broidery never and cloth did Tartars make nor Turks, nor were such tissues by erection laid. As sometimes wherries lie upon the shore, that part are in the water, part on land, and as among the guzzling Germans there. The beaver plants himself to wage his war, so that vile monster lay upon the border, which is of stone, and shutteth in the sand. His tail was wholly quivering in the void, contorting upwards the envenomed fork, that in the guise of scorpion armed its point. Now perforce must turn aside our way a little, even to that beast malevolent that yonder cutcheth him. We therefore on the right side descended, and made ten steps upon the outer verge, completely to avoid the sand and fling. And after we are come to him, I see a little farther off upon the sand of people sitting near the hollow place. Thus farther still upon the outermost head of that seventh circle all alone I went, where sat the melancholy folk. 
out of their eyes was gushing forth their woe this way, that way, they helped them with their hands now from the flames on, now from the hot soil. Not otherwise in summer do the dogs, now with the foot, now with the muzzle, when by fleas or flies or gadflies they are bitten. When I had turned mine eyes upon the faces of some on whom the dolorous fire is falling, not one of them I knew but I perceived that from the neck of each there hung a pouch, which certain color had uncertain blazon, and thereupon it seems their eyes are feeding. And as I gazing round me come among them, upon a yellow pouch I azure saw that had the face and posture of a lion. Receding then the current of my sight, another of them saw I, red as blood, display a goose more white than butter is. Now get thee gone un since thou'rt still alive, know that a neighbor of mine, Vitellino, will have his seat here on my left hand side. A Paduan am I with these Florentines full many a time they thunder in mine ears, exclaiming, Come the sovereign cavalier. And fearing lest my longer stay might vex him who had warned me not to tarry long, backward I turned me from those weary souls. Such as he is who has so near the ague of Quarton that his nails are blue already, and trembles all, but looking at the shea. Even such became I at those proffered words, but shame in me his menaces produced, which maketh servants strong before good master. I seated me upon those monstrous shoulders I wished to say, and yet the voice came not as I believed. But he, who other times had rescued me in other peril, soon as I had mounted, within his arms encircled and sustained me, and said, now, Jurion, bester thyself the circles large, and the descent be little think of the novel burden which thou hast. Even as the little vessel shoves from shore, backward, still backward, so he thence withdrew, and when he wholly felt himself afloat, there where his breast had been he turned his tail, and that extended like any eel he moved, and with his paws drew to himself the hair. The greater fear I do not think there was what time abandoned Pate and the rains, whereby the heavens, as still appears, were scorched. Nor when the wretched Icarus his flanks felt, stripped of feathers by the melting wax, his father crying. And was my own when I perceived myself on all sides in the air, and saw extinguish the sight of everything but of the monster. Onward he goeth swimming slowly, slowly wheels and descends, but I perceive it only by a wind upon my face and from below. I heard already on the right the whirlpool making a horrible crashing under us whence I thrust out my head with eyes cast downward. Then was I still more fearful of the abyss because I fires beheld and heard laments where it I, trembling all the closer cling. I saw then for before I had not seen it, the turning and descending by great horrors that were approaching upon divers sides. As falcon who has long been on the wing, who, without seeing either lure or bird, maketh a falconer say, Ah me, thou stupest! Descendeth weary, whence he started swiftly, through a hundred circles, and alights far from his master, sullen and disdainful. Even thus did Jurion place us on the bottom, close to the bases of the rough hewn rock, and being disencumbered of our persons. He sped away as arrow from the string. There is a place in hell called Melbulge, holy of stone and of an iron color, as is the circle that around it turns. Right in the middle of the field malign there yawns a well exceeding wide and deep, of which its place the structure will recount. Round then is that enclosure which remains between the well and foot of the high hard bank, and has distinct in valleys ten its bottom. As where for the protection of the walls many and many moats surround the castles, the part in which they are a figure forms. Just such an image those presented there and as about such strongholds from their gates unto the outer bank are little bridges. So from the precipices base did Crag's project which intersected dikes and moats unto the well that truncates and collects them. Within this place, down shaken from the back of Jurion, we found us and the poet held to the left, and I moved on behind. Upon my right hand I beheld new anguish, new torments, and new wielders of the lash, wherewith the foremost bulgia was replete. 
down at the bottom where the sinners naked this side the middle came they facing us spawned with us but with greater steps even as the romans for the mighty host the year of jubilee upon the bridge have chosen a mode to pass the people over for all upon one side towards the castle their faces have and go unto street peters on the other side they go towards the mountain this side and that along the livid stone beheld i horned demons with great scourges who cruelly were beating them behind Ami! how they did make them lift their legs at the first blows and sooth not any one the second waited for nor for the third while i was going on mine eyes by one encountered were on straight i said already with sight of this one i am not unfit therefore i stayed my feet to make him out and with me the sweet guide came to a stand and to my going somewhat back assented i was the one who the fair gisela induced to grant the wishes of the marquis however the shameless story may be told not the soul below gnazy am i who weeps here nay rather is this place so full of them that not so many tongues today are taught while speaking in this manner with his scourge a demon smote him unset get thee gone pander there are no women here for coin i joined myself again unto mine escort there afterward with footsteps few we came to where a crag projected from the bank this very easily did we ascend and turning to the right along its ridge from those eternal circles we departed from the old bridge we looked upon the train which towards us came upon the other border on which the scourges in like manner smite still what a royal aspect he retains that jason is who by his heart and cunning the colchians of the ram made destitute he by the Allah of Lemnos passed along after the daring women pitiless had unto death devoted all their males. There with his tokens and with ornate words did he deceive Hapsipil, the maiden who first herself had all the rest deceived. There did he leave her pregnant and forlorn such sin unto such punishment condemns him, and also for Medea is vengeance done. We were already where the narrow path crosses athwart the second dike, and forms of it a buttress for another arch. Thence we heard people who are making moan in the next bulge, snorting with their muzzles, and with their palms beating upon themselves. The margins were encrusted with a mold by exhalation from below, that sticks there, and with the eyes and nostrils wages war. The bottom is so deep, no place suffices to give us sight of it without ascending the arch's back, where most the crag impends. Thither we came, and thence down in the moat I saw a people smothered in a filth that out of human privies seemed to flow. Then whilst below there with mine eye search, I saw one with his head so foul with ordure, it was not clear if he were clerk or layman. Wherefore art thou so eager to look at me more than the other foul ones? And I to him because if I remember, and he thereon, Bellabering his pumpkin. The flatteries have submerged me here below, where with my tongue was never surfeited. Of that uncleanly and disheveled drab, who there doth scratch herself with filthy nails, and crouches now, and now on foot is standing. Thighs the harlot is it, who replied unto her paramour, when he said, Have I great gratitude from thee? Nay, marvellous. Inferno canto tick. O Simon Magus, O forlorn disciples, you the things of God which ought to be the brides of holiness rapaciously. For silver and for gold do prostitute, now it behoves for you the trumpet sound, because in this third bulge ye abide. We had already on the following tomb ascended to that portion of the crag which o'er the middle of the moat hangs plumb. Wisdom supreme, O oh, how great art thou showest in heaven and earth, and in the evil world, and with what justice doth thy power distribute. I saw upon the sides and on the bottom the livid stone with perforations filled, all of one size, and every one was round. To me less ample seemed they not, nor greater than those that in my beautiful Saint John are fashioned for the place of the baptizers and one of which not many years ago i broke for some one who was drowning in it be this a seal all men to undeceive 
Out of the mouth of each one there protruded the feet of a transgressor, and the legs up to the calf, the rest within remained. In all of them the souls were both on fire wherefore the joints so violently quivered, they would have snapped asunder with his unbands. Even as the flame of lungtrous things is wont to move upon the outer surface only, so likewise was it there from heel to point. Master, who is that one who rid himself, more than his other comrades quivering? And whom a redder flame is sucking, than he to me? If thou wilt of me bear thee down there along that bank which lowest lies from him, thou know his errors on himself. What pleases thee to me is pleasing thou art my lord, and knowest that I depart not from thy desire, and knowest what is not spoken. Straightway upon the fourth dike we arrived we turned, and on the left-hand side descended down to the bottom full of holes and narrow. Then the good master yet from off his haunch deposed me not, till to the hole he brought me of him who so lamented with his shanks. Where thou art, that standest upside down, O doleful soul, implanted like a stake. To say began I, if thou canst, speak out. I stood even as the friar who is confessing the false assassin, who, when he is fixed, recalls him, so that death may be delayed. Such I became as people are who stand, not comprehending what is answered them, as if bemocked, and know not how to answer. Say to him straightway, I am not he, I am not he thou thinkest. And I replied as was imposed on me, If I am thou carest so much to know, that thou on that account hast crossed the bank, know that I vested was with a great mantle. And truly was I son of the she-bear, so eager to advance the cubs, the wealth above, and here myself, I pocketed. Beneath my head the others are dragged down who have preceded me in simony flattened along the fissure of the rock. Below there I shall likewise fall, whenever that one shall come who I believe thou wast, what time the sudden question I propose. But longer I my feet already toast, and here have been in this way upside down, than he will plant it stay with reddened feet. War after him shall come a fuller deed from towards the west a pastor without law, such as befits to cover him and me. Our Lord demanded of St. Peter first, before he put the keys into his keeping. Truly he nothing asked but follow me. Nor Peter nor the rest asked of Matthias silver or gold when he by lot was chosen unto the place the guilty soul had lost. Therefore stay here, for thou art justly punished, and keep safeguard o'er the ill-gotten money, which caused thee to be valiant against Charles. And were it not that still forbids it me the reverence for the key superlative thou hadst in keeping in the gladsome life. I would make use of words more grievous still because your avarice afflicts the world, trampling the good and lifting the depraved. The evangelist you pastors had in mind, when she sitteth upon many waters to fornicate with kings by him was she. The same who with the seven heads was born, and power and strength from the ten horns received, so long as virtue to her spouse was pleasing. Ye have made yourselves a god of gold and silver, and from the idolater how differ ye, save that he won, and ye a hundred worship. And while I sang to him such notes as these, either that anger or that conscience stung him, he struggled violently with both his feet. I think in sooth that it my leader pleased, with such contented lip he listened ever unto the sound of the true words expressed. Therefore with both his arms he took me up, and when he had me all upon his breast, remounted by the way where he descended. Nor did he tire to have me clasped to him, but bore me to the summit of the arch which from the fourth dike to the fifth is passage. There tenderly he laid his burden down, tenderly on the crag uneven and steep, that would have been hard passage for the goats. Inferno Cantox Of a new pain behoves me to make verses and give material to the twentieth canto of the first song, which is of the submerged. I was already thoroughly disposed to peer down into the uncovered depth, which bathed itself with tears of agony. And people saw I through the circular valley, silent and weeping, coming at the pace which in this world the litanies assume. 
as lower down my sight descended on them wondrously each one seemed to be distorted from chin to the beginning of the chest for towards the reins the countenance was turned and backward it behoved them to advance as to look forward had been taken from them perchance indeed by violence of palsy some one has been thus wholly turned awry but i ne'er saw it nor believe it can be that as god may let thee reader gather fruit from this thy reading think now for thyself how i could ever keep my face unmoistened when our own image near me i beheld distorted so the weeping of the eyes along the fissure bathed the hinder parts here pity lives when it is wholly dead who is a greater reprobate than he who feels compassion at the doom divine lift up lift up thy head and see for whom opened the earth before the theban's eyes wherefore they all cried whither rushest thou am fieros i dost leave the war and downward ceased he not to fall amain as far as my nose who lays hold on all see he has made a bosom of his shoulders because he wished to see too far before him behind he looks and backward goes his way behold tyrus yes who his semblance changed when from a male a female he became his members being all of them transformed and afterwards was forced to strike once more the two entangled serpents with his rod ere he could have again his manly plumes that aruns is who backs the other's belly who in the hills of luni there where grubs the carers who houses underneath among the marbles wide a cavern had for his abode whence to behold the stars and see the view was not cut off from him and she there who is covering up her breasts which thou beholdest not with loosened tresses and on that side is all the hairy skin was manto who made quest through many lands afterwards tarried there where i was born whereof i would thou list to me a little after her father had from life departed and the city of bacchus had become enslaved she a long season wandered through the world above in beauteous italy lies a lake at the alps foot that shuts in germany over tyrol and has the name beneca by a thousand springs i think on more is bathed twixt garda and valcamonica penino with water that grows stagnant in that lake midway of place is where the trentine pastor and he of brescia and the verons might give his blessing if he passed that way Zideth Peschira, fortress fair and strong, to front the Brescians on the Bergam masks, where round about the bank descendeth lost. Thereof necessity must fall, whatever in bosom of Beneca cannot stay, and grows a river down through verdant pastures. Soon as the water doth begin to run, no more Beneco is it called, but Mincho, far as Governo, where it falls in Po not far it runs before it finds a plain in which it spreads itself and makes it marshy and oft is wont in summer to be sickly passing that way the virgin pitiless land in the middle of the fen descried until done naked of inhabitants there to escape all human intercourse she with her servants stayed her arts to practice and lived and left her empty body there the men thereafter who were scattered round collected in that place which was made strong by the lagoon it had on every side they built their city over those dead bones and after her who first the place selected manchu named it without other omen its people once within more crowded were ere the stupidity of Casalodi from piemont had received dissi so that there scarce remained one in the cradle and augur and with Caltus gave the moment in all this, when to sever the first cable. Perfilus his name was, and so sings my lofty tragedy in some part or other that knowest thou well, who knowest the whole of it. The next, who is so slender in the flanks, was Michael Scott, who of a verity of magical illusions knew the game. The whole Guido Bonatti beholdest end, who now unto his letter and his thread would fain have stuck, but he too late repents. Behold the wretched ones who left the needle, the spool, and rock, and made them fortune tellers, they wrought their magic spells with urban image. But come now, for already holds the confines of both the hemispheres, and under Seville touches the Ocean wave, cane, and the thorns. Inferno Cantox. 
from bridge to bridge, thus speaking other things of which my comedy cares not to sing. We came along, and held the summit, when we halted to behold another fissure of Malbulge and other vain laments, and I beheld it marvelously dark. As in the arsenal of the Venetians boils in the winter the tenacious pitch to smear their unsound vessels o'er again. For sail they cannot, and instead thereof one makes his vessel new, and one recalks the ribs of it which many a voyage has made. One hammers at the prow, one at the stern, this one makes oars, and that one cordage twists, another mans the mainsail and the mizzen. Thus, not by fire, but by the art divine, was boiling down below there a dense pitch which upon every side the bank blamed. I saw it. But I did not see within it aught but the bubbles that the boiling raised, and all swell up on resubside compressed. The while below there fixedly I gazed, my leader, crying out, drew me unto himself from where I stood. Then I turned round, as one who is impatient to see what it behoves him to escape, and whom a sudden terror doth on man. Who, while he looks, delays not his departure, and I beheld behind us a black devil running along upon the crag approach. Ah, how ferocious was he in his aspect! And how he seemed to me in action ruthless, with open wings and light upon his feet. His shoulders, which sharp pointed, were on high, a sinner did encumber with both haunches, and he held clutched the sinews of the feet. He hurled him down, and over the hard crag turned round, and never was a mastiff loosened in so much hurry to pursue a thief. They seized him then with more than a hundred rakes, they said. It here behoves thee to dance covered, that, if thou canst, thou secretly mayest pilfer. Not otherwise the cooks their scullions make a mercy into the middle of the cauldron the meat with hooks, so that it may not float. Then he passed on beyond the bridge's head, and as upon the sixth bank he arrived, need was for him to have a steadfast front. With the same fury, and the same uproar, as dogs leap out upon a mendicant, who on a sudden begs where he stops. Let Malakata go. Where it once started, and the rest stood still, and he came to him, saying, What avails it, thinkest thou, Malakata, to behold me advanced into this place? My master said, safe hitherto from all your skill of fence. Then was his arrogance so humbled in him, that he let fall his grapnel at his feet, unto the other said, None to me, my guy. O thou who sittest among the splinters of the bridge, crouch down, securely now return to me again. Wherefore I started and came swiftly to him, and all the devils forward thrust themselves, so that I feared they would not keep their compact. And thus beheld I once afraid the soldiers who issued under safeguard from Caprona, seeing themselves among so many foes. Lost did I press myself with all my person beside my leader, and turned not mine eyes from off their countenance, which was not good. They lowered their rakes, and Wilt thou have me hit him? They said to one another, and answer, Yes, see that thou nick him with it. But the same demon who was holding parley with my conductor turned him very quickly and said, Be quiet, be quiet, Skarmiglion, and if it still doth please you to go onward, pursue your way along upon this rock near is another crag that yields a path. Yesterday, five hours later than this hour, one thousand and two hundred sixty-six years were complete, that here the way was broken. I send in that direction some of mine to see if any one doth there himself go ye with them, for they will not be vicious. Come forward, Libicaco and Drahignezo, and Tusk Sirieto and Graficane, and Farfarello and Mad Rubicant. Oh, me! What is it, master, that I see? Pray let us go. I said, without an escort, if thou knowest how, since for myself I ask none. I will not have thee fear, let them gnash on, according to their fancy, because they do it for those boiling wretches. Long the left hand dyke they wheeled about, but first had each one thrust his tongue between his teeth towards their leader for a signal. And he had made a trumpet of his rump. Inferno canto xi. I have erewhile seen horsemen moving camp, begin the storming, 
and there must er make, and some time starting off for their escape. Von couriers have I seen upon your land, or at times, and foragers go forth, tournaments stricken, and the justings run. Sometimes with trumpets, and sometimes with bells, with kettle drums, and signals of the castles, and with our own, and with outlandish things. But never yet with bagpipes so uncouth did I see horsemen move, nor infantry, nor ship by any sign of land or star. We went upon our way with the ten demons, a uh, savage company. But in the church with saints, and in the tavern with the gluttons, ever upon the pitch was my intent to see the whole condition of that bulgia, and of the people who therein were burned. Even as the dolphins, when they make a sign to mariners by arching of the back, that they should counsel take to save their vessel. Thus sometimes, to alleviate his pain, one of the sinners would display his back, and in less time conceal it than it lightens. As on the brink of water in a ditch the frogs stand only with their muzzles out, so that they hide their feet and other bulk. So upon every side the sinners stood but ever as barbarics and near them came, thus underneath the boiling they withdrew. I saw, and still my heart doth shudder at it, one waiting thus, even as it comes to pass one frog remains, and down another dive. And Graficen, who most confronted him, grappled him by his tresses smeared with pitch, and drew him up, so that he seemed an otter. I knew, before, the names of all of them, so had I noted them when they were chosen, and when they called to each other, listen how. O Rubicant, see that thou do lay thy claws upon him, so that thou mayst flay him. And I, my master, see to it, if thou canst, that thou mayst know who is the luckless wight, thus come into his adversary's hands. My mother placed me servant to a lord. For she had borne me to a ribald knave, destroyer of himself and of his things. Then Syriadu, from whose mouth projected, on either side, a tusk, as in a boar, caused him to feel how one of them could rip. Among malicious cats the mouse had come, but Barbarixia clasped him in his arms, and said, Stand ye aside while I enfork him, and to my master he turned round his head. He said, If more thou wish to know from him, before some one destroy him, the guy. Now tell then of the other culprits, knowest thou any one who is elation under the pitch? And he has separated, we have borne too much. And with his grapnel seized him by the arm, so that by rending he tore off a tender. He dragged Agnes wished two pounds upon him down at the legs, whence their decurion turned round and round about with evil look. When they again somewhat were pacified of him, who still was looking at his wound, demanded my conductor without stay. Who was that one from whom a luckless parting thou sayest thou hast made to come ashore? And he replied it was the friar Gamada, the of Galura, vessel of all fraud, who had the enemies of his lord in hand, and dealt so with them each exalts their aid. Money he took, and let them smoothly off, as he says, and in other offices of Baratur was he, not mean, but sovereign. Or gathers with him one Don Michael Sanchez of Lagadura, and of Sardinia two gossip, never do their tongues feel tired. And the Grand Provost turned to Farfarlo, who rolled his eyes about as if to strike, said, If you desire either to see or hear, the terror-stricken recommends thereon, Tuscans or Lombards, I will make them come. But let the Melibranches cease a little, so that these may not their revenges fear, and I, down sitting in this very place. Gagnezzo at these words his muzzle lifted, shaking his head, and said, Just hear the trick which he has thought of, down to throw himself, whence he, who snares in great abundance, had responded. I by far too cunning am when I procure for mine a greater sadness. O thou who raidest, thou shalt hear new sport. Each to the other side his eyes averted he first, who most reluctant was to do it. The Nevaris selected well his time planted his feet on land, and in a moment leapt and released himself from their design. Whereat each one was suddenly stung with shame, but he most who was cause of a defeat therefore he moved and cried. 
but little it availed, for wings could not outstrip the fear the other one went under, and, flying upward he his breast directed. Not otherwise the duck upon a sudden dives under, when the falcon is approaching, and upward he returneth cross and weary. Infuriated the mockery, Calcabrina flying behind him followed close, desirous the other should escape, to have a quarrel. And when the barrator had disappeared, he turned his talons upon his companion, and grappled with him right above the moat. But sooth the other was a doughty sparhawk to clapper claw him well, and both of them fell in the middle of the boiling pond. Of sudden intercessor was the heat, but nearer the less of rising there was not, to such degree they had their wings blown. Lamenting with the others, Barbarixia made four of them fly to the other side with all their gaffs, and very speedily. This side and that they to their posts descended, they stretched their hooks towards the pitch and snared, who were already baked within the crust. And in this manner busy did we leave them. Silent, alone, and without company we went, the one in front, the other after, as go the minor friars along their way. Upon the fable of Aesop was directed my thought by reason of the present quarrel, where he has spoken of the frog and moth. For Mo and Issa are not more alike than this one is to that, if well we couple in and beginning with a steadfast mind. And even as one thought from another springs, so afterward from that was born another which the first fear within me double made. Just now thy thoughts came in among my own, with similar attitude and similar face, so that of both one counsel soul I made. Not yet he, he finished rendering such opinion, when I beheld them come with outstretched wings, not far remote, with will to seize upon us. My leader on a sudden seized me up, even as a mother who by noise is wakened, and close beside her sees the enkindled flames. Who takes her son and flies and does not stop, having more care of him than of herself, so that she clothes her only with a shift. And downward from the top of the hard banks of pine he gave him to the pendant rock at one side of the other Baldia walls. Ne'er ran so swiftly water through a sluice to turn the wheel of any land built mill, when nearest to the paddles it approaches. As did my master down along that border, bearing me with him on his breast away, as his own son, and not as a companion. Hardly the bed of the ravine below his feet had reached, ere they had reached the hill right over us, but he was not afraid. For the high providence, which had ordained to place them ministers of the fifth moat, the power of thence departing took from all. A painted people there below we found, who went about with footsteps very slow, weeping and in their semblance tired and vanquished. They had on mantles with the hoods low down before their eyes, unfashioned of the cut that in Cologne they for the monks are made. Without they gilded are so that it dazzles, but inwardly all leaden and so heavy that Frederick used to put them on of straw. O oh, everlastingly fatiguing mantle! Again we turned us still to the left hand along with them, intent on their sad plaint. But owing to the weight, the weary folk came on so tardily that we were new in company at each motion of the haunch. Whence I unto my leader. See thou find some one who may by deed or name be known, and thus in going move thine eye about. Perhaps thou'lt have from me what thou demandest. Where it the leader turned him, and said, Wait, and then according to his pace proceed. I stopped, and to beheld I show great haste of spirit, in their faces, to be with me but the burden on the narrow way delayed them. When they came up, long with an eye askance they scanned me without uttering a word. Then to each other turned, and said together, He by the action of his throat seems living, and if they dead are, by what privilege go they uncovered by the heavy stole? Tuscan who to the college of miserable hypocrites art come, do not disdain to tell us who thou art. Brady Gaudenta were we, and Bolognese I Catalano, and he luttering o named, and together taken by thy city. Began I. Dor iniquitus, but said no more, for to mine eyes there rushed one crucified with three stakes on the ground.
Lend me, he saw. He writhed himself all over, blowing into his beard with suspirations on the friar Catalan who noticed this. Crosswise and naked is he on the path, as thou perceivest, and he needs must feel, whoever passes, first how much he weighs. And thereupon I saw Virgilius marvel o'er him who was extended on the cross so vilely in eternal banishment. The leader stood a while with head bowed down, then said, The business badly he recounted who grapples with his hook the sinners yonder. Many of the devil's vices once heard I at Bologna, and among them, that he's a liar and the father of lies. Thereat my leader with great strides went on, somewhat disturbed with anger and his looks whence from the hive laden I departed. After the prints of his beloved feet. Inferno canto xe. In that part of the youthful year wherein the sun his locks beneath Aquarius tempers, and now the nights draw near to half the day. What time the hoar-frost copies on the ground the outward semblance of her sister white, but little lasts the temper of her pen. The husbandman, whose forage faileth him, rises, and looks, and sees the champagne all gleaming white, where he beats his flank. Returns indoors, and up and down laments, like a poor wretch, who knows not what to do then he returns, and hope revives again. Seeing the world has changed its countenance in little time, and takes his shepherd's crook, and forth the little lambs to pasture drives. Thus did the master fill me with alarm, when I beheld his forehead so disturbed, and to the ailment came as soon the plaster. For as we came on to the ruined bridge, the leader turned to me with that sweet look which at the mountain's foot I first beheld. His arms he opened after some advisement within himself elected, looking first well at the ruin and laid hold of me. And even as he who acts and meditates for I, it seems that he provides beforehand, so upward lifting me towards the summit. Of a huge rock, he scanned another crag, say. Do that one grapple afterwards, but try first if tis such that it will hold thee. This was no way for one clothed with a cloak for hardly we, he light, and I pushed upward, were able to ascend from jag to jag. And had it not been, that upon that precinct shorter was the ascent than on the other, he I know not, but I had been dead beat. But because Malabolge towards the mouth of the profoundest well is all inclining, the structure of each valley doth import. That one bank rises and the other sinks. Still we arrived at length upon the point where from the last stone breaks itself asunder. The breath was from my lungs so milked away when I was up, that I could go no farther, nay, I sat down upon my first arrival. Now it behoves thee thus to put off sloth. My master said for sitting upon down, or under quilt, one cometh not to fame, without in which also his life consumes such vested leaveth of himself on earth as smoke in air or in the water foam. And therefore raise thee up, overcome the anguish with spirit that overcometh every battle, if with its heavy body it sink not. Then I uprose, showing myself provided better with breath than I did feel myself, and said, Go on, for I am strong and bold. Upward we took our way along the crag which Jag was, and narrow, and difficult, and more precipitous far than that before. Speaking I went, not to appear exhausted, where a voice from the next moat came forth, not well adapted to articulate words. I know not what it said, though the back I now was of the arch that passes there, but he seemed moved to anger who was speaking. He said, I make thee not, except the doing, for the modest asking ought to be followed by the deed in silence. We from the bridge descended at its head where it connects itself with the eighth bank, and then was manifest to me the bulge. And I beheld therein a terrible throng of serpents, and of such a monstrous kind, that the remembrance still congeals my blood. Let Libya boast no longer with her sand, for if Chilidre, Jeculi, and Peri she breeds, with Sintre and with Amphispana. Neither so many plagues nor so malignant ere showed she with all Ethiopia, nor with whatever on the Red Sea is. Among this cruel and most dismal throng, people were running naked and affrighted, without the hope of whole or heliotrope.
They had their hands with serpents bound behind them, these riveted upon their reins, the tail and head, and were in front of them entwined. And lo! At one who was upon our side there darted forth a serpent, which transfixed him there where the neck is knotted to the shoulders. Nor of so quickly er, nor it was written as he took fire and burned and ashes wholly beheld it that in falling he became. And when he on the ground was thus destroyed, the ashes drew together, and of themselves into himself they instantly returned. Even thus by the great sages tis confessed the phoenix dies, and then is born again, when it approaches its five hundredth year. On herb or grain it feeds not in its life, but only on tares of incense and a mummum, and nard and marar its last winding sheet. And as he is who falls, and knows not how, by force of demons who to earth down drag him, or other appellation that binds man. When he rises and around him looks, wholly bewildered by the mighty anguish which he has suffered, and in looking sighs. Such was that sinner after he had risen. Justice of God! Oh, how severe it is that blows like these in vengeance poureth down. And I unto the guy. Tell him to stir not, and ask what crime has thrust him here below, for once a man of blood and wrath I saw him. And the sinner, who had heard, dissembled not, but unto me directed mind and face, and with a melancholy shame was painted. But thou demandest, I cannot deny, so low am I put down, because I robbed the sacristy of the fair ornaments. And falsely once t'was laid upon another, but that thou mayst not such a sight enjoy, if thou shalt ear be out of the dark places. Thine ears to my announcement opened here. Pistoia first of Neri groweth meagre, then Florence doth renew her men and manners. Mars draws a vapor up from Valdi Magra, which is with turbid clouds enveloped round, and with impetuous and bitter tempest. Over Campo Pison shall be the battle when it shall suddenly rend the mist asunder, so that each Bianco shall thereby be smitten. At the conclusion of his words, the thief lifted his hands aloft with both the figs, crying, Take that, God, for at thee I aim them. From that time forth the serpents were my friends, for one entwined itself about his neck as if it said, I will not thou speak more, and round his arms another, and rebound him, clinching itself together so in front, that with them he could not a motion make. Pistoia, ah, pistoia! Why resolve not to burn thyself to ashes, and so perish, since in ill-doing thou thy seed excellest? Through all the somber circles of this hell spirit I saw not against God so proud, not he who fell at thieves down from the walls. He fled away, and spake no further word, and I beheld a centaur full of rage come crying out. I do not think Marama has so many serpents as he had all along his back, as far as where our countenance begins. Upon the shoulders, just behind the nape, with wings wide open was a dragon lying, and he sets fire to all that he encounters. He goes not on the same road with his brothers, by reason of the fraudulent theft he made of the great herd, which he had near to him. While he was speaking thus, he had passed by, and spirits three had underneath us come, of which nor I where was, nor my leader. Until what time they shouted. Who are you? On which account our story made a halt, and then we were intent on them alone. I did not know them, but it came to pass, as it is wont to happen by some chance, that one to name the other was compelled. Where can Sanfa have remained? And sigh, so that the leader might attend, upward from chin to nose my finger laid. If thou art, reader, slow now to believe what I shall say, it will no marvel be, for I saw it hardly can admit it. As I was holding raised on them my brows, behold, a serpent with six feet darts forth in front of one and fastens wholly on him. With middle feet it bound him round the paunch, and with the forward ones his arms it seized then thrust its teeth through one cheek on the other. The hindermost it stretched upon his thighs, and put its tail through in between the two, and up behind along the reins outspread it. 
but he was never fastened by its barbs onto a tree so as this horrible reptile upon the other's limbs and wind its own. Then they stuck close, as if of heated wax they had been made, and intermixed their color, nor one nor other seemed now what he was. And as proceedeth on before the flame upward along the paper a brown color, which is not black as yet, on the white dyes. The other two looked on, and each of them cried out, Omi, Agnello, how thou changest! Behold, thou now art neither two nor one. Already the two heads had one become, when there appeared to us two figures mingled into one face, wherein the two were lost. Of the four lists were fashioned the two arms, the thighs and legs, the belly and the chest members became that never yet were seen. Every original aspect there was cancelled too, and yet none did the perverted image appear, and such departed with slow pace. Even as a lizard, under the great scourge of days canonicular, exchanging hedge lightning appeareth at the road it cross. Thus did appear, coming towards the bellies of the two others, a small fiery serpent, livid and black as is a peppercorn. And in that part where it is first received our element, it one of them transfixed then downward fell in front of him extended. The one transfixed looked at it, but said not nay, rather with feet motionless he yawned, just as if sleep or fever had assailed him. He at the serpent gazed, and it at him one through the wound, the other through the mouth smoked violently, and the smoke commingled. Henceforth be silent, Lucan, where he mentions wretched Sabellus and Nasidius, and wait to hear what now shall be shot forth. Be silent, Ovid. Of Cadmus and Arthusophore, of him to a snake, her two fountain converts he fouling, that I grudge him not. Because two natures never front to front has he transmuted, so that both the forms to interchange their matter ready were. Together they responded in such wise that to a fork the serpent cleft his tail, and eat the wounded drew his feet together. The legs together with the thighs themselves adhered so. And in little time the juncture no sign whatever made that was apparent. He with the club and tail assumed the figure the other one was losing, and his skin became elastic, and the other's heart. I saw the arms draw inward at the armpits, and both feet of the reptile, that were short, lengthened as much as those contracted were. Thereafter the hind feet, together twisted, became the member that a man conceals, and of his own the wretch had to create it. While both of them the exhalation veils with a new color, and engenders hair on one of them and depilates the other. The one uprose and down the other fell, though turning not away their impious lamps, underneath which each one his muzzle changed. He who was standing drew it towards the temples, and from excess of matter, which came thither, issued the ears from out the hollow cheeks. O oh, did not backward run and was retained of that excess made to the face and nose, and the lips thickened far as was befitting. He who lay prostrate thrusts his muzzle forward, and backward draws the ears into his head, in the same manner as the snail its horns. And so the tongue, which was entire and apt for speech before, is cleft, and the bifort in the other closes up, and the smoke ceases. The soul, which to a reptile had been changed, along the valley hissing takes to flight, and after him the other speaking sputters. I'll have Bozo run, crawling as I have done, along this road. In this way I beheld the seventh ballast shift and rest shift, and here be my excuse the novelty, if up my pen transgress. And notwithstanding that mine eyes might be somewhat bewildered, and my mind dismayed, they could not flee away so secretly. But that I plainly saw Puccio Sancato, and he it was who soul of three companions, which came in the beginning, was not changed. The other was he whom thou, Gavil, weepest. Rejoice, O Florence, since thou art so great, that over sea and land thou beatest thy wings, and throughout hell thy name is spread abroad. Among the thieves five citizens of thine like these I found, whence shame comes unto me, and thou thereby to no great honour restest. But, if when morn is near our dreams are true, feel shalt thou in a little time from now what prado, if none other craves for thee. 
And if it now were, it were not too soon would that it were, seeing it needs must be for to aggrieve me more the more I age. We went our way, and up along the stairs that Barnes had made us to descend before, remounted my conductor and drew me. And following the solitary path among the rocks and ridges of the crag, the foot without the hand sped not at all. Then sorrowed I, and sorrow now again, when I direct my mind to what I saw, and more my genius curb than I am wont. That it may run not unless virtue guide it, so that if some good star, or better thing, have given me good, I may myself not grudge it. As many as the hind who on the hill rests at the time when he who lights the world his countenance keeps least concealed from us. While as the fly gives place unto the gat see the glow warms down along the valley, perchance there where he ploughs and makes his vintage. But flames as manifold resplendent all was the eighth bulgia, as I grew aware as soon as I was where the depth appeared. And such as he with the bears avenged him beheld Elita's chariot at departing, what time the steeds to heaven erect uprose. For with his eye he could not follow it so as to see aught else than flame alone even as a little cloud ascending upward. Thus each along the gorge of an entrenchment was moving, for not one reveals the theft, and every flame a sinner steals away. I stood upon the bridge uprising to see, so that, if I had seized not on a rock, down had I fallen without being pushed. And the leader, who beheld me so attent, exclaimed, Within the fires the spirits are each swathes himself with it wherewith he burns. I replied, by hearing thee I am more sure, but I surmised already it might be so, and already wish to ask thee. And therewith in their flame do they lament the ambush of the horse, which made the door whence issued forth the Romans' gentle seat. If they within those sparks possess the power to speak. I said thee, master, much I pray, and repray, that the prayer be worth a thousand, when now the flame had come unto that point. Where to my leader it seemed time and place, after this fashion did I hear him speak. Then of the antique flame the greater horn, murmuring, began to wave itself about even as a flame doth which the wine fatigues. From Sirs had departed, who concealed me more than a year there near unto Gita, or ever yet Aeneas named it so. Nor fondness for my son, nor reverence for my old father, nor the due affection which joyous should have made Penelope. Could overcome within me the desire I had to be experienced of the world and of the vice and virtue of mankind. But I put forth on the high open sea with one sole ship, and that small company by which I never had deserted been. Both of the shores I saw as far as Spain, far as Morocco, and the Isle of Sards, and the others which that sea bays round about. I and my company were old and slow when at that narrow passage we arrived where Hercules his landmarks set as signals. That man no farther onward should adventure. On the right hand behind me left I Seville, and on the other already had left Ceuta. Though brothers who amid a hundred thousand perils, I said, have come unto the west, to this so inconsiderable vigil. Which is remaining of your senses still be ye unwilling to deny the knowledge, following the sun, of the unpeopled world. Consider ye the seed from which ye sprang ye were not made too live like unto brutes, but for pursuit of virtue and of knowledge. So eager did I render my companions with this brief exhortation for the voyage, that then I hardly could have held them back. And having turned our stern unto the morning, we of the oars made wings for our mad flight, evermore gaining on the larboard side. Already all the stars of the other pole the night beheld, and ours so very low it did not rise above the ocean floor. Five times rekindled and as many quenched had been the splendor underneath the moon since we had entered into the deep pass. When there appeared to us a mountain dim from distance, and it seemed to me so high as I had never any one beheld. Joyful were we, and soon it turned to weeping, for out of the new land a whirlwind rose, and smote upon the forepart of the ship. Three times it made her whirl with all the waters, at the fourth time it made the stern uplift, and the proud downward go as pleased another.
already was the flame erect on quiet, to speak no more, and now departed from us with the permission of the gentle Pope. And yet another, which behind it came, caused us to turn our eyes upon its top by a confused sound that issued from it. As the Sicilian bull that bellowed first with the lament of him, and that was right, who with his file had modulated it, bellowed so with the voice of the afflicted, that, notwithstanding it was made of brass, still it appeared with agony transfixed. Thus, by not having any way or issue at first from out the fire, to its own language converted were the melancholy words. But afterwards, when they had gathered way up through the point, giving it that vibration the tongue had given them in their passage out. Because I come perchance a little late, to stay and speak with me, let it not irk thee, thou seest it irks not me, and I am burning. If thou but lately into this blind world hast fallen down from that sweet Latian land, wherefrom I bring the whole of my transgression, I still was downward bent on listening, when my conductor touched me on the side, saying, Speak thou this one a Latian is. Romagna thine is not and never has been without war in the bosom of its tyrants, but open war I none have left there now. Ravenna stands as it long years has stood the eagle of Polenta there is brooding, so that she covers Servia with her vans. A city which once made the long resistance, and of the French a sanguinary heap, beneath a green pause finds itself again. Verruccia's ancient Mastafunda knew, who made such bad disposal of Montagna, where they are won't make wimbles of their teeth. The cities of Lamon and Santerno governs the linsel of the white lair, who changes sides twixt summertime and winter. And that of which the Savio bathes the flank, even as it lies between the plain and mountain, lives between tyranny and a free state. After the fire a little more had roared in its own fashion, the sharp point it moved this way and that, and then gave forth such breath. But Inesmach as never from this depth did any one return, if I hear true, without the fear of infamy I answer. I was a man of arms, then Cordelier, believing thus bigger to make amends, and truly my belief had been fulfilled. But for the high priest whom male betide, who put me back into my former sins, and how and wherefore I will have thee here. Well, I was still the form of bone and pulp my mother gave to me. The deeds I did were not those of a lion, but a fox. The machinations on the covert ways I knew them all, and practiced so their craft that to the ends of earth the sound went forth. But now unto that portion of mine age I saw myself arrived, when each one ought to lower the sails and coil away the ropes. That which before had pleased me then displeased me, and penitent and confessing I surrendered, ah, woe is me. And it would have bested me. The leader of the modern Pharisees having a war near unto later, and not with Saracens nor with the Jews. For each one of his enemies was Christian, and none of them had been to conquer Acre, nor merchandising in the Sultan's land nor the high office, nor the sacred orders in him regarded, nor in me that cord which used to make those girt with it more meager. But even as Constantine sought out Celester to cure his leprosy, within Soract, so this one sought me out as an adept, to cure him of the fever of his pride. Counsel he asked of me, and I was silent, because his words appeared in every eight. And then he said, Be not thy heart afraid, henceforth I the absolve, and thou instruct me how to raise Palestrina to the ground. Heaven have I power to lock and to unlock, as thou dost know, therefore the keys are too, the which my predecessor held not dear. Then urged me on his weighty arguments there, where my silence was the worst advice, and said, I, Father, since thou wishest me. Of that sin into which I now must fall, the promise long with the fulfillment short will make thee triumph in thy lofty seat. Francis came afterward, when I was dead, for me, but one of the black cherubim said to him, Take him not, do me no wrong. He must come down among my servitors, because he gave the fraudulent advice from which time forth I have been at his hair. For who repents not cannot be absolved, nor can one both repent and will at once because of the contradiction which consents not. Oh, miserable me!
How I did shudder when he seized on me, saying, Peradventure thou didst not think that I was a logician. He bore me unto Minos, who entwined eight times his tail about his stubborn back, and after he had bitten it in great rage. When it had thus completed its recital, the flame departed uttering lamentations, writhing and flapping its sharp pointed horn. Onward we passed, both I and my conductor, up o'er the crag above another arch which the moat covers, where is paid the fee. By those who, sowing discord, win their burden. Inferno canto xvi. Whoever could, in with untrammelled words, tell of the blood and of the wounds in full which now I saw by many times narrating. Each tongue would for a certainty fall short by reason of our speech and memory, but of small room to comprehend so much. If were again assembled all the people which formerly upon the faithful land of Puglia were lamenting for their blood, shed by the Romans on the lingering war that of the rings made such illustrious spoils, as Livy has recorded, who heirs not? With those who felt the agony of blows by making counter stand to Robert Giscard, and all the rest whose bones are gathered still. At Seperino, where a renegade was each Apulian, and at Taglicazo, where without arms the old Alardu conquered. And one his limb transpierced, and one lopped off should show, it would be nothing to compare with the disgusting mode of the ninth Bulgia. A cask by losing centerpiece or cant was never shattered so, as I saw one rent from the chin to where one breaketh wine. Between his legs were hanging down his entrails, his heart was visible, and the dismal sack that maketh excrement of what is eaten. How mutilated, see, is Mahomet in front of me doth holly weeping go, cleft in the face from forelock unto ching. And all the others whom thou here beholdest, disseminators of scandal and of schism while living were, and therefore are cleft thus. The devil is behind here, who doth cleave us thus cruelly, unto the falchion's edge, putting again each one of all this ream. When we have gone round the doleful road by reason that our wounds are closed again ere any one in front of him repass. My master made reply, to be tormented but to procure him full experience. More than a hundred were there when they heard him, who in the moat stood still to look at me, through wonderment oblivious of their torture. After one foot to go away he lifted, this word did Mahomet say unto me, then to depart upon the ground he stretched it. Another one who had his throat pierced through, and nose cut off close underneath the brows, and had no longer but a single ear. Staying to look in wonder with the others, before the others did his gullet open, which outwardly was red in every part. All to remembrance peer da medicina, if ere thou see again the lovely plain that from Vercelli slopes to Marcavo, and make it known to the best to Afano, to Messer Guido and Angelo likewise, that if foreseeing here be not in vain, Cast over from their vessel shall they be, and drown near unto the Catolica, by the betrayal of a tyrant fell. Between the isles of Cyprus and Maork and Neptune ne'er yet beheld so great a crime, neither of pirates nor argolic people. That traitor who sees only with one eye and holds the land, which some one here with me would fain be fasting from the vision of, show to me and declare, if thou wouldst have me bear up news of thee, who is this person of the bitter vision? Oh, how bewildered unto me appeared, with tongue asunder and his windpipe slit, Curio, who in speaking was so bold. And one who both his hands dissevered had, the stumps uplifting through the murky air, so that the blood made horrible his face. Thou shalt remember Mosca also, who said, Alas, a thing done has an end, which was an ill seed for the Tuscan people and death unto thy race. Thereto I added whence he, accumulating woe on woe, departed like a person sad and crazed. But I remained to look upon the crowd and saw a thing which I should be afraid, without some further proof, even to recount. If it were not that conscience reassures me, that good companion which emboldens man beneath the hauberk of its feeling pure. I truly saw, and still I seem to see it, 
a trunk without a head walk in like manner as walked the others of the mournful herd. And by the hair it held the head dissevered, hung from the hand in fashion of a lantern, and that upon us gazed and said, It of itself made to itself a lamp, and they were two in one, and one in two how that can be, he knows who so ordains it. When it was come close to the bridge's foot, it lifted high its arm with all the head, to bring more closely unto us its words. And so that thou may carry news of me, know that Bertram de Born am I, the same who gave to the young king the evil comfort. I made the father and the son rebellious at Chittiful not more with Absalom and David did with his accursed goadings. Because I parted persons so united, parted do I now bear my brain, alas. From its beginning, which is in this trunk. Inferno canto exic. The many people on the divers wounds these eyes of mine had so inebriated, that they were wishful to stand still and weep. Thou hast not done so at the other bulge consider, if to count them thou believest, that two and twenty miles the valley winds. I made answer thereupon. Attended to the cause for which I looked, perhaps a longer stay thou wouldst have pardoned. For him I saw below the little bridge, pointing at thee, unthreatening with his finger fiercely, and heard him call Jerry Del Bello. O my conductor, his own violent death, which is not yet avenged for him. I said by any who is sharer in the shame. Thus did we speak as far as the first place upon the crag which the next valley shows down to the bottom, if there were more light. When we were now right over the last cloister of Mebolge, so that its lay brothers could manifest themselves unto our side. Divers' lamentings pierced me through and through, which with compassion had their arrows barbed, where it miners I covered with my hands. But pain would be there from the hospitals of Valdicina. Twixt July and September, and of Marima and Sardini. All the diseases in one moat were gathered, such was it here, and such a stench came from it as from putrescent limbs is wont to issue. We had descended on the furthest bank from the long crag upon the left hand still, and then more vivid was my power of sight. Down towards the bottom, where the ministress of the High Lord, Justice Infallible, punishes foragers, which she here records. I do not think a sadder sight to see was an agent of the whole people sick, when was the air so full of pestilence. The animals, down to the little worm, all fell, and afterwards the ancient people, according as the poets have affirmed, were from the seed of ants restored again, then was it to behold through that dark valley the spirits languishing in divers heaps. This on the belly, and upon the back one of the other lay, and others crawling shifted themselves along the dismal road. We step by step went onward without speech, gazing upon and listening to the sick who had not strength enough to lift their bodies. I saw two sitting leaned against each other as leans and heating platter against platter, from head to foot bespotted or with scab. And never saw I plied a curriculum by stable by for whom his master waits, or him who keeps awake and willingly. As every one was plying fast the bite of nails upon himself, for the great rage of itching which no other succor had. And the nails downward with them dragged the scab and fashion as a knife the scales of bream or any other fish that has them largest. Began my leader unto one of them, and makest of them pincers now and then. Relations are we, whom thou so wasted seest, both of us here. One weeping made reply, But who art thou that questionest about us? And said the guy, One am I who descends down with this living man from cliff to cliff, and I intend to show hell unto him. Then broken was their mutual support, and trembling each one turned himself to me, with others who had heard him by rebound. Holy to me did the good master gather, saying, Say unto them whiter thou wishest, and I began since he would have it so. One made reply, and Albert of Sina had me burned, but what I died for does not bring me here. Tis true, I said to him, speaking in jest, that I could rise by flight into the air, and he who had conceit, but little wit, would have me show to him the art, and only because no Daedalus I made him, made me be burned by one who held him as his son. 
and to the poet said, I, Thou was ever so vain a people as the saints, not for a certainty the French by far. The Niccolo, who the luxurious use of cloves discovered earliest of all within that garden where such seed takes root. And taking out the band among whom squandered Cachadassian his vineyards on vast woods, and where his with the Abaglita proffered. But that thou know who thus doth second thee against the scenes, make sharp thine eye towards me, so that my face well answer thee. And thou shalt see I am Capuchio's shade, who metals falsified by alchemy thou must remember, if I will descry thee. Was it the time when Juno was enraged, for Semele against the Theban blood, as she already more than once had shown? So reft of reason Athemus became, that, seeing his own wife with children twain walking encumbered upon either hand, he cried, Spread out the nets, that I may take the Leonis under whelps upon the passage, and then extended his unpitying claws, seizing the first who had the name Lurchus, and whirled him round, and dashed him on a rock, and she, with the other burthen, drowned herself. And at the time when fortune downward hurled the Trogans' arrogance, that all things dared, so that the king was with his kingdom crushed. Acuba sad, disconsolate, and captive, when lifeless she beheld Polyxena, and of her Polydorus on the shore. Of ocean was the dolorous one aware, out of her senses like a dog she barked, so much the anguish had her mind distorted. But not of Thebes the Furies nor the Trojan were ever seen in any one so cruel and goading beasts, and much more human members. As I beheld two shadows pale and naked, who, biting in the manner, ran along that a boar does, when from the sty turned loose. One two cup of shit came, and by the nape seized with its teeth his neck, so that in dragging it made his belly grate the solid bottom. And the Aretine, who trembling had remained, said to me, That mad sprite is Johnny Skitchy, and raving goes thus harrying other people. Said I to him, So may not the other set teeth on thee, let it not weary thee to tell us who it is ere it dart hence. He came to sin with him after this manner, by counterfeiting of another's form as he who goeth yonder undertook. And after the two maniacs had passed on whom I held mine eye, I turned it back to look upon the other evil born. I saw one made in fashion of a lute, if he had only had the groin cut off just at the point at which a man is forked. The heavy dropsy, that so disproportions the limbs with humours, which it ill concocts that the face corresponds not to the belly, compelled him so to hold his lips apart as does the hectic, who because of thirst one towards the chin, the other upward turns. O ye who without any torment are, and why I know not, in the world of woe. He said to us, Behold, and be attentive, unto the misery of master at my head while living much of what I wished, and now, alas, a drop of water crave. The rivulets that from the verdant hills of Cassington descend down into Arno, making their channels to be cold and moist. Ever before me stand, and not in vain, for far more doth their image dry me up than the disease which strips my face of flesh. The rigid justice that chastises me draweth occasion from the place in which I sinned, to put the more my sighs in flight. There is Romana, where I counterfeited the currency imprinted with a Baptist, for which I left my body burned above. But if I here could see the tristful soul of Guido, or Alessandro, or their brother, for brand is found, I would not give the sight. One is within already, if the raving shades that are going round about speak truth, but what avails it me, whose limbs are tied? If I were only still so light, that in a hundred years I could advance one inch, I had already started on the way. Seeking him out among this squalid folk, although the circuit be eleven miles, and be not less than half a mile across. Who are the two poor wretches that smoke like unto a wet hand in winter, lying there close upon thy right hand confines? I found them here, replied he, when I reigned into this chasm, and since they have not turned, nor do I think they will for evermore. Then one of them, who felt himself annoyed at being peradventure, named so darkly, smote with a fist upon his hardened paunch. 
It gave a sound, as if it were a drum and Master Adam smote him in the face, with arm that did not seem to be less hard. Although be taken from me all motion, for my limbs that heavy are, I have an arm unfettered for such need. Wherein he answer me? When thou didst go unto the fire, thou hadst it not so ready, but hadst it so and more when thou wast coining. Thou sayest true in that, but thou wast not so true a witness there, where thou wast questioned of the truth at Troy. If I spake false, thou falsifiedst the coin. And for one fault I am here, and thou for more than any other demon. Remember, perjurer, about the horse. He made reply who had the swollen belly. And rueful be it thee, the whole world knows it. Rueful to thee, the thirst be wherewith cracks thy tongue. And the putrid water that hedges so thy paunch before thine eyes. And listening to them was I wholly fixed, when said the master to me. Now just look, for little wants it that I quarrel with thee. When him I heard in anger speak to me, I turned me round towards him with such shame that still it eddies through my memory. And as he is who dreams of his own harm, who dreaming wishes it may be a dream, so that he craves what is as if it were not. Such uh, it became, not having power to speak, for to excuse myself I wished, and still excused myself, and did not think I did it. Less shame doth wash away a greater fault. The master said, Then this of thine has been there for thyself disburden of all sadness, and make account that I am I beside thee, if you're it come to pass that fortune bring thee where there are people in a like dispute. One and the self-same tongue first wounded me, so that it tamed the one cheek and the other, and then held out to me the medicine. Thus do I hear that once Achilles' spear, his and his father's, used to be the cause first of a sad and then a gracious bloom. We turned our backs upon the wretched valley, upon the bank that girds it round about, going across it without any speech. There it was less than night and less than day, so that my sight went little in advance, but I could hear the blare of a loud horn. So loud it would have made each thunder faint, which, counter to it following its way, mine eyes directed wholly to one place. After the dolorous discomfiture when Charlemagne the holy emprise lost, so terribly Orlando sounded not. Short while my head turned thitherward I held when many lofty towers I seemed to see where it had Master, say, what town is this? As when the fog is vanishing away, little by little doth a sight refigure whiter the mist that crowds the air conceals. So, piercing through the dense and darksome air, more and more near approaching towered the verge, my air fled, and fear came over me. Because as on its circular parapets Montregen crowns itself with towers, in thus the margin which surrounds the well. With one half of their bodies turreted the horrible giants, whom Jove menaces in now from out the heavens when he thunders. And I of one already saw the face, shoulders, and breast, and great part of the belly, and down along his sides both of the arms. Certainly nature, when she left the making of animals like these, did well indeed by taking such executors from Mars. And if of elephants and whales she doth not repent her, whosoever looketh subtly more just and more discreet will hold her for it. For where the argument of intellect is added unto evil will and power, no rampart can the people make against it. His face appeared to me as long and large as is at Rome the pinecon of St. Peter's, and in proportion were the other bones. So that the margin, which an apron was down from the middle, showed so much of him above it that to reach up to his hair three fresh landers in vain had vaunted them for i beheld thirty great palms of him down from the place where man his mantle buckles began to clamour the ferocious mouth to which were not befitting sweeter psalms therefore a longer journey did we make turned to the left and a crossbow shut off we found another far more fierce and large in binding him who might the master be, I can't say, but he had pinioned close behind the right arm, and in front the other. But chains that held him so begirt about from the neck down, that on the part uncovered it wound itself as far as the fifth gyre. 
This proud one wished to make experiment of his own power against the supreme Jove. My leader said whence he has such a guerdon, if possible I should wish that of the miserless prayer as these eyes of mine might have experience. There never was an earthquake of such might that it could shake a tower so violently, as a felt suddenly shook himself. Then was I more afraid of death than ever, for nothing more was needful than the fear, if I had not beheld the manacles. Then we proceeded farther in advance, and two antes came, who, full five ells without the head, forth issued from the cavern. Once broughtst a thousand lions for thy prey, and who, hadst thou been at the mighty war among thy brothers, some it seems still think. The sons of earth the victory would have gained place us below, nor be disdainful of it, there where the cold doth lock Cusitus up. Make us not go to Tityus nor Typhus, this one can give of that which here is longed for, therefore stoop down, and do not curl thy lip. So said the master, and in haste the other his hands extended and took up my guide, hands whose great pressure Hercules once felt. Virgilius, when he felt himself embraced, said unto me, Then of himself and me one bundle made, as seems the Carizenda, to behold beneath the leaning side, when goes a cloud above it so that opposite it hangs. Such did Antius seem to me, who stood watching to see him stoop, and then it was I could have wished to go some other way. But lightly in the abyss, which swallows up Judas with Lucifer, he put us down nor thus bowed downward made he their delay. But as a mast does in a ship, uprose. Inferno Canto X3 If I had rhymes both rough and stridulous, as were appropriate to the dismal hole down upon which thrust all other rocks, I would press out the juice of my conception more fully, but because I have them not, not without fear I bring myself to speak. For tis no enterprise to take in jest, to sketch the bottom of all the universe, nor for a tongue that cries mama and babo. But may those ladies help this verse of mine, who helped Amphion in enclosing Thebes, that from the fact the word be not diverse. O rebel ill begotten above all, who are in the place to speak of which is hard, twere better ye had here been sheep or goats. When we were down within the darksome well, beneath the giant's feet, but lower far, and I was scanning still the lofty wall. Look how thou steppest! Take heed thou do not trample with thy feet the heads of the tired, miserable brothers. Where it I turned me round, and saw before me and underfoot a lake, that from the frost the semblance had of glass, and not of water. So thick a veil ne'er made upon its current in winter time Danube and Austria, nor there beneath the frigid sky the dawn. As there was here so that if Tambernich had fallen upon it, or Pietrapana, in at the edge would not have given a creak. And as to croak the frog doth place himself with muzzle out of water, when is dreaming of glinning oftentimes the peasant girl. Livid, as far down as where shame appears, were the disconsolate shades within the ice, setting their teeth unto the note of storks. Each one his countenance held downward bent from mouth the cold, from eyes the doleful heart among them witness of itself procures. When round about me somewhat I had looked, I downward turned me, and saw two so close, the hair upon their heads together mingled. Ye who so strain your breasts together, tell me, who are you? And they bent their necks, and went to me their faces they had lifted, their eyes, which first were only moist within, gushed o'er their eyelids, and the frost congealed the tears between, and locked them up again. Glamp never bound together with Willwood so strongly were it they like two hay goats, but in together so much wrath o'ercame them. If thou desire to know who these two are, the valley whence Byzantia descends belonged to them and to their father Albert. They from one body came, and all Cana thou shalt surge through, and shalt not find a shade more worthy to be fixed in jility. Not he in whom were broken breast and shadow at one and the same blow by Arthur's hand, Focaccia, not, not he whom he encumbers. So with his head I see no farther forward, and bore the name of Sassel, Master, only well knowest thou who he was, if thou art Tuscan. 
Then I beheld a thousand faces made purple with cold whence o'er me comes a shudder, and evermore will come at frozen ponds. And while we were advancing towards the middle, where everything of weight unites together, and I was shivering in the eternal shade. Whether to our will or destiny or chance, I know not, but in walking among the heads I struck my foot hard in the face of one. Why dost thou trample me? Unless thou comest to increase the vengeance of Montaperty, why dost thou molest me? My master, now wait here for me, that I through him may issue from a doubt, and thou mayst hurry me, as thou shalt wish. The leader stopped unto that one I said who was blaspheming vehemently still. Who art thou that thus reprehendest others? Now who art thou that goes through Antonora smitting? Other people's cheeks, so that, if thou wert living, t'were too much. Living I am, undear to thee it may be. Was my response, if thou demandest fame, that mid the other notes thy name I place. For the reverse I long take thyself hence, and give me no more trouble for ill thou knowest to flatter in this hollow. Then by the scalp behind I seized upon him, and said, It must needs be thou name thyself, or not a hair remain upon thee here. Whence he to me? Though thou strip off my hair, I will not tell thee who I am, nor show thee if on my head a thousand times thou fall. I had his hair and hand already twisted, and more than one shock of it had pulled out, he barking, with his eyes held firmly down. When and cried another, What doth ail thee, Baca? Is not enough to clatter with thy jaws, but thou must bark. A devil touches thee? Now, said I, I care not to have thee speak, Acker's traitor, for unto thy shame I will report of thee veracious news. Reply thee, and tell what thou wilt, but be not silent, if thou issue hence of him who had just now his tongue so prompt. He weepeth here the silver of a French I saw, thus canst thou phrase it, him of Durather where the sinner stand out in the cold. If thou shouldst question be who else was there, thou hast beside thee him of Beccaria, of whom the gorget Florence slid asunder. Already we had gone away from him when I beheld two frozen in one hole so that one head a hood was to the other. And even as bread through hunger is devoured, the uppermost on the other set his teeth, there where the brain is to the nave united. Not in another fashion Titus gnawed the temples of Menelippus in disdain, than that one did the skull on the other things. O thou who showest by such bestial sign thy hatred against him whom thou art eating, tell me the war for. That if thou rightfully of him complain in knowing who ye are, and his transgression, I in the world above repay thee for it. Inferno canto exclay. His mouth uplifted from his grim repast, that sinner wiping it upon the hair of the same head that he behind had wasted. But if my words be seed that may bear fruit of infamy to the traitor whom I now speaking and weeping shalt thou see together. I know not who thou art, nor by what mode thou hast come down here, but a Florentine thou seemest to me truly, when I hear thee. Thou hast to know I was Count Agolino, and this one was Ruggieri the Archbishop, now I will tell thee why I am such a neighbor. That by effect of his malicious thoughts, trusting in him I was made prisoner, and after put to death, I need not say. But nevertheless what thou canst not have heard, that is to say, how cruel was my death. Here shalt thou, and shalt know if he has wronged me. A narrow perforation in the mew, which bears because of me the title of famine, and in which others still must be locked up, had shown me through its opening many moons already, when I dreamed the evil dream which of the future rent for me the veil. This one appeared to me as lord and master, hunting the wolf and whelps upon the mountain for which the peasants cannot look a see. With sleuthhounds gaunt, and eager, and well-trained, Galanda with Sismondi and Lanfianchi had sent up before him to the front. After brief course seemed unto me for a spend the father and the sons, and with sharp tushes it seemed to me I saw their flanks ripped open. When I before the morrow was awake, moaning amid their sleep I heard my sons who with me were, and asking after bread. 
Cruel indeed art thou, if yet thou grieve not, thinking of what my heart forebutted me, and weeps thou not, what art thou wont to weep at? They were awake now, and our drew nigh at which our food used to be brought to us, and through his dream was each one apprehensive. And I heard locking up the under door of the horrible tower where without a word I gazed into the faces of my sons. I wept not, I within so turned to stone they wept on darling little Ansel mine said thou dost gaze so, father, what doth ill thee? Still not a tear I shed, nor answer made all of that day, nor yet the night thereafter until another sun rose on the world. As now a little glimmer made its way into the dolorous prison, and I saw upon four faces my own very aspect. Both of my hands in agony I bid and, thinking that I did it from desire of eating, on a sudden they uprose. And said they, Father, much less pain will give us if thou do eat of us thyself, didst clothe us with this poor flesh, and do thus strip it off. I come me then, not to make them more sad. That day we all were silent, on the next. Ah! Under the earth, wherefore didst thou not open? When we had come unto the fourth day, Gadu threw himself down outstretched before my feet, saying, My father, why dost thou not help me? And there he died, and as thou seest me, I saw the three fall, one by one, between the fifth day and the sixth, when I bet at me. When he had said this, with his eyes distorted, the wretched skull resumed he with his teeth, which, as a dog's, upon the bone were strong. Ah! Pisa, the opprobrium of the people of the fair land, there where those it doth sound, since slow to punish thee thy neighbors are. But the Caprea and Gorgona move, and make a hedge across the mouth of Arno, that every person in the it may drown. War of Count Ugolino had the fame of having in thy castles thee betrayed, thou shouldst not on such cross have put his sons. Guiltless of any crime, thou modern thieves! Their youth made Agukshan and Bregeta, and the other two my song doth name above. We passed still farther onward, where the ice and other people ruggedly and swallows not downward turned, but all of them reversed. Weeping itself there does not let them weep, and grief that finds a barrier in the eyes turns itself inward to increase the anguish. Because the earliest tears a cluster form, and in the manner of a crystal visor, fill all the cup beneath the eyebrow full. And notwithstanding that, as in a callous, because of cold all sensibility its station had abandoned in my face, still it appeared to me I felt some wine whence I. My master, who sets this in motion? Is not below here every vapor quenched. Whence he to me? Full soon shalt thou be where thine I shall answer make to thee of this, seeing the cause which raineth down the blast. Whence I to him? If thou wouldst to me help thee, say who thou wast, and if I free thee not, may I go to the bottom of the ice. I am Friar Alberigo, he am I of the fruit of the bad garden, who here a date am getting for my faith. Said I to him? Now art thou too dead, and he to me how may my body fare up in the world, no knowledge I possess. Such an advantage has this Ptolemy, that oftentimes the soul descendeth here sooner than a tropas in motion sets it. And that thou mayest more willingly remove from off my countenance these glassy tears, know that as soon as any soul betrays, as I have done, his body by a demon is taken from him, who thereafter rules it until his time has wholly been revolved. The self down rushes into such a cistern, and still perchance above appears the body of yonder shade that winters here behind me. Said I to him, Thou dost deceive me, for Brancad Aurea is not dead as yet, and eats, and drinks, and sleeps, and puts on clothes, and mowed above. Teddy of Melbranch, their ware is boiling the tenacious pitch, as he had had Michel Sanche not arrived, when this one left a devil in his stead in his own body and one near of kin, who made together with him the betrayal. Ah, Janus! Ye men at variance with every virtue, full of every vice, wherefore are ye not scattered from the world? For with the vilest spirit of Romagna I found of you one such, who for his deeds and soul already in Cositas bathes. 
and still above and body seems alive. Inferno Canto Exterior. Exilaregis prodound inferni towards us, therefore look in front of thee. If thou discernest him, it is when there breathes a heavy fog, or when our hemisphere is darkening into night, appears far off a mill the wind is turning. He thought that such a building that I saw, and for the wind, I drew myself behind my guide, because there was no other shelter. Now was I, and with fear and verse I put it, there where the shades were wholly covered up, and glimmered through like unto straws and glass. Some prone are lying, others stand erect, this with the head, and that one with the soles, another ball like, face two feet in verts. When in advance so far we had proceeded, that it my master pleased to show to me the creature who once had the beauteous semblance. He from before me moved and made me stop, saying, Behold this, and behold the place where thou with fortitude must arm thyself. How frozen I became unpowerless, then ask it not, reader, for I write it not, because all language would be insufficient. I did not die, and I alive remain, not think for thyself, now hast thou out of wit, what I became, being of both deprived. The emperor of the kingdom, Dolores, from his midbreast forth issued from the ice, and better with a giant I compare. And do the giants with those arms of his consider now how great must be that hole, which unto such a part conforms itself. Were he as fair once as he now is foul, and lifted up his brow against his maker, well may proceed from him all tribulation. Oh, what a marvel it appeared to me, when I beheld three faces on his head. The one in front, and that vermilion wa. Two were the others that were joined with this above the middle part of either shoulder, and they were joined together at the crest. And the right hand one seemed twixt white and yellow, the left was such to look upon as those who come from where the Nile falls valleyward. Underneath each came forth two mighty wings, such as befitting where so great a bird sails of the sea I never saw so large. No feathers had they, but as of a bat their fashion was, and he was waving them, so that three winds proceeded forth therefrom. Thereby Cositus wholly was congealed. With six eyes did he weep, and down three chins trickled the tear drops and the bloody dribble. At every mouth he with his teeth was crunching a sinner, and the manner of a break, so that he three of them tormented thus. To him in front the biting was as not unto the clawing, for sometimes the spine utterly stripped of all the skin remained. That soul up there which has the greatest pain. The master said, is Judas Iscariot with head inside, he plies his legs without. Of the two others who head downward are, the one who hangs from the black jowl is Brutus, see how he writhes himself, and speaks no word. As seemed to him good, I clasped him round the neck, until the vantage ceased of time and place, and when the wings were opened wide apart. He laid fast hold upon the shaggy sides from fell to fell descended downward then between the thick hair and the frozen crust. When we were come to where the thigh revolves exactly on the thickness of the haunch, the guide, with labor and with hard-drawn breath, turned round his head where he had had his legs, and grappled to the hair as one who mounts, so that to hell I thought we were returning. The master said, panting as one fatigued, Must we perforce depart from so much evil? Then through the opening of a rock he issued, and down upon the margin seated me, then towards me he outstretched his wary step. I lifted up mine eyes and thought to see Lucifer in the same way I had left him, and I beheld him upward hold his legs. And if I then became disquieted, let stolid people think who do not see what the point is beyond which I had passed. The master said, Upon thy feet the way is long, and difficult the road, and now the sun to Midlitius returns. It was not any palace corridor there where we were, but dungeon natural, with floor uneven and unease of light. Ere from the abyss I tear myself away, my master, Said I when I had arisen to draw me from an error speak a little, that side thou wast, so long as I descended when round I turned me, thou didst pass the point to which things heavy draw from every side. 
and now beneath the hemisphere art come opposite that which overhangs the vast dry land, underneath whose cope was put to death. The man who without sin was born and lived. Thou hast thy feet upon the little sphere which makes the other face of the Judica. Here it is morn when it is evening there, and he with his hair a stairway made us still fixed remaineth as he was before. Upon this side he fell down out of heaven and all the land, the willum here emerge, for fear of him made up the sea of Vale. A place there is below, from Bills but as far receding as the tomb extends, which not by sight is known, but by sound. Of a small rivulet, that there descendeth through chasm within the stone, which it has gnawed with course that winds about and slightly falls. The guide and I into that hidden road now entered, to return to the bright world and without care of having any rest. We mounted up, he first and I the second, till I beheld through a round aperture some of the beauteous things that heaven doth there. Thence we came forth to behold the stars. Purgatorio Cantoa To run our better waters hoists its sail the little vessel of my genius now that leaves behind itself a sea so cruel. And of that second kingdom will I sing wherein the human spirit doth purge itself, unto us and to heaven becometh worthy. But let dead poesy here rise again, O holy muses, since that I am yours, and here Calliope somewhat ascend. My song accompanying with that sound, of which the miserable magpies felt the blow so great that they despaired of pardon. Sweet color of the oriental sapphire that was upgathered in the cloudless aspect of the pure air, as far as the first circle. Unto mine eyes did recommence delight soon as I issued forth from the dead air, which had with sadness filled mine eyes and breast. The beauteous planet, at two love in sights, was making all the orient to laugh, veiling the fishes that were in her escort. To the right hand I turned, and fixed my mind upon the other pole, and saw four stars ne'er seen before save by the primal people. Rejoicing in their flame let seem the heaven. O thou septentrional unwidowed sight, because thou art deprived of seeing these. When from regarding them I had withdrawn, turning a little to the other pole, there where the wane had disappeared already. I saw beside me an old man alone, worthy of so much reverence in his look, that morrows not to father any son. A long beard and with white hair intermingled he wore, in semblance like unto the tresses, of which a double list fell on his breast. The rays of the four consecrated stars did so adorn his countenance with light, that him I saw as were the sun before him. Who are you? Ye who counter the blind river have fled away from the eternal prison. Moving those venerable plumes, he said. Then did my leader lay his grasp upon me, and with his words, and with his hands and signs, reverent he made in me my knees and breath. But since it is thy will more be unfolded of our condition, how it truly is, mine can't be that this should be denied thee. This one has never his last evening seen but by his folly was so near to it that very little time was there to turn. As I have said, I unto him was sent to rescue him, and other way was none than this to which I have myself betaken. I've shown him all the people of perdition, and now those spirits I intend to show who purge themselves beneath thy guardianship. How I have brought him would be long to tell thee. Virtue descendeth from on high that aids me to let him to behold thee and to hear thee. Now may it please thee to watch safe his coming he seeketh liberty, which is so dear, as knoweth you life for her refuses. Thou knowest it sins for her, to thee not bitter was death in Utica, where thou didst leave the vesture, that will shine so, the great day. By us the eternal edicts are not broken since this one lives, and Minos binds not me but of that circle I where are the chaste. Eyes of thy Marcia, who in looks still praise thee, O holy breast, to hold her as thine own for her love, then incline thyself to us. Marcia so pleasing was unto mine eyes while I was on the other side. Then said he that every grace she wished of me I granted, now that she dwells beyond the evil river she can no longer move me by that lull which, 
when I issued forth from there was May. But if a lady of heaven do move and rule thee as thou dost say, no flattery is needful, let it suffice thee that for her thou ask me. Go oh, then, unsee thou gird this one about with a smooth rush, and that thou wash his face, so that thou cleanse away all stain therefrom. For twere not fitting that the eye o'ercast by any mist should go before the first angel, who is of those of paradise. This little island round about its base below there, yonder, where the billow beats it, doth rush as bear upon its washy ooze. No other plant that putteth forth a leaf, or that doth endure it, can there have life, because it yieldeth not unto the shocks. With this he vanished, and I raised me up without a word, and wholly drew myself unto my guide, and turned mine eyes to him. Son, follow thou my steps, let us turn back, for on this side declines the plain unto its lower boundaries. The dawn was vanquishing the maiden hour which fled before it, so that from afar I recognized the trembling of the sea. Long the solitary plain we went as one who unto the lost road returns, until he finds it seems to go in vain. As soon as we were come to where the dew fights with the sun, and being in a part where shadow falls, little evaporates. Both of his hands upon the grass outspread in gentle manner did my master place whence I, who of his action was aware. Extended unto him my tearful cheeks there did he make in me uncovered wholly that he which hell had covered up in me. Then came we down upon the desert shore which never yet saw navigate its waters any that afterward had known return. There he begirt me as the other pleased, O oh, marvellous! For even as he called the humble plant, such it sprang up again. Suddenly there where he uprooted it. Already had the sun the horizon reached whose circle of meridian covers o'er Jerusalem with its most lofty point. The night that opposite to him revolves was issuing forth from Ganges with the scales that fall from out her hand when she exceedeth. So that the white and the vermilion cheeks of beautiful Aurora, where I was, by too great age were changing into orange. We still were on the border of the sea like people who are thinking of their road, who go in heart and with a body state. And lo! As when, upon the approach of morning through the gross vapors, Mars grows fiery red down in the west upon the ocean floor. Appeared to me, may I again behold it. A light along the sea so swiftly coming, its motion by no flight of wing is equaled. From which, when I a little had withdrawn mine eyes, that I might question my conductor, again I saw it brighter grown and larger. Then on each side of it appeared to me I knew not what of white, and underneath it little by little there came forth another. My master yet had uttered not a word while the first whiteness into wings unfolded but when he clearly recognized the pilot. See how he scorneth human arguments, so that nor or he wants, nor other sail than his own wings, between so distant shores. Then as still nearer and more near us came the bird divine, more radiant he appeared, so that near by I could not endure him. But down I cast it, and he came to shore with a small vessel, very swift and light, so that the water swallowed not thereof. Upon the stern stood the celestial pilot, beatitude seemed written in his face, and more than a hundred spirits sat within. They chanted all together in one voice with whatso in that psalm is after written. Then made he sign of holy root upon them, where all cast themselves upon the shore, and he departed swiftly as he came. The throng which still remained there unfamiliar seemed with the place, all round about them gazing, as one who in new matters makes a say. On every side was darting forth the day. The sun, who had with his resplendent shafts from the mid even chased forth the Capricorn, when the new people lifted up their faces towards us, saying to us, If ye know, show us the way to go unto the mountain. The souls who had from seeing me draw breath, become aware that I was still alive, pallid in their astonishment became. And as two messenger who bears the all of the people throng to listen to the news, and no one shows himself afraid of crowding. So at the sight of me stood motionless those fortunate spirits, 
all of them, as if oblivious to go and make them fair. One from among them saw I coming forward as to embrace me with such great affection that it incited me to do the like. O oh, empty shadows, save an aspect only! Three times behind it did I clasp my hands as oft returned with them to my own breast. I think with wonder I depicted me where it the shadow smiled and backward drew and I, pursuing it, pressed farther forward. Gently it said that I should stay my steps, then knew I who it was, and I entreated that it would stop a while to speak with me. It made reply to me. Even as I love the immortal body, so I love thee free, therefore I stop at wherefore ghost thou, my own Casella. To return once more there where I am, I make this journey. Said I. But how from thee has so much time be taken, for of a righteous will his own is made. He sooth to say for three months past has taken whoever wished to enter with all peace. Whence I, who now had turned unto that shore where salt the waters of the Tiber grow, benignantly by him have been received. Love that within my mind discourses with me. Forthwith began he so melodiously, the melody within me still is sounding. My master, and myself, and all that people which with him were, appeared as satisfied as if naught else might touch the mind of any. Even as when, collecting grain or tares, the doves, together at their pasture met, quiet, nor showing their accustomed pride. The fought appear of which they are afraid, upon a sudden leave their food alone, because they are assailed by greater care. So that fresh company did I behold the song relinquish, and go towards the hill, as one who goes, and knows not whither or. Purgatory canto I. Nesmuch as the instantaneous flight had scattered them asunder o'er the plain, turned to the mountain whither reason spurs us. I pressed me close unto my faithful comrade, and how without him had I kept my course. Who would have led me up along the mountain? He seemed to me within himself remorseful, O noble conscience, and without a stain, how sharp a sting is trivial fault to thee. After his feet had laid aside the haste which mars the dignity of every act, my mind, that hitherto had been restrained, let loose its faculties as if delighted, and I my sight directed to the hill that highest towards the heaven uplifts itself. The sun, that in our rear was flaming red, was broken in front of me into the figure which had me the stoppage of its race. Unto one side I turned me, with the fear of being left alone, when I beheld only in front of me the ground obscured. My comforter began to say to me, turned wholly round, dost thou not think me with thee, and that I guide thee? Tis evening there already where is buried the body within which I cast a shadow, tis from Brundusium Tain, and Naples has it. Now if in front of me no shadow fall, marvel not at it more than at the heavens, because one ray impteth not another. To suffer torments, both of cold and heat, bodies like this that power provides, which wills that how it works be not unveiled to us. Insane is he who hopeth that our reason can traverse the illimitable way which the one substance in three persons follows. Mortals remain contented at the quay of four if he had been able to see all. No need there were for Mary to give birth. And ye have seen desiring without fruit, those whose desire would have been quieted, which evermore is given them for of grief. We came meanwhile unto the mountain's foot there so precipitate we found the rock, that nimble legs would there have been in vain. Twixt Larissa and Turbia, the most desert, the most secluded pathway is a stair easy and open, if compared with that. Who knoweth now upon which hand the hill slopes down? My master said, his footsteps sting, though that who goeth without wings may mount. And while he held his eyes upon the ground examining the nature of the path, and I was looking up around the rock, on the left hand appeared to me a throng of souls that moved their feet in our direction and did not seem to move, they came so slowly. I too, the master said, Behold on this side who will give us counsel, thou of thine own self can have it not. Then he looked at me, and with frank expression reply, 
Let us go there, for they come slowly, and thou be steadfast in thy hope, sweet son. Still was that people as far off from us after a thousand steps of ours, I say, as a good thrower with his hand would reach. When they all crowded unto the hard masses of the high bank, and motionless stood and close, as he stands still to look who goes in doubt. O oh, happy dead! O oh, spirits elect already! Virgilius may beginning by that peace which I believe is waiting for you all. The sheep come issuing forth from out the fold by ones and twos and threes, and the others stand timidly, holding down their eyes and nostrils. Then what the foremost does the others do, huddling themselves against her, if she stop, simple and quiet, and the wherefore know not. So moving to approach us, thereupon I saw the leader of that fortunate flock, modest in face and dignified in gait. As soon as those in the advance saw broken the light upon the ground at my right side, so that from me the shadow reached the rock, they stopped and backward drew themselves somewhat, and all the others who came after them, not knowing why nor wherefore, did the same. The master thus unsaid those worthy people making a signal with the back of the hand, and one of them began. Where thou art, thus going turn thine eyes, consider well if ere thou saw me in the other world. I turned me towards him, and looked at him closely, blond was he, beautiful, and of noble aspect, but one of his eyebrows had a blow divided. When with humility I had disclaimed ere having seen him, he said, and showed me high upon his breast a wound, go to my daughter beautiful, the mother of Sicily's honor and of our agons, and the truth tell her, if aught else be told. After I had my body lacerated by these two mortal stabs, I gave myself weeping to him, who willingly doth pardon. Horrible my iniquities had been, but infinite goodness hath such ample arms, that receives whatever turns to it. Had but cousins as pastor, who in chase of me was sent by Clement at that time, and God read understandingly this page. The bones of my dead body still would be at the bridgehead, near unto Benevento, under the safeguard of the heavy cairn. Now the rain bays unmoved them the wind, beyond the realm, almost beside the Verdi, where he transported them with tapers quenched. By malice and of theirs is not so lost eternal love that it cannot return, so long as hope has anything of green. True is it, who in contumacy dies of holy church, though penitent at last, must wait upon the outside this bank. Thirty times told the time that he has been in his presumption, unless such decree shorter by means of righteous prayers become. See now if thou hast power to make me happy, by making known unto my good Costanza how thou hast seen me, on this band beside. Well, never by delight or else by pain, that seizes any faculty of ours, wholly too that the soul collects itself. It seemeth that no other power it heeds on this against that error is which thinks one's soul above another kindles in us. And hence, whenever aught is heard or seen which keeps the soul intently bent upon it, time passes on, and we perceive it not. Because one faculty is that which listens, and other that which the soul keeps entire, this is as if in bonds, and that is free. Of this I had experience positive in hearing and in gazing at that spirit for fifty full degrees uprise and was the sun, and I had not perceived it, when we came to where those souls with one accord cried out unto us. The greater opening oft times hedges up with but a little forkful of his thorns the villager, what time the grape and browns. Then was the passageway through which ascended only my leader and myself behind him, after that company departed from us. One climbs San Lu and descends in Nolly, and mounts the summit of Bismanta with feet alone, but here one needs must fly. With the swift pinions on the plumes I say of great desire, conducted after him who gave me hope and made a light for me. We mounted upward through the rifted rock, and on each side the border pressed upon us, and feet and hands the ground beneath required. When we were come upon the upper rim of the high bank, out on the open slope, said I, what way shall we take, and he to me? No step of thine descends still up the mount behind me win thy way, 
till some sage escort shall appear to us the summit was so high it vanquished sight on the hillside precipitous far more than line from middle quadrant to the center spent with fatigue was i when i began oh my sweet father turn thee and behold how i remain alone unless thou stay oh son he said up yonder drag thyself pointing me to a terrace somewhat higher which on that side encircles all the hill these words of his so spurred me on that i strained every nerve behind him scrambling up until the circle was beneath my feet on ourselves we seated both of us turned to the east from which we had ascended for all men are delighted to look back to the low shores mine eyes i first directed then to the sun uplifted them and wondered that on the left hand we were smitten by it the poet well perceived that i was wholly bewildered at the chariot of the light where twixt us and the aquilon it entered Thou wouldst behold the zodiac's jagged wheel revolving still more near unto the bears unless it swerved aside from its old track. How that may be wouldst thou have power to think collected in thyself, imagine Zion together with this mount on earth to stand. So that they both one sole horizon have, and hemispheres diverse whereby the road which fate and alas knew not to drive. Truly, my master said i never yet saw i so clearly as i now discern there where my wit appeared incompetent at the mid-circle of supernal motion which in some art is the equator called and i remains between the sun and winter for reason which thou sayest departeth hence towards the septentrion what time the hebrews beheld it towards the region of the heat therefore when it shall seem so pleasant to thee that going up shall be to thee as easy as going down the current in a boat. And as he finished uttering these words, a voice close by us sounded. For adventure thou wilt have need of sitting down ere that, at sound thereof each one of us turned round, and saw upon the left hand a great rock, which neither I nor he before had noticed. Thither we drew on there were persons there who in the shadow stood behind the rock, as one through indolence is wont to stand. And one of them, who seemed to me fatigued, was sitting down, and both his knees embraced, holding his face low down between them bowed. I said, Do turn thine eye on him who shows himself more negligent than even sloth herself his sister were. Then he turned round to us, and he gave heed, just lifting up his eyes above his thigh and said, Now go thou up, for thou art valiant. Then knew I who he was in the distress. But still a little did my breathing quick, and my going to him hindered not, and after. I came to him, he hardly raised his head, saying, Hast thou seen clearly how the sun o'er thy left shoulder drives his chariot? First heaven must needs so long revolve me round outside thereof, as in my life it did, since the good size I to then postponed. Purgatoria Canto V I had already from those shades departed, and followed in the footsteps of my guide, when from behind, pointing his finger at me. See, it seems as if shone not the sunshine on the left of him below, and like one living seems he to conduct him. Mine eyes, I turned at utterance of these words, and saw them watching with astonishment but me, but me, and the light which was broken. I doth thy mind so occupy itself, the master said, That thou thy pace dost slacken, what matters it to thee what here is whispered? Come after me, and let the people talk stand like a steadfast tower, that never wags its top for all the blowing of the winds. What could I say in answer but? I said it somewhat with that color ting which makes a man of pardon sometimes worthy. Meanwhile along the mountain side across came people in advance of us a little, singing the misera verse by verse. When they became aware I gave no place for passage of the sunshine through my body, they changed their song into a long horse, and two of them, in form of messengers, ran forth to meet us, and demanded of us, Of your condition make us cognizant. The poor is enkindled, saw I ne'er so swiftly at early nightfall cleave the air serene, nor, at the set of sun, the clouds of August. 
but upward they returned in briefer time, and, on arriving, with the others wheeled towards us, like troops that run without a rein. This folk that presses unto us is great, and cometh to implore thee. So still go onward, and in going listen, O soul that goes to beatitude with the same members wherewith thou wast born. Shouting they came, a little stay thy steps, look, if thou hast any of us seen, so that o'er yonder thou bear news of him, ah, why dost thou go on? Ah, why not stay? Long since we all were slain by violence, and sinners even to the latest hour then did a light from heaven admonish us. Whence I, who speak alone before the others, pray thee, if ever thou dost see the land that twixt Romiga lies and that of Charles. Thou be so courteous to me of thy prayers in Fano, that they pray for me devoutly, that I may purge away my grave offences. From thence was I, but the deep wounds, through which issued the blood wherein I had my seat, were dealt me in bosom of the Antinori. There where I thought to be the most secure t'was he of Este had it done, who held me in hatred far beyond what justice will. But if towards the Mira I had fled, when I was overtaken at Orico, I still should be over yonder where men breathe. What violence or what chance led thee astray so far from Campaldino, that never has thy sepulture been known? He replied at Caesentino's foot a river crosses named Arcino, born above the hermitage in Apennine. There where the name thereof become void did I arrive, pierced through and through the throat, fleeing on foot, and bloodying the plain. There my sight lost I, and my utterance ceased in the name of Mary, and there I fell, and tenantless my flesh remained. Truth will I speak, repeat it to the living God's angel took me up, and he of hell shouted, O thou from heaven, why dost thou rob me? Thou bearest away the eternal part of him, for one poor little tear, that takes him from me, but with the rest I'll deal in other fashion. Well knowest thou how in the air is gathered that humid vapour which to water turns, soon as it rises where the cold doth grasp it. He joined that evil will, which I seeks evil, to intellect, and move the mist and wine by means of power, which his own nature gave. Thereafter, when the day was spent, the valley from Pratamano to the great yield covered with fog, and made the heaven above intent. So that the pregnant air to water changed, down fell the rain, unto the gullies came waiter of it earth tolerated not. And as it mingled with the mighty torrents, towards the royal river with such speed it headlong rushed, that nothing held it back. My frozen body near unto its outlet the robust archon found, and into Arno thrust it, and loosened from my breast the cross. Ah, when thou hast returned unto the world, and rested thee from thy long journeying. After the second followed the third spirit. When there is broken up the game of Sarah, he who has lost remains behind despondent, the throes repeating, and in sadness learns. The people with the other all depart, one goes in front, and one behind doth pluck him, and at his side one brings himself to mine. He pauses not, on this and that one hears they crowd no more to whom his hand he stretches, and from the throng he thus defends himself. Even such was I in that dense multitude, turning to them this way and that my face, and, promising, I freed myself therefrom. There was the Aretine who from the arms untamed of Ganditaka had his death, and he who fleeing from pursuit was drowned. There was imploring with his hands outstretched Frederick Novello, and that one of Pisa who made the good Marzuka seem so strong. I saw Count Orso and the soul divided by hatred and by envy from its body, as it declared, and not for crime committed. Pierre de la Brasse, I say, and here provide while still on earth the Lady of Brabant, so that for this she be of no worse flock. As soon as I was free from all those shades who only prayed that some one else may pray, so as to hasten their becoming holy. For top of judgment doth not veil itself, because the fire of love fulfills at once what he must satisfy who here installs him. And there, where I affirm that proposition, defect was not amended by a prayer, because the prayer from God was separate. Verily, and so deep a questioning do not decide, unless she tell it thee, 
who light twixt truth and intellect shall be. Good leader, let us make more haste, for I no longer tire me as before, and see, in now the hill a shadow casts. We will go forward with this day. He answered, as far as now is possible for us, but otherwise the fact is then thou thinkest, ere thou art up there, thou shalt see return him, who now hides himself behind the hill, so that thou dost not interrupt his race. We came up unto it, O Lombard soul, how lofty and disdainful thou didst bear thee, and grand and slow in moving of thine eyes. Nothing whatever did it say to us, but let us go our way eyeing us only after the manner of a cutch and lie. Still near to it, Virgilius drew, entreating that it would point us out the best descent, and it replied not unto his demand. But of our native land and of our life it questioned us, and the sweet guide began. And the shade, all in itself recluse, rose towards him from the place where first it was, saying, O mansion, I am Sordolo of thine own land, and in one embrace the other. Durville Italy, grief's hostelry, a ship without a pilot in great tempest. No lady thou of provinces, but brothel. That noble soul was so impatient, only at the sweet sound of his own native land, to make its citizen glad welcome there. Now within thee are not without war thy living ones, and one doth not the other of those whom one wall and one foss shut in. Search, wretched one, all round about the shores thy seaboard, and then look within thy bosom, if any part of thee enjoyeth peace. But boots it that for thee Justinian the bridle mend, if empty be the saddle. Without in this the shame would be the less. Ah! People, thou that oughtest to be devout, and to let Caesar sit upon the saddle, if well thou hearest what God teacheth thee. Behold how fell this wild beast has become being no longer by the spur corrected, since thou hast laid thy hand upon the bridle of German Albert, who abandonest her that has grown recalcitrant and savage, and oughtest to bestride her sad lobo. May a just judgment from the stars down fall upon thy blood, and be it new and open, that thy successor may have fear thereof. Because thy father and thyself have suffered, by greed of those transalpine lands distrained, the garden of the empire to be waste. Come and behold Montecce and Capaletti, Monaldi and Philippus J, careless man. Those sad already, and these doubt oppressed. Come, cruel one! Come and behold the oppression of thy nobility, and cure their wounds, and thou shalt see how safe is Santa Fior. Come and behold thy Rome, that is lamenting, widowed, alone. And day and night exclaims, My Caesar, why hast thou forsaken me? Come and behold how loving are the people, and if for us no pity move thee, come and be made ashamed of thy renown. And if it lawful be, O Jove supreme, who upon earth for us wast crucified, are thy just eyes averted otherwhere? Or preparation is that in the abyss of thine own counsel, for some good thou makest from our perception utterly cut off. For all the towns of Italy are full of tyrants, and becometh a Marcellus each peasant churl who plays the partisan. My Florence! Well mayst thou contented be with this digression, which concerns thee not, thanks to thy people who such forth a take. Many at heart have justice, but shoot slowly, that unadvised they come not to the bow, but on their very lips thy people have it. Then he refused to bear the common burden, but thy solicitous people answereth without being asked, and cried. Now be thou joyful, for thou hast good reason, thou affluent, thou in peace, thou full of wisdom. If I speak true, the event conceals it not. Athens and Lestamon, they who made the ancient laws, and were so civilized, made towards living well a little sigh. Compared with thee who makest such fine spun provisions, that to middle of November reach is not what thou in October spinnest. How oft, within the time of thy remembrance, laws, money, offices, and usages hast thou remodeled, and renewed thy members? And if thou mind thee well, and see the light, thou shalt behold thyself like a sick woman, who can't find repose upon her down.
but by her tossing wardeth off her pain. Purgatory can't invite. After the gracious and glad salutations had three and four times been reiterated, Sordillo backward drew one set. As one who suddenly before him sees something where he marvels, who believes and yet does not sing. It is, it is not. So he appeared and then bowed down his brow, and with humility returned towards him, and where inferiors embrace embraced him. O glory of the Latians, thou! He said, through whom our language showed what it could do, O pride eternal of the place I came from, through all the circles of a doleful realm. Responded he, have I come hitherward, heaven's power impelled me, and with that I come, I by not doing, not by doing, lost the sight of that high sun which thou desirest, and which too late by me was recognized. A place there is below not sad with torments, but darkness only, where the lamentations have not the sound of wailing, but are sighs. There dwell I with the little innocent snatched by the teeth of death, or ever they were from our human sinfulness exempt. There dwell I among those who the three saintly virtues did not put on, and without vice the others knew and followed all of them. But see already how the day declines, and to go up by night we are not able, therefore tis well to think of some fair sojourn. Was the answer. Should one wish to mount by night, would he prevent it be by others, or mayhap would not have power? Not that aught else would hindrance give, however, to going up, save the nocturnal darkness, this with the want of power the will perplexes. Thereon, my lord, as if in wonder, said, Do thou conduct us thither, where thou sayest that we can take delight in tarrying? Little had we withdrawn us from that place, when I perceived the mount was hollowed out in fashion as the valleys here are hollowed. Said that shade. Will we repair, whereof itself the hillside makes a lap, and therefore the new day will we await. Twixt hill and plain there was a winding path which led us to the margin of that dell, where dies the border more than half away. Gold and fine silver, and scarlet and pure white, the Indian wood resplendent and serene, fresh emerald the moment it is broken. By herbage and by flowers within that hollow planted, each one in color would be vanquished, as by its greater vanquished is the less. Nor in that place had nature painted only, but of the sweetness of a thousand odors made there a mingled fragrance and unknown. Sav Regina on the green and flowers there seated singing spirits I beheld which were not visible outside the valley, before the scanty sun now seeks his nest. Began the mansion who had led us thither, among them do not wish me to conduct you. Better from off this ledge the acts and faces of all of them will you discriminate, than in the plain below received among them. He who sits highest, and the semblance bears of having what he should have done neglected, unto the other song moves not his lips. Rudolf the Emperor was, who had the power to heal the wounds that Italy have slain, so that through others slowly she revives. The other, who in look doth comfort him, governed the region where the water springs, the Moldo bears the Elbe, and El the sea. His name was Ottokar, and in swaddling clothes far better he than bearded Wenceslas, his son, who feeds in luxury and ease. And the small-nosed, who close in council seems with him that has an aspect so benign, died fleeing and disflowering the lily. Look there, how he is beating at his breast. Behold the other one, who for his cheek sighing has made of his own palm a bed. Father and father-in-law of Francis Pest are they, and know his vicious life and lewd, and hence proceeds the grief that so doth pierce them. He who appears so stalwart, and chimes and singing, with that one of the manly knows the cord of every valor war begirt. And if as king had after him remained the stripling who in rear of him is sitting, well had the valor passed from vase to vase. Which cannot of the other heirs be said? Frederick and Giacomo possess the realms, but none the better heritage possesses. Not oftentimes appriseth through the branches the probity of man, and this he wills who gives it, so that we may ask of him.
speak to the large nose to reach my words, no less than to the other peer, who with him sings whence province and Apulia grieve already. The plant is as inferior to its seed, as more than Beatrice and Margaret Costanza boasteth of her husband still. Behold the monarch of a simple life, Harry of England, sitting there alone, he in his branches has a better issue. He who the lowest on the ground among them sits looking upward, is the Marquis William, for whose sake Alessandria and her war. Was now the hour that turneth back desire in those who sail the sea, and melts the heart, the day they've sent to their sweet friends farewell. And the new pilgrim penetrates with love, if he doth hear from far away a bell that seemeth to deplore the dying day. When I begin to make of no avail my hearing, and to watch one of the souls uprising, that begged attention with its hand. It joined and lifted upward both its palms, fixing its eyes upon the Orient, as if it said to God, Not else I care for. So devoutly issued forth from its mouth, and with such dulcet notes, it made me issue forth from my own mind. And then the others sweetly and devoutly, accompanied it through all the hymn entire, having their eyes on the supernal wheels. Here, reader, fix thine eyes well on the truth, for now indeed so subtle is the veil, surely to penetrate within is easy. I saw that army of the gentleborn thereafterward in silence upward gaze, as if in expectation, pale and humble. And from on high come forth and down descend. I saw two angels with two flaming swords, truncated and deprived of their points. Green as the little leaflets just now born their garments were, which, by their verdant pinions beaten and blown abroad, they trailed behind. One just above us came to take his station, and one descended to the opposite bank, so that the people were contained between them. Clearly in them discerned I the blonde head, but in their faces was the eye bewildered as faculty confounded by excess. From Mary's bosom both of them have come, as guardians of the valley against the serpent that will come and on, whereupon I, who knew not by what road, turned round about, and closely drew myself, utterly frozen, to the faithful shoulders. Then once again, Sordella, now descend we amid the grand shades, and we will speak to them right pleasant will it be for them to see you. Only three steps I think that I descended, and was below, and saw one who was looking only at me, as if he fain would know me. Already now there was growing dark, but not so that between his eyes and mine it did not show what it before locked up. Towards me he moved, and I towards him did move noble Judge Neo. How it me delighted, when I beheld thee not among the damned! No greeting fair was left unsaid between us, then asked he. How long is it since thou camest o'er the far waters to the mountain's foot? Said I to him. Through the dismal places I came this morn, and am in the first life, albeit the other going thus, I came. And on the instant my reply was heard, he and Sordello both shrank back from me like people who are suddenly bewildered. One to Virgilius, and the other turned to one who sat there, crying. Up, Curio! Come and behold what God in grace has willed. When thou shalt be bound the waters wide, tell my Giovanna that she pray for me, where answer to the innocent is made. I do not think her mother loves me more since she has laid aside her wimple white, which she, unhappy, needs must wish again. Through her full easily is comprehended how long in woman lasts the fire of love, if I or touch do not relight it often. In this wise spake he, with the stamp impressed upon his aspect of that righteous zeal which measurably burneth in the heart. My greedy eyes still wandered up to heaven, still to that point where slowest are the stars, even as a wheel the nearest to its axle. Son, what dost thou gaze at up there? And I to him, at those three torches with which this hither pole is all on fire, and he to me. The four resplendent stars thou sawest this morning are down yonder low, and these have mounted up to where those were. As he was speaking to himself, Sordolo drew him, and said,
Oh, they're our adversary. And pointed with his finger to look thither. Upon the side on which the little valley no barrier hath, a serpent was perchance the same which gave to eat the bitter food. Twixt grass and flowers came on the evil streak, turning at times its head about, and licking its back like to a beast that smooths itself. I did not see, and therefore can't say how the celestial falcons again to move, but well I saw that they were both in motion. Hearing the air cleft by their verdant wings, the serpent fled, and round the angels wheeled, up to their stations flying back alike. The shade that to the judge had near approached when he had called throughout that whole assault had not a moment loosed its gaze on me. So may the light that leadeth thee on high find in thine own free will as much of wax as needful is up to the highest azure. Said I unto him, through your domains I never passed, but where is there a dwelling throughout all Europe, where they are not known? That fame which doth honor to your house, proclaims its signors and proclaims its land, so that he knows of them who ne'er was there. And as I hope for heaven, I swear to you, your honored family, and not abates the glory of the purse and of the sword. Before that such a courteous opinion shall in the middle of thy head be nailed with greater nails than of another speech. Purgatoria Canto eh? The concubine of old Tithonus now gleamed white upon the eastern balcony, forth from the arms of her sweet paramour. With gems her forehead all relucent was set in the shape of the cold animal which with its tail doth smite amain the nations. And of the steps, with which she mounts, the knight had taken two in that place where we were, and now the third was bending down its wings. When I, who something had of Adam and me, vanquished by sleep, upon the grass reclined, there were all five of us already set. Just at the hour when her sad lay begins the little swallow, near unto the morning, perchance in memory of her former woes. And when the mind of man, a wanderer more from the flesh, unless by thought imprisoned, almost prophetic in its visions is. In dreams it seemed to me I saw suspended an eagle in the sky, with plumes of gold, with wings wide open, and intent to stoop. And this, it seemed to me, was where had been by Ganymede his kith and kin abandoned, when to the high consistory he was wrapped. I thought within myself, perchance he strikes from habit only here, and from elsewhere disdains to bear up any in his feet. Then wheeling somewhat more, it seemed to me, terrible as the lightning he descended, and snatched me upward even to the fire. Therein it seemed that he and I were burning, and the imagined fire did scorch me so, that of necessity my sleep was broken. Not otherwise Achilles started up, round him turning his awakened eyes, and knowing not the place in which he was. What time from Chiron stealthily his mother carried him sleeping in her arms to Steros, where from the Greeks withdrew him afterwards. Then I upstarted, when from off my face sleep fled away and pallid I became, as doth a man who freezes with a fright. Only my comforter was at my side, and now the sun was more than two hours high, and turned towards the seashore was my face. That my lord, be reassured, for all is well with us, do not restrain, but put forth all thy strength. Thou hast at length arrived at purgatory, see there the cliff that closes it round, see there the entrance, where it seems disjoined. Well met dawn, which doth precede the day, when inwardly thy spirit was asleep upon the flowers that deck the land below. There came a lady and said, I am Lucia, let me take this one up, who is asleep, so will I make his journey easier for him. Zordolo and the other noble shapes remained, she took thee, and as day grew bright, upward she came, and I upon her footsteps. In guise of one whose doubts are reassured, and who to confidence his fear doth change, after the truth has been discovered to him. So did I change, and when without disquiet my leader saw me up along the cliff he moved, and I behind him toward the height. Reader, thou seest well how I exalt my theme, and therefore if with greater art I fortify it, marvel not thereat. Nearer approached we, and were in such place, that there, where first appeared to me a rift like to a crevice that disparts a wall. 
I saw a portal on three stairs beneath, diverse in color, to go up to it, and a gatekeeper, who yet spake no word. And as I opened more and more mine eyes, I saw him seated on the highest stair, such in the face that I endured it not. And in his hand he had a naked sword, which so reflected back the sunbeams towards us, that oft in vain I lifted up mine eyes. Tell it from where you are, what is to wish? Where is the escort? Take heed your coming hither harm you not. A lady of heaven, with these things conversant. My master answered him, but even now said to us, Thither go there is the portal, and may she speed your footsteps and all good. Again began the courteous janitor, Come forward then unto these stairs of ours. Thither did we approach, and the first stair was marble white, so polished and so smooth. I mirrored myself therein as I appear. The second, tinct of deeper hue than purse, was of a calcined and uneven stone, cracked all asunder lengthwise and across. The third, that uppermost rests massively, porphyry seemed to me as flaming red as blood that from a vein is spurting forth. Both of his feet was holding upon this the angel of God, upon the threshold seated, which seemed to me a stone of diamond. Long the three stairs upward with good will did my conductor draw me, saying, Ask humbly that he the fastening may undo. Devoutly at the holy feet I cast me, for mercy's sake besought that he would open, but first upon my breast three times I smote. Seven peas upon my forehead he described with the sword's point, and Take heed that thou wash these wounds, when thou shalt be within. Ashes or earth that dry is excavated, of the same color were with his attire, and from beneath it he drew forth two keys. One was of gold, and the other was of silver, first with the white, and after with the yellow, plied he the door, so that I was content. But never faileth either of these keys, so that it turned not rightly in the lock. He said to us, This entrance doth not open, more precious one is, but the other needs more art and intellect ere it unlock, for it is that which doth not unloose. Then pushed the portals of the sacred door, exclaiming, Enter, but I give you warning that forth returns whoever looks behind. And when upon their hinges were turned round the swivels of that consecrated gate, which are of metal massive and sonorous, or not so loud, nor so discordant seemed Tarpia, when was ten from it the good Mytilus, wherefore meagre it remained. At the first thunder peal I turned attentive, and seemed to hear in voices mingled with sweet melody. Exactly such an image rendered me that which I heard, as we are wont to catch, when people singing with the organ stand. For now we hear, and now hear not the words. Purgatoria Canto X When we had crossed the threshold of the door which the perverted love of souls disuses, because it makes the crooked way seem straight, Rechewing I heard it closed again, and if I had turned back mine eyes upon it, what for my failing had been fit excuse. We mounted upward through a rifted rock, which undulated to this side, and that, even as a wave receding and advancing. Here it behoves us use a little art. To adapt ourselves now here, now there, to the receding side. And this our footsteps so infrequent made that sooner had the moon's decreasing disk regained its bed to sink again to rest. Then we were forth from out that needle's eye, but when we free and in the open were, there where the mountain backward piles itself. I wearied out, and both of us uncertain about our way, we stopped upon a plain more desolate than roads across the deserts. From where its margin borders on the void, two foot of the high bank that ever rises, a human body three times told would measure. And far as I of mine could wing its flight, now on the left and on the right flank now, the same this cornice did appear to me. Thereon our feet had not been moved as yet, when I perceived the embankment round about, which all right of ascent had interdicted. To be of marble white, and so adorned with sculptures, that not only Polycletus, but nature's self, had there been put to shame. The angel, 
who came down to earth with tidings of peace that had been wept for many a year, and opened heaven from its long interdict. In front of us appeared so truthfully there sculptured in a gracious attitude, he did not seem an image that is silent. One would have sworn that he was saying, for she was there an effigy portrayed who turned the key to oath the exalted love, and in her mien this language had impressed ex ancilla day as distinctly as any figure stamps itself in wax, keep not thy mind upon one place alone. The gentle master said, who had me standing upon that side where people have their hearts, where it I moved mine eyes, and I beheld in rear of Mary, and upon that side where he was standing who conducted me. Another story on the rock imposed wherefore I passed Virgilius and drew near, so that before mine eyes it might be set. There sculptured in the selfsame marble were the cart and oxen, drawing the holy ark, wherefore one dreads an office not appointed. People appeared in front, and all of them in seven choirs divided, of two senses made one sing. The other, yes, they sing, likewise unto the smoke of the frankincense which there was a maged forth, the eyes and nose were in the yes and no discordant made. Proceeded there the vessel bendite, dancing with girded loins, the humble psalmist, and more and less than king was he in this. Opposite, represented at the window of a great palace, Mitchell looked upon him, even as a woman scornful and afflicted. I moved my feet from where I had been standing, to examine near at hand another story which after Mitchell glimmered white upon me. There the high glory of the Roman prince was chronicled, whose great beneficence moved Gregory to his great victory. Tis of the emperor Trajan I am speaking, and a poor widow at his bridal stood in an attitude of weeping and of grief. Round about him seemed it thronged and full of cavaliers, and the eagles in the gold above them visibly in the wine were moving. A wretched woman in the midst of thee seemed to be saying, Give me vengeance, Lord, for my dead son, for whom my heart is breaking. Now wait until I shall return. And she, my Lord, like one in whom grief is impatient, shouldst thou not return? And he, who shall be where I am, will give it thee. And she, the deed of others, what boots it thee, if thou neglect thine own? Now comfort thee, for it behoves me that I discharge my duty ere I move justice so wills, and pity doth retain me. He who on no new thing has ever looked was the creator of this visible language, novel to us, for here it is not found. While I delighted me in contemplating the images of such humility, and dear to look on for their maker's sake. Behold, upon this side, but rare they make their steps. The poet murmured, Many people these will direct us to the lofty stairs. Mine eyes, that in beholding were intent to see new things, of which the curious are in turning round towards him were not slow. But still I wish not, reader, thou shouldst swerve from thy good purposes, because thou hearest how God ordaineth that the debt be paid. Attend not to the fashion of the torment, think of what follows, think that at the worst it cannot reach beyond the mighty sentence. Again I, that which I behold moving towards us seems to me not persons, and what I know not, so in sight I waver. O ye proud Christians, wretched, weary ones, who in the vision of the mind and firm confidence have in your backsliding steps, do ye not comprehend that we are worms, born to bring forth the angelic butterfly that flieth unto judgment without screen? Why floats aloft your spirit high in air? Like are ye unto insects enveloped, even as the worm in whom formation fails. As to sustain a ceiling or a roof, in place of corporal, oftentimes a figure is seen to join its knees unto its breast. Which makes of the unreal real anguish arise in him who sees it, fashioned thus beheld I those, when I had taken good heed. True is it, they were more or less bent down according as they more or less were laden on he who had most patience in his looks. Leaping did seem to say, Purgatoria Canto She. 
praised be thy name on thine omnipotence by every creature, as befitting is to render thanks to thy sweet affluence. Come unto us the peace of thy dominion, for unto it we can't of ourselves, if it come not, with all our intellect. Even as thine own angels of their will make sacrifice to thee, Hosanna singing, so may all men make sacrifice of theirs. Give unto us this day our daily manna, without in which in this rough wilderness backward goes he who toils most to advance. And even as we that trespass we have suffered pardon in one another, pardon thou benignly, and regard not our desert. Our virtue, which is easily overcome, put not to proof with the old adversary, but thou from him who spurs it so, deliver us for themselves and us good furtherance those shades imploring went beneath a weight like unto that of which we sometimes dream iniquity and anguish round and round and weary all upon that foremost chorus purging away the smoke stains of the world if their good words are always said for us what may not here be said and done for them by those who have a good root to their will well may we help them wash away the marks that hence they carried, so that clean and light they may ascend unto the starry wheels. Show us on which hand towered the stairs the way is shortest, and if more than one that passes, point us out that which least abruptly fall. The words of theirs which they returned to those that he whom I was following had spoken, it was not manifest from whom they came. And were I not impeded by the stone which this proud neck of mine doth subjugate, whence I am forced to hold my visage down. Him who still lives and does not name himself, would I regard, to see if I may know him and make him pay us unto this burden. Relation was I, and born of a great Tuscan Guglielmo, although brandished I was my father, I know not if his name were ever with you. The ancient blood and deeds of gallantry of my progenitor so arrogant made me that, thinking not upon the common mother, all men I held in scorn to such extent I died therefore, as know the scenes, and every child in Campagnetico. I am Umberto, and not to me alone has pride done harm, but all my kith and kin has with it dragged into adversity. Listening I downward bent my countenance on one of them, not this one who was speaking, twisted himself beneath the weight that cramps him. And looked at me, and knew me, and called out, keeping his eyes laboriously fixed on me, who all bowed down was going with them. Asked I him, Art thou not Odorese, Agabio's honor, and honor of that art which is in Paris called illuminating? Said he, more laughing are the leaves touched by the brush of Franco Bolognese, all his the honor now, and mine in part. In sooth I had not been so courteous while I was living for the great desire of excellence on which my heart was bent. Here of such pride is paid the forfeiture, and yet I should not be here were it not that, having power to sin, I turned to God. O oh, the vain glory of the human powers, how little green upon thy summit lingers, if be not followed by an age of grossness. In painting, Samabu thought that he should hold the field, now Jada has the cry, so that the other's fame is growing dim. So has one Guido from the other taken the glory of our tongue, and he perchance is born, who from the nest shall chase them both. Not is this mundane rumor but a breath of wind, that comes now this way and now that, and changes name, because it changes sight. What fame shalt thou have more, if old peel off from thee thy flesh, than if thou hadst been dead before thou left the pepo and the dandy? There pass a thousand years which is a shorter space to the turn than twinkling of an eye unto the circle that in heaven wheels slowest. With him who takes a little of the road in front of me, all Tuscany resounded, and now he scarce is lisped of in Sina. Where he was lord, what time was overthrown the Florentine delirium, that superb was at that day as now tis prostitute. Thy true speech fills my heart with good humility, and great tumour thou suggest, but who is he of whom just now thou spakest? That, he replied, is Provence and Salvini, and he is here because he had presumed to bring sin all into his hands, when he in greatest splendour lived. Said he freely upon the campo of Sena, all shame being laid aside, he placed himself.
happened there to draw his friend from the duress which in the prison house of Charles he suffered. He brought himself to tremble in each vein. I say no more, and know that I speak darkly, yet little time shall pass before thy neighbors will so demean themselves that thou canst gloss it. Purgatory Canto of Tui Breast like oxen going in a yoke, I with that heavy laden soul went on as long as the sweet pedagogy permitted. Leave him an onward pass, for here tis good that with the sail and oars, as much as may be, each push on his bark root. Upright, as walking wills it, I redressed my person, notwithstanding that my thoughts remained within me downcast and abashed. I had moved on, and followed willingly the footsteps of my master, and we both already showed how light of foot we were. When unto me he said, Cast down thine eyes twere well for thee, to alleviate the way, to look upon the bed beneath thy feet, as that some memory may exist of them, above the buried dead their tombs and earth bear sculptured on them what they were before. And soften there we weep for them afresh from pricking of remembrance, which alone to the compassionate doth set its spur. So saw I there, but of a better semblance and point of artifice, with figures covered waiter as pathway from the mount projects. I saw that one who was created noble more than all other creatures down from heaven flaming with lightnings fall upon one side. I saw Briera smitten by the dart celestial, lying on the other side, heavy upon the earth by mortal frost. I saw Thimbria's palace saw, and Mars still clad in armor round about their father, gaze at the scattered members of the giants. I saw at foot of his great labor, Nimrod, as if bewildered looking at the people who had been proud with him and sent her. Oh, no. With what afflicted eyes thee I beheld upon the pathway traced, between thy seven and seven children slain. I saw. How fallen upon thy proper sword didst thou appear there lifeless in Gilbo, that felt thereafter neither rain nor dew. I'm a mad, Archie. So I thee beheld him then half spider set upon the shreds of fabric wrought an evil hour for thee. O oh, realm! No more seems to threaten thine image there but full of consternation a chariot bears it off when none pursues. Displayed more o'er the adamantine pavement how unto his own mother made Alcmane costly appear the luckless ornament. Displayed how his own sons did throw themselves upon Sennacherib within the temple, and how, he being dead, they left him there. Displayed the ruin and the cruel carnage that Tamaris wrought when she to Cyrus said, Blood didst thou thirst for, and with blood I glut thee. Displayed how rooted fled the Assyrians after that Holofernes had been slain, and likewise the remainder of that slaughter. I saw their Trojan ashes and in caverns, O Ilion. He, how abject and debased, displayed the image that is there discerned. Blur of pencil master was, or style, that could portray the shades and traits which there would cause each subtle genius to admire. Dead seemed the dead, the living seemed alive better than I saw not who saw the truth, all that I trod upon while bowed I went. Now wax ye proud, and on with looks uplifted. Ye sons of Eve, and bow not down your faces, so that ye may behold your evil ways. More of the mount by us was now encompassed, and far more spent the circuit of the sun, than had the mind preoccupied imagined. Lo there an angel who is making haste to come towards us, lo, returning is from service of the day the sixth handmaiden. I was familiar with his admonition never to lose no time, so on this theme he could not unto me speak covertly. Towards us came the being beautiful vested in white, and in his countenance such as appears the tremulous morning star. Come, said he, near at hand here are the steps, and easy from henceforth is the ascent. At this announcement few are they who come. O human creatures born too sore aloft, I fall ye thus before a little wine. He led us on to where the rock was cleft there smote upon my forehead with his wings then a safe passage promised unto me. As on the right hand, 
to ascend the mount where seated is the church that lordeth it o'er the well-guided above Robicant. The bold abruptness of the ascent is broken by stairways that were made there in the age when still were safe the ledger and the stave. And thus attempered is the bank which falls sheer downward from the second circle there but on this side and that the high rock grays. As we were turning thitherward our persons, voices sang in such wise that speech could tell it not. Ami! How different are these entrances from the infernal! For with anthems here one enters, and below with wild laments. We now were hunting up the sacred stairs, and it appeared to me by far more easy than on the plain it had appeared before. My master, say, what heavy thing has been uplifted from me, so that hardly aught of fatigue is felt by me in walking. Then did I even as they do who are going with something on the head to them unknown, unless the signs of others make them doubt. Wherefore the hand to ascertain is helpful, and seeks and finds, and doth fulfill an office which cannot be accomplished by the sight. And with the fingers of the right hand spread I found but six the letters, that had carved upon my temples he who bore the key. Upon beholding which my leader smiled. Purgatoria Canto Xi We were upon the summit of the stairs, wherefore the second time is cut away the mountain, which ascending shreveth all. There in like manner doth the cornice bind the hill all round about, as does the first, save that its arc more suddenly is curved. Jade is there none, nor sculpture that appears so seems the bank, and so the road seems smooth, with but the livid color of the stone. If to inquire we wait for people here, I fear that peradventure too much delay will our election have. Then steadfast on the sun his eyes he fixed, made his right side the center of his motion, and turned the left part of himself about. O oh, thou sweet light! With trust in whom I enter upon this novel journey, do thou let us. Daddy, as one within here should be led. As much as here is counted for a mile, so much already there had we advanced in little time by dint of ready will. And towards us there were heard to fly, albeit they were not visible, spirits uttering unto love's table courteous invitations. The first voice that passed onward in its flight said in accents loud, and went reiterating it behind us, and ere it wholly grew inaudible because of distance, passed another, crying, I am Orestes, and it also stayed not, said I. Father, these, what voices are they? And even as I asked, behold the third, saying, Love those from whom ye have had evil. The bridle of another sound shall be, I think that thou wilt hear it, as I judge, before thou comest to the pass of pardon. Then wider than at first mine eyes I opened I looked before me, and saw shades with mantles not from the color of the stone diverse. And when we were a little farther onward, I heard a cry of, Mary, pray for us, Michael, Peter, and all saints. I do not think there walketh still on earth a man so hard that he would not be pierced with pity at what afterward I saw. For when I had approached so near to them that manifest to me their acts became, Drained was I at the eyes by heavy grief. Covered with sackcloth vile they seemed to me, and one sustained the other with his shoulder, and all of them were by the bank sustained. Thus do the blind, in want of livelihood, stand at the doors of churches asking alms, and one upon another leans his head. So that in others pity soon may arise, not only at the accent of their words, but at their aspect, which no less implores. And as unto the blind the sun comes not, so to the shades, of whom just now I spake, heaven's light will not be bound to of itself. For all their lids an iron wire transpierces, unsews them up, as to a sparhawk wild is done, because it will not quiet stay. To me it seemed in passing, to do outrage, seeing the others without being seen, wherefore I turned me to my counsel sage. Well knew he what the mew one wished to say, and therefore waited not for my demand, but said, I had Virgilius upon that side of the embankment from which one may fall, since by no border tis ingarlanded. Upon the other side of me I had the shades devout, 
who through the horrible scene pressed out the tears so that they bathed their cheeks. To them I turned me on. O oh, people, certain, began I of beholding the high light, which your desire has solely in its care. So may grace speedily dissolve the scum upon your consciences, that limpidly through them descend the river of the mind. O oh, brother mine, each one is citizen of one true city, but thy meaning is, who may have lived in Italy a pilgrim. By way of answer this I seemed to hear a little farther on than where I stood, where did I made myself still near heard. Among the rest I saw a shade that waited in aspect, and should any one ask how, its chin it lifted upward like a blind man. I said, Who stoopest to ascend, if thou art he who did reply to me, make thyself known to me by place or name. Sinis was I. It replied, and with the others here reclaims my guilty life, weeping to him to lend himself to us. Sufient I was not, although I Sophia was called, and I was at another's harm more happy far than at my own good fortune. And that thou mayst not think that I deceive thee, here if I was as foolish as I tell thee. Thou art already of my ears descending. My fellow citizens near unto Cole were joined in battle with their adversaries, and I was praying God for what he willed. Rooted were they, and turned into the bitter passes of flight, and I, the chase beholding, a joy received unequalled by all others. So that I lifted upward my bold face, crying to God, Henceforth I fear thee not, as did the black herd at the little sunshine. Peace I desired with God at the extreme of my existence, and as yet would not my debt have been by penitence discharged. Had it not been that in remembrance held me Pierre Petigno in his holy prayers, who out of charity was grieved for me. I said, Will yet be here ten from me, but for a short space four small is the offense committed by their being turned with envy. And she to me, Who led thee then among us up here, if to return below thou thinkest, and I he who is with me, and speaks not, Oh, this is such a novel thing to hear. She answered, That great sign it is God loves thee, therefore with prayer of thine sometimes assist me, and I implore, by what thou most desirest, if here thou tradest the soil of Tuscany, well with my kindred reinstate my fame. Then wilt thou see among that people vain who hope in Talamon, and will lose their more hope than in discovering the Dan. Purgatoria Canto Ti Who is this one that goes about our mountain, or ever death has given him power of flight, and opes his eyes and shuts them at his will? I know not who, but know he's not alone, ask him thyself, for thou art nearer to him, and gently, so that he may speak, accost him. Thus did two spirits, leaning towards each other, discourse about me there on the right hand, and held supine their faces to address me. If for thy meaning I can penetrate with intellect of mine. Thou speakest of the Arno, and said the other to him. I concealed this one the appellation of that river, even as a man doth of things horrible. For from its fountainhead where is so pregnant the alpine mountain whence is cleft Pelora that in few places it that mark surpasses. To where it yields itself in restoration of what the heaven doth of the sea dry up, whence are the rivers that which goes with them. Virtue is like an enemy avoided by all, as is a serpent, through misfortune of place, or through bad habit that impels them. On which account have so transformed their nature the dwellers in that miserable valley, it seems that Sir set them in her pasture. Mid ugly swine, of acorns worthier than other food for human use created, it first directeth its impoverished way. Curse findeth it thereafter, coming downward, more snarling than their puissance demands, and turns from them disdainfully its muzzle. It goes on falling, and the more it grows, the more it finds the dogs becoming wolves, this maledict and misadventurous ditch. Descended then through many a hollow gulf, it finds the foxes so replete with fraud, they fear no cunning that may master them. Nor will I cease because another hears me and well twill be for him, if still he mind him of what a truthful spirit to me unravels. Thy grandson I behold who doth become a hunter of those wolves upon the bank of the wild stream, and terrifies them all. 
He sells their flesh, it being yet alive thereafter slaughters them like ancient beeves many of life himself of praise deprives. As at the announcement of impending ills the face of him who listens is disturbed, from whiter side the perils seize upon him. So I beheld that other soul, which stood turned round to listen, grow disturbed and sad, when it had gathered to itself the word. The speech of one and aspect of the other had me desirous, made to know their names, and question mixed with prayers I made thereof. But since God willeth that in thee shine forth such grace of his, I'll not be chary with thee, no, then, that I guido del duca am. My blood was so with envy set on fire, that if I had beheld a man make merry, thou wouldst have seen me sprinkled o'er with pallor. From my own sowing such the straw I reap. O oh, human race! Why dost thou set thy heart where interdict of partnership must be? This is Rainier, this is the boast and honor of the house of Calvary, where no one since has made himself the heir of his desert. But not alone his blood is made devoid, twixt Po and Mount, and seashore and the Reno, of good required for truth and for diversion. For all within these boundaries is full of venomous roots, so that too tardily by cultivation now would they diminish. Where is good Lizio, and Arigo Manardi, Pier Traversero, and Guido di Carpigna, O Romagnoli, into bastards turn? When in Bologna will a Fabro rise? When in Fanza Bernardine di Fosca, the noble sign of ignoble seed? Be not astonished, Tuscan, if I weep, when I remember, with Guido da Preta, Ugolinda Azzo, who was living with us. Frederick Tenoso and his company, the house of Traversara, and the Anastage, and one race on the other is extinct. The dames and cavaliers, the toils and ease that filled our souls with love and courtesy, there were the hearts of so malicious grown. O Bretonoro! Why dost thou not flee, seeing that all thy family is gone, and many people not to be corrupted? Agnacavul does well in not begetting, and ill does Castrocaro, uncanny worse in taking trouble to beget such counts. Will do well the Pagani, when their devil shall have departed, but not therefore pure will testimony of them or remain. O Ugolin de Fantoli, secure thy name is, since no longer is awaited one who, degenerating, can obscure it. We were aware that those beloved souls heard us depart, therefore, by keeping silent, they made us of our pathway confident. When we became all alone by going onward, thunder, when it doth cleave the air, appeared a voice that counter to us came, exclaiming, Shall slay me whosoever findeth me. And fled as the reverberation dies, if suddenly the cloud asunder bursts. As soon as hearing had a truce from this, behold another, with so great a crash, that it resembled thunderings following fast. And then, to press myself close to the poet, I backward, and not forward, took a step. But you take in the bait so that the hook of the old adversary draws you to him, and hence availeth little curb or call. The heavens are calling you, and wheel round you, displaying to you their eternal beauties, and still your eye is looking on the ground. Purgatoria Cantoc As much as twigs the close of the third hour and dawn of day appeareth of that sphere which I in fashion of a child is playing. So much it now appeared towards the night, was of his course remaining to the sun there it was evening, and twas midnight here. And the rays smote the middle of our faces, because by us the mount was so encircled that straight towards the west we now were going. When I perceived my forehead overpowered beneath the splendor far more than at first, and stupor were to me the things unknown. Were it towards the summit of my brow I raised my hands, and made myself a visor which the excessive glare diminishes. As when from off the water, or a mirror, the sunbeam leaps on to the opposite side, ascending upward in the selfsame measure. That it descends, and deviates as far from falling of a stone in line direct, as demonstrate experiment and art. So it appeared to me that by a light refracted there before me I was smitten, on which account my sight was swift to flee. 
but is that father sweet from which I cannot so fully screen my sight that it avail me? And seems towards us to be moving, marvel thou not, if dazzle thee as yet the family of heaven. He answered me an angel, tis, who comes to invite us upward. When we had reached the angel bendite, with joyful voice he said, Here enter in two stairway far less steep than are the others. We mounting were, already thence departed, and was behind us sunk. Rejoice thou that o'ercomest, my master and myself. We two alone were going upward, and I thought in going some profit to acquire from words of his. And I to him directed me thus asking. What did the spirit of Romagna mean, mentioning interdict and partnership? Because are thither pointed your desires, whereby companionship each share is lessened, and we doth ply the bellows to your size. But if a love of the supernal sphere should upwardly direct your aspiration, there would not be that fear within your breast. I am more hungering to be satisfied. I said then if I had before been silent, and more of doubt within my mind I gather, that goodness infinite and ineffable which is above there runneth unto love, as to a lucid body comes the sunbeam. So much it gives itself as it finds ardor, so that as far as charity extends, or it increases the eternal valor. And the more people to their word aspire, more are there to love well, and more they love there, and, as a mirror, one reflects the other. And if my reasoning appease thee not, thou shalt see Beatrice, and she will fully take from thee this and every other longing. Thou dost appease me. I saw that I had reached another circle, so that my eager eyes made me keep silence. There it appeared to me that in a vision ecstatic on a sudden I was rapt, and in a temple many persons saw. Then I beheld another with those waters adown her cheeks which grief distills when never from great disdain of others it is born. To answer her with aspect temperate. What shall we do to those who wish us ill, if he who loves us be by us condemned? Then saw I people hot in fire of wrath, with stones a young man slaying, clamorously still crying to each other. Kill him! Kill him! And him I saw bow down because of death that weighed already on him to the earth, but of his eyes made ever gates to heaven. Imploring the high Lord in so great strife that he would pardon those his persecutors with such an aspect as unlocks compassion. Soon as my soul had outwardly returned to things external to it which are true, did I my not false errors recognize? O oh, my sweet father, if thou listen to me, I'll tell thee what appeared to me when thus from me my legs were ten away. What thou hast seen was that thou mayst not fail to ope thy heart unto the waters of peace which from the eternal fountain are diffused. I did not ask, what ails thee? As he does who only looketh with the eyes that see not when of the soul breath the body lies. We passed along athwart the twilight peering forward as far as ever i could stretch against the sunbeams serotonin and loosen and thou by slow degrees as smoke approached in our direction somber as the night nor was there placed to hide oneself therefrom this of our eyes on the pure air bereft us purgatory canto Darkness of hell, and of a night deprived of every planet under a poor sky, as much as may be tenebrous with cloud. Ne'er made unto my sight so thick a veil as did that smoke which there enveloped us, nor to the feeling of so rough a texture. For not an eye it suffered to stay open where mine escort, faithful and sagacious, drew near to me and offered me his shoulder. And as a blind man goes behind his guide, lest he should wander, or should strike against aught that may harm or peradventure kill him. So went I through the bitter and foul air, listening unto my leader, who said only, Look that from me thou be not separated. Voices I heard, and every one appeared to supplicate for peace and misericord the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. I must die. Their exordium was one word there was in all and meter one, so that all harmony appeared among them. I said, 
our spirits those I hear, and he to me, thou apprehendest truly, and they the knot of anger go on losing. Now who art thou that cleavest through our smoke, and art discoursing of us even as though thou didst by Kellan still divide the time? After this manner by a voice was spoken wherein my master said, Do thou reply unto ask if on this side the way go upward? O creature that dost cleanse thyself to return beautiful to him who made thee, thou shalt hear marvels if thou follow me. Thee will I follow far as is allowed me. He answered, And if smoke prevent our seeing, hearing shall keep us joined instead thereof. And if God in his grace has me enfolded, so that he wills that I behold his court by method wholly out of modern usage. For mounting upward, thou art going right. Thus he made answer, and subjoin, I pray thee to pray for me when thou shalt be above. First it was simple, and is now made double by thy opinion, which makes certain to me, here and elsewhere, that which I couple with it. The world forsooth is utterly deserted by every virtue, as thou tellest me, and with iniquity is big and covered. Ye who are living every cause refer still upward to the heavens, as if all things they of necessity moved with themselves. If this were so, and you would be destroyed free will, nor any justice would there be in having joy for good or grief for evil. The heavens your movements do initiate, I say not all but granting that I say it, light has been given you for good and evil. And free volition which, if some fatigue in the first battles with the heavens it suffers, afterwards conquers all, if well tis nurtured. To greater force on to a better nature, though free, ye subject are, on that creates the mind in you the heavens have not in charge. Hence, if the present world doth go astray, in you the cause is, be it sought in you and either in will now be thy true spy. Forth from the hand of him who fundles it before it is like to a little girl weeping and laughing in her childish sport. Issues the simple soul that nothing knows save that, proceeding from a joyous maker, Gladly it turns to that which gives it pleasure. Of trivial good at first it tastes the savour is cheated by it, and runs after it, if guide or rain turn not aside its love. Hence it behoved laws for a rain to place, behoved a king to have, who at the least of the true city should discern the tower. The laws exist, but who sets hand to them? No one because the shepherd who proceeds can ruminate, but cleaveth not the hoof. Wherefore the people that perceives its guide strike only at the good for which it hankers, feeds upon that, and farther seeketh not. Clearly canst thou perceive that evil guidance the causes that has made the world depraved, and not that nature is corrupt in you. Rome that reformed the world accustomed was two sons to have, which one road and the other of God and of the world made manifest. One has the other quenched, unto the crozier the sword is joined, and ill be seen that, that by main force one with the other go. Because, being joined, one feareth not the other, if I believe not, think upon the grain, for by its seed each herb is recognized. In the land laved by Poland Edige, valor and courtesy used to be found, before that Frederick had his controversy. Now in security can pass that way whoever will abstain through sense of shame from speaking with the good or drawing near them. True, three old men are left in whom upbraids the ancient age the new, and late they deem it that God restore them to the better life. Curado da Palazzo, and good Gerardo, and Guido da Castel, who better named is in fashion of the French the simple Lombard. I said thou reasonest well, and now discern I why the sons of Leva have been excluded from the heritage. Either thy speech deceives me, or it tempts me. He answered me for speaking Tuscan to me, it seems of good Gerard do not thou knowest, by other surname do I know him not, unless I take it from his daughter Gaia. May God be with you, for I come no farther. Thus did he speak, and would no farther hear me. Remember, reader, if you're in the Alps a mist or took thee through which thou couldst see not otherwise than through its membrane mole. Ah, when the vapors humid and condensed begin to dissipate themselves, 
the sphere of the sun feebly enters in among them. And thy imagination will be swift in coming to perceive how I saw the sun at first that was already setting. Thus, to the faithful footsteps of my master mating mine own, I issued from that cloud two rays already dead on the low shores. O thou imagination, that dost steal us so from without sometimes, that man perceives not, although around may sound a thousand trumpets. Who moveth thee, if sense impel thee not? Moves thee a light, which in the heaven takes form, by self, or by a will that downward guides it. Of her impiety, who changed her form into the bird that most delights in singing, in my imagining appeared the trace. And hereupon my mind was so withdrawn within itself, that from without there came nothing that then might be received by it. Then reigned within my lofty fantasy one crucified, disdainful, and ferocious in countenance, and even thus was dying. Around him were the great Ashwaris, Esther his wife, and the just Mordecai, who was in word and action so entire. And even as this image burst asunder of its own self, in fashion of a bubble in which the water it was made of fails. As sleep is broken, when upon a sudden new light strikes in upon the eyelids closed, and broken quivers ere it dieth wholly. So this imagining of mine fell down as soon as the effulgence smote my face, greater by far than what is in our wont. I turned me round to see where I might be, when said a voice, which from all other purposes removed me, and made my wish so full of eagerness to look and see was it that was speaking, it never rests till meeting face to face. But as before the sun which quills the sight, and in its own excess its figure veils, even so my power was insufficient here. He does with us as man doth with himself, for he who sees the need and waits the asking, melancholy leans already towards denial. Thus my conductor said, and I and he together turned our footsteps to a stairway, and I, as soon as the first step I reached, near me perceived a motion as of wings, unfanning in the face, unsaying, Vidi pacifici, who are without ill anger. Already over us were so uplifted the latest sunbeams which the night pursues, that upon many sides the stars appeared. O oh, manhood mine, why dost thou vanish so? I said within myself, for I perceived the vigor of my legs was put in truce. We at the point were where no more ascends the stairway upward, and were motionless, even as a ship, which at the shore arrives. And I gave heed a little, if I might hear aught whatsoever, and the circle knew then to my master turned me round and said, Day, my sweet father, what delinquency is purged here in the circle where we are? Although our feet may pause, pause not thy speech. But still more openly to understand, turn unto me thy mind, and thou shalt gather some profitable fruit from our delay. The natural was ever without error, but ere the other may by evil object, or by too much, or by too little vigor. While in the first it well directed is, and in the second moderates itself, it cannot be the cause of sinful pleasure. But when too ill it turns, and with more care or lesser than it ought, runs after good, against the Creator works his own creation. Hence thou mayst comprehend that love must be the seed within yourselves of every virtue, and every act that merits punishment. Now a Nesmuk as never from the welfare of its own subject can love turn its sight, from their own hatred all things are secure. And since we cannot think of any being standing alone, nor from the first divided, of hating him is all desire cut off. Hence if discriminating, I judge well, the evil that one loves is of one's neighbor, and this is born in three modes in your clay. There are who, by abasement of their neighbor, hope to excel, and therefore only long that from his greatness he may be cast down. There are who power, grace, honor, and renown fear they may lose because another rises, thence are so sad that the reverse they love. And there are those whom injury seems to chafe, so that it makes them greedy for revenge, and such must needs shape out in others' harm. This threefold love is wept for down below, now of the other will I have thee here, that runneth after good with measure faulty.
each one confusedly a good conceives wherein the mind may rest and longeth for it therefore to overtake it each one strives if languid love to look on this attract you or an attaining unto it this cornice after just penitence torments you for it there's other good that does not make man happy tis not felicity tis not the good essence of every good the fruit and root the love that yields itself too much to this above us is lamented in three circles but how trepartite it may be described an end had put unto his reasoning the lofty teacher and that and was looking into my face if i appeared content and i whom a new thirst still goaded on without was mute unsaid with it perchance the too much questioning i make annoys him but that true father who had comprehended the timid wish that opened not itself by speaking gave me hardhood to speak he said towards me the keen eyes of intellect and clear will be to thee the air of the blind who would be leaders the soul which is created apt to love is mobile unto everything that pleases soon as by pleasure she is waked to action your apprehension from some real thing an image draws and in yourselves displays it so that it makes the soul turn unto it and if when turned towards it she incline love is that inclination it is nature which is by pleasure bound in you and then even as the fire doth upward move by its own form which to ascend is born where longest in its matter it endures so comes the captive soul into desire which is a motion spiritual and ne'er rests until she doth enjoy the thing beloved now may apparent be to thee how hidden the truth is from those people who aver all love is in itself a laudable thing thy words on my sequacious intellect i answered him have love revealed to me but that has made me more impregnant with doubt every substantial form that segregate from matter is and with it is united specific power has in itself collected which without act is not perceptible nor shows itself except by its effect as life does in a plant by the green leaves but still whence cometh the intelligence of the first notions man is ignorant and that affection for the first allurements which are in you as instinct in the bee to make its honey on this first desire merit of praise or blame containeth not now that to this all others may be gathered innate within you is the power that counsels and it should keep the threshold of ascent this is the principle from which is taken occasion of desert in you according as good and guilty loves it takes on winnows those who in reasoning to the bottom went were of this innate liberty aware therefore bequeath the ethics to the world supposing then that from necessity springs every love that is within you kindled within yourselves the power is to restrain it the moon belated almost unto midnight now made the stars appear to us more rare formed like a bucket that is all ablaze and counter to the heavens ran through those paths which the sun sets aflame when he of rome sees it twixt sards on corsicans go down and that patrician shade for whom is named pieto more than any mansion in town had laid aside the burden of my lady whence i who reason manifest on plain in answer to my questions had received stood like a man in drowsy reverie but taken from me was this drowsiness suddenly by a people that behind our backs already had come round to us and as of old Ismenus and Asubus beside them saw at night the rush on throng, if but the Vibens were in need of Bacchus. So they along that circle curved their step, from what I saw of those approaching us, who by good will and righteous love are ridden. Full soon they were upon us, because running moved onward all that mighty multitude, and two in the advance cried out, lamenting. Mary in haste unto the mountain ran on Caesar that he might subdue Arda, thrust at Marcellus, and then ran into Spain. Quick! Quick! So that the time may not be lost by little love. Forthwith the others cried, For Arda and well-doing freshens grace. So full of longing are we to move onward, that stay we cannot therefore pardon us, if thou for churlishness our justice take. 
I was Sanzino's evident Verona, under the empire of good Barbarossa, of whom still sorrowing Milan holds discourse. And he has one foot in the grave already, who shall ere long lament that monastery, and sorry be of having there had power. If more he said, or silent was, I know not, he had already passed so far bound us with this I heard, and to retain it pleased me. And he who was in every need my succor said, Turn thee hitherward, see two of them come, fastening upon slothfulness their teeth. Then when from us so separated were those shades, that they no longer could be seen, within me a new thought did entrance find. Whence others many undiverse were born, and so I lapsed from one into another, that in a reverie mine eyes I close. Purgatory Canto Tick It was the hour when the diurnal heat no more can warm the coldness of the moon, vanquished by earth, or peradventure Saturn. When Jumin serves their fortune a major see in the orient before the dawn rise by a path that long remains not dim. There came to me in dreams a stammering woman, squint in her eyes, and in her feet distorted, with hands dissevered and of sallow hue. I looked at her under as the sun restores the frigid members which the night benumbs, even thus my gaze did render voluble. Her tongue and made her all erect thereafter in little while, and the lost countenance as love desires it so in her did color. When in this wise she had her speech unloosed, she again to sing so, that with difficulty could I have turned my thoughts away from her. She sang, I am the siren sweet who mariners amid the main unmen. So full am I of pleasantness to hear. Her mouth was not yet closed again, before appeared a lady saintly and alert close at my side to put her to confusion. Virgilis, O oh Virgilis, who is this? Sternly she said, and he was drawing near with eyes still fixed upon that modest one. She seized the other and in front laid open, rending her garments, and her belly showed me this wake me with the stench that issued from it. I turned mine eyes, and good Virgilius said, At least thrice have I called thee rise, and come find we the opening by which thou mayst enter. I rose unfull already of high day were all the circles of the sacred mountain, and with a new sun at our back we went. Following behind him, I my forehead bore like unto one who has it laden with thought, who makes himself the half-arch of a bridge. Come, here the passage is. Spoken in a manner gentle and benign, such as we hear not in this mortal region, with open wings, which of a swan appeared, upward he turned us who thus spake to us, between the two walls of the solid granite. He moved his pinions afterwards and fanned us, affirming those quilugian to be blessed, for they shall have their souls with comfort filled. What aileth thee that I to earth gazest? To me my guide began to say, we both somewhat bound the angel having mounted. With such misgiving makes me go a vision new, which bends me to itself, so that I can't from the thought withdraw me. Didst thou behold? He said, that old enchantress, whose soul above us henceforth is lamented. Didst thou behold how man is freed from her? Even as the hawk, at first his feet surveys then turns him to the call and stretches forward through the desire of food that draws him thither. Such I became, unsuch, as far as cleaves the rock to give away to him who mounts, went unto where the circling doth begin. On the fifth circle when I had come forth, people I saw upon it who were weeping stretched prone upon the ground, all downward turned. And as it pavimento anima me, I heard them say with sighings so profound, that hardly could the words be understood. O ye elect of God, whose sufferings justice and hope both render less severe, direct ye us towards the highest sense. If ye are come secure from this prostration, and wish to find the way most speedily, let your right hands be evermore outside. Thus did the poet ask, and thus was answered by them somewhat in front of us whence I in what was spoken divined a rest concealed. And unto my lord's eyes, mine eyes, I turned whence he assented with a cheerful sign to what the sight of my desire implored. 
when of myself I could dispose at will, above the creature did I draw myself, whose words before had caused me to take note. Between Sistri and Chivery descends a river beautiful, and of its name the title of my blood its summit makes. A month and little more say to how weighs the great cloak on him from Meyer who keeps it, for all the other burdens seem a feather. Tardy, ah uh, woe is me! Was my conversion, but when the Roman shepherd I was made, then I discovered life to be a lie. I saw that there the heart was not at rest, nor farther in that life could one ascend whereby the love of this was kindled in me. Until that time a wretched soul and parted from God was I, unholy avaricious now, as thou seest, I hear am punished for it. What avarice does is here made manifest in the purgation of these souls converted, and no more bitter pain the mountain has. Even as our eye did not uplift itself aloft, being fastened upon earthly things, so justice here has merged it in the earth. As avarice had extinguished our affection for every good whereby was action lost, so justice here doth hold us in restraint. I on my knees had fallen and wished to speak, but even as I began, and he was who were only by listening of my reverence. He said, As downward bent thee thus, and I to him, for your own dignities standing, my conscience stung me with remorse. Straighten thy legs, and upward raise thee, brother. He answered, Err not, fellow servant, am I with thee and with the others to one power. If hear that holy evangelic sound which saith Finiquinubent, thou hast heard, well canst thou see why in this wise I speak. Now go no longer will I have thee linger, because thy stay doth incommode my weeping, with which I ripen that which thou hast said. On earth I have a grandchild named Elijah, good in herself, unless indeed our house malevolent may make her by example. Little strives the will against a better will therefore, to pleasure him, against my pleasure I drew the sponge not saturate from the water. Onward I moved, and onward moved my leader, through vacant places, skirting still the rock, as on a wall close to the battlements. For they that through their eyes poured drop by drop the malady which all the world pervades, on the other side too near the verge approached. A curse mayst thou be, thou old she-wolf, that more than all the other beasts hast prey, because of hunger infinitely hollow. O oh, heaven, in whose generation some appear to think conditions here below are changed, when will he come through whom she shall depart? Onward we went with footsteps slow and scarce, and I attentive to the shades that I heard piteously weeping and bemoaning them. And I by peradventure her, uttered in front of us amid the weeping even as a woman does who is in childbirth, and in continuance. How poor thou wast is manifested by that hostelry where thou didst lay thy sacred burden down. Thereafterward I heard, O good Fabricius, virtue with poverty didst thou prefer to the possession of great wealth with vice. So pleasurable were these words to me that I drew farther onward to have knowledge touching that spirit whence they seemed to come. He furthermore was speaking of the largest which Nicholas unto the maidens gave in order to conduct their youth to honor. O oh, soul that dost so excellently speak, tell me who wast thou? Said I, and why only thou dost renew these praises well deserved? I was the root of that malignant plant which overshadows all the Christian world, so that good fruit is seldom gathered from it. But if Dawe and Ghent and Lil and Bruges had power, soon vengeance would be taken on it, and this I pray of him who judges all. You came it was I called upon the earth from me were born the Lewises and Phillips, by whom in later days has France been governed. I was the son of a Parisian butcher, what time the ancient kings had perished all, excepting one contrite in cloth of grey. They found me grasping in my hands the reign of the realm's government, and so great power of new acquest, and so with friends abounding. That too the widow died and promoted the head of mine own offspring was, from whom the consecrated bones of these began. So long as the great dowry of Provence out of my blood took not the sense of shame, twas little worth, but still it did no harm. 
Then it began with falsehood and with force its rapine and thereafter for amends to Pontiu, Normandy, and Gascony. Charles came to Italy and for amends a victim made of Conradin and then thrust Thomas back to heaven for amends. The time I see, not very distant now, which draweth forth another Charles from France, the better to make known both him and his. Unarmed he goes, and only with the lance that Judas just did with, and that he thrusts so that he makes the punch of Florence burst. Be thence not land, but sin and infamy shall gain, so much more grievous to himself as the more light such damage he accounts. The other, now gone forth, ten in his ship, See I his daughter sell, and chaffer for her as corsairs do with other female slaves. But more, O oh, avarice, canst thou do to us, since thou my blood so to thyself hast drawn, it careth not for its own proper flesh. That less may seem the future ill and past, I see the flower to loose a log and enter, and Christ and his own vicar captive made. I see him yet another time derided, I see renewed the vinegar and gall, and between living Thebes I see him slain. I see the modern pilot so relentless, this does not sate him, but without decretal he to the temple bears his sordid sails. When, O oh my lord, shall I be joyful made by looking on the vengeance which, concealed, makes sweet thine anger and thy secrecy? What I was saying of that only bride of the Holy Ghost, on which occasion thee to turn towards me for some commentary. So long has been ordained to all our prayers as the day lasts, but when the night comes on, contrary sound we take instead thereof. At that time we repeat Pygmalion, of whom a traitor, thief, and parasite made his insatiable desire of gold. And the misery of avaricious Midas, that followed his inordinate demand, at which forevermore one needs but laugh. The foolish etch in each one then records, and how he stole the spoils, so that the wrath of Joshua still appears to sting him here. Then we accuse Sapphira with her husband, we laud the Hothbeats Hiliodorus had, and the whole mountain infamy encircles. Polymnester who murdered Polydorus. Here finally is cried O Crassus, tell us, for thou dost know, what is the taste of gold? Sometimes we speak one loud, another low, according to desire of speech that spurs us to greater now and now to lesser pace. From him already we departed were, and made endeavor to overcome the road as much as was permitted to our power. When I perceived, like something that is falling, the mountain tremble, whence a chill seized on me, as seizes him who to his death is going. Search so violently shook not Delos before Latona made her nest therein to give birth to the two eyes of the heaven. Then upon all sides there began a cry, such that the master drew himself towards me, saying, Gloria in excelsis Dio. All were saying from what near I comprehended, where it was possible to hear the cry. We paused immovable and in suspense, even as the shepherds who first heard that song, until the trembling ceased and it was finished. Then we resumed again our holy path, watching the shades that lay upon the ground, already turned to their accustomed plaint. No ignorance ever with so great a strife had rendered me importunate to know, if it reth not in this my memory. As meditating then I seemed to have nor out of haste to question did I dare, nor of myself I dare could not proceed. So I went onward timorous and thoughtful. The natural thirst that ne'er is satisfied excepting with the water for whose grace the woman of St. Maria besought. Put me in travail, and haste goaded me along the encumbered path behind my leader, and I was pitying that righteous vengeance. And lo! In the same manner as Luke writeth that Christ appeared too too upon the way from the sepulchral cave already risen, a shade appeared to us, and came behind us, down gazing on the prostrate multitude, nor were we aware of it, until it spake. My brothers, may God give you peace. We turned us suddenly, and Virgilius rendered to him the countersign thereto conforming. Thereon began he. In the blessed council, thee may the court veracious place in peace, that me doth banish an eternal exile.
said he, and the while we went with speed. If ye are shades whom God deigns not on high, who up his stairs so far has guided you, but because you spinneth day and night for him had not yet drawn a distaff off, which cloth lays for each one and compacts. His soul, which is thy sister and my own, in coming upwards could not come alone by reason that it sees not in our fashion. Whence I was drawn from out that ample throat of hell to be his guide, and I shall guide him as far on as my school has power to lead. In asking he so hit the very eye of my desire, that merely with the hope my thirst became the less unsatisfied. He began, that without order may the religion of the mountain feel, nor aught that may be foreign to its custom. Free is it here from every permutation what from itself heaven in itself receiveth can be of this the cause, and not beside. Because that neither rain, nor hail, nor snow, nor dew, nor hoar-frost any higher falls than the short, little stairway of three steps. Dense clouds do not appear, nor rarefied, nor coruscation, nor the daughter of Thaumas, that often upon earth her region shifts. No arid vapor any farther rises than to the top of the three steps I spake of, wherein the vicar of Peter has his feet. Or down perchance it trembles less or more, but for the wine that in the earth is hidden I know not how, up here it never trembled. It trembles here whenever any soul feels itself pure, so that it soars, or moves to mount aloft, and such a cry attends it. Of purity the will alone gives proof, which, being wholly free to change its convent, takes by surprise the soul, and helps it fly. First it wills well, but the desire permits not, which divine justice with the self-same will there was to sin upon the torment sets. And I, who have been lying in this pain five hundred years and more, but just now felt a free volition for a better seat. So said he to him, and since we enjoy as much in drinking as the thirst is great, I could not say how much it did me good. My vocal spirit was so sweet, that rum me, a theologian, drew unto herself, where I deserved to deck my brows with myrtle. Statius, the people named me still on earth, I sang of Thebes, and then of great Achilles, but on the way fell with my second burden. The seeds unto my ardor were the sparks of that celestial flame which heated me, whereby more than a thousand have been fired. Of the Aeneid speak I, which to me a mother was, and was my nurse in song without this weight and not a drachma's weight. These words towards me made Virgilius turn with looks that in their silence said, But yet the power that wills cannot do all things, for tears and laughter are such pursuivants unto the passion from which each springs forth in the most truthful least the will they follow. I only smiled, as one who gives the wink where it the shade was silent, and it gazed into mine eyes, where most expression dwells. As thou well mayst consummate a labor so great. It said, Why did thy face just now display to me the lightning of a smile? Now am I caught on this side, and on that one keeps me silent. One to speak conjures me, wherefore I sigh, and I am understood. Said my master, And be not afraid of speaking, but speak out, and say to him what he demands with such solicitude. This one who guides on high these eyes of mine, is that Virgilius, from whom thou didst learn to sing aloud of men and of the gods. Already he was stooping to embrace my teacher's feet, but he said to him, Brother, do not foreshade thou art, and shade beholdest. Purgatory canto xi. Already was the angel left behind us, the angel who to the sixth round had turned us, having erased one mark from off my face. And those who have injustice their desire had said to us, in their voices, with Sigio, and without more ended it, and I more light than through the other passes, went onward so, that without any labor I followed upward the swift-footed spirits. Hence from the hour that juvenile descended among us into the infernal limbo, who made apparent to me thy affection. My kindliness towards thee was as great as ever bound one to an unseen person, so that these stairs will now seem short to me. But tell me, 
and forgive me as a friend, if too great confidence let loose the rein and as a friend now hold discourse with me. Verily oftentimes do things appear which give fallacious matter to our doubts instead of the true causes which are hidden. Thy question shows me thy belief to be that I was niggard in the other life, it may be from the circle where I was. Therefore know thou that avarice was removed too far from me and this extravagance thousands of lunar periods have punished. And were it not that I my thoughts uplifted, when I the passage heard where thou exclaimest, as if indignant, unto human nature. To what impellest thou not, O cursed hunger of gold, the appetite of mortal men? Revolving I should feel the dismal justings. Then I perceived the hands could spread too wide their wings in spending, and repented me as well of that as of my other sins. How many with sure and hair shall rise again because of ignorance, which from this sin cuts off repentance living and in death? And know that the transgression which rebuts by direct opposition any sin together with it here its verdure dries. Thou when thou sangest the relentless weapons of the twofold affliction of Jocasta, thou didst as he who walketh in the night, who bears his light behind, which helps him not, but where he makes the persons after him. When thou didst say the age renews itself, justice returns, and man's primeval time, and a new progeny descends from heaven. Through thee I poet was, through thee a Christian, but that thou better see what I design, to color it will I extend my hand. Already was the world in every part pregnant with the true creed, disseminated by messengers of the eternal kingdom. And thy assertion spoken of above, with the new preachers was in unison, whence I to visit them the custom took. Then they became so holy in my sight, that, when Domitian persecuted them, not without tears of mine were their laments. And all the while that I on earth remained, them I befriended, and their pride customs made me disparage all the other sects. And ere I led the Greeks unto the rivers of Thebes, in poetry, I was baptized, but out of fear was covertly a Christian. For a long time professing paganism and this lukewarmness cost me the fourth circle to circuit round more than four centuries. Thou, therefore, who hast raised the covering that hid from me whatever good I speak of, while in ascending we have time to spare. These Perseus and myself, and others many, replied my leader, with that Grecian are whom more than all the rest the muses suckled, in the first circle of the prison blind oft times we of the mountain hold discourse which has our nurses ever with itself. Euripides is with us, and Phon, Simonides, Agatho, and many other Greeks who have old their brows with laurel decked. There some of thine own people may be seen, Antigone, Dapal, and Argia, and there is men mournful as of old. Silent already were the poets both, at and once more and looking round about from the ascent and from the walls released. And the four handmaidens of the day already were left behind, and at the pole the fifth was pointing upward still its burning horn. I think that towards the edge our dexter shoulders it behoves us turn circling the mount as we are wont to do. Thus in that region custom was our ensign and we resumed our way with less suspicion for the ascending of that worthy soul. They in advance went on and I alone behind them, and I listened to their speech, which gave me lessons in the art of song. But soon their sweet discourses interrupted a tree which midway in the road we found, with apples sweet and grateful to the smell. And even as a fir tree tapers upward from bough to bough, so downwardly did that I think in order that no one might climb it. On that side where our pathway was enclosed fell from the lofty rock a limpid water and spread itself abroad upon the leaves. The poets twain unto the tree drew near, and from among the foliage a voice cry, Of this food ye shall have scarcity, and for their drink the ancient Roman women with water were content, and Daniel disparaged food, and understanding one. The primal age was beautiful as gold acorns it made with hunger severus, and nectar every rivulet with thirst. Honey and locusts were the elements that fed the Baptist in the wilderness whence he is glorious and so magnified. 
the while among the verdant leaves mine eyes I riveted, as he is wont to do who wastes his life pursuing little birds. My more than father said unto me, Son, come now because the time that is ordained us more usefully should be apportioned out. I turned my face on no less soon my steps unto the sages, who were speaking so they made the going of no cost to me. And lo! Were heard a song and a lament. Labia me, domini. In fashion such that delight and dolence it brought forth. O oh, my sweet father, what is this I hear? Began I and he answered, Jades that go perhaps the not unlosing of their dead, in the same way that thoughtful pilgrims do, who, unknown people on the road overtaking, turn themselves round to them and do not stop. Even thus, behind us, with a swifter motion coming on passing onward, gazed upon us a crowd of spirits silent and devout. Each in his eyes was dark and cavernous, pallid in face, and so emaciate that from the bones the skin did shape itself. I do not think that so too marist Rhine could erist than have been withered up by famine when most fear he had of it. Behold, this is the folk who lost Jerusalem when Mary made a prey of her own son. Their sockets were like rings without the gems, however, in the face of men reads them might well and these have recognized them. Who would believe the odor of an apple, the getting longing, could consume them so, and that of water, without knowing how. I still was wondering what so famished them, for the occasion not yet manifest of their emaciation and sad squalor. And lo! From out the hollow of his head his eyes a shade turned on me, and looked keenly then cried aloud. What grace to me is this? Never should I have known him by his look, but in his voice was evident to me that which his aspect had suppressed within it. This spark within me wholly rekindled my recognition of his altered face, and I recalled the features of Forrest. Ah, do not look at this dry leprosy. Entreated he, which doth my skin discolor nor at default of flesh that I may have. That face of thine, which dead I once bewept, gives me for weeping now no lesser grief. I answered him beholding it so changed, all of this people lamenting sing, for following bond measure appetite in hunger and thirst are here resent to fight. Desire to eat and drink enkindles in us the scent that issues from the apple tree, and from the spray that sprinkles o'er the verdure. And not a single time alone, this ground encompassing, is refreshed our pain, I say our pain, and ought to say our solace. If sooner were the power exhausted in thee of sinning more, than thee the hour surprised of that good sorrow which to God ruins us. She with her prayers devout, and with her sighs has drawn me from the coast where one where one awaits, and from the other circles set me free. So much more dear and pleasing is to God my little widow, whom so much I loved, as in good works she is the more alone. For the Barbagia of Sardinia by far more modest in its women is than the Barbagia I have left her in. O oh, brother sweet, what wilt thou have me say? A future time is in my sight already, to which this hour will not be very old. When from the pulpit shall be interdicted to the unblushing womankind of Florence to go about displaying breast and paps. What savages were ere, what Saracens who stood in need to make them covered go of spiritual or other discipline. But if the shameless women were sure of what swift heaven prepares for them, already wide open would they have their mouths to howl. For if my foresight here deceive me not, they shall be sad ere he has bearded cheeks who now is hushed to sleep with lullaby. Thence his encouragements have led me up, ascending and still circling round the mount that you doth straighten, whom the world made crooked. He says that he will bear me company, till I shall be where Beatrice will be there it behoves me to remain without him. Nor speech the going, nor the going that slackened, but talking we went bravely on even as a vessel urged by a good wind. And shadows that appeared things doubly dead from out the sepulchres of their eyes betrayed wonder at me, aware that I was living. My sister, who, twixt beautiful and good, I know not which was more, 
triumphs rejoicing already in her crown on high Olympus. He named me many others one by one, and all contented seemed at being named, so that for this I saw not one dark look. I saw for hunger bite the empty air of old and Dalapella and Boniface, who with his crook had pastured many people. I saw Messer Marchese, who had leisure once at four for drinking with less dryness, and he was one who ne'er felt satisfied. But as he does who scans, and then doth prize one more than others, did I him of Luca, who seemed to take most cognizance of me. He murmured, and I know not what Gentica from that place heard I, where he felt the wound of justice that doth miserate them so. I said, That seemest so desirous to speak with me, do so that I may hear thee, and with thy speech appease thyself and me. A maid is born, and wears not yet the veil. Began he, who to thee shall pleasant make my city, howsoever man may blame it. Thou shalt go on thy way with this provision, if by my murmuring thou hast been deceived, true things hereafter will declare it to thee. And I to him, One am I, who, whenever love doth inspire me, note, and in that measure which he within me dictates, singing, Go, O brother, now I see. He said, The not which me, the notary, and Giton held short of the sweet new style that now I hear. I do perceive full clearly how your pens go closely following after him who dictates, which with our own forsooth came not to pass. Even as the birds that winter towards the Nile sometimes into a phalanx form themselves, then fly in greater haste and go and file. In such wise all the people who were there, turning their faces, hurried on their steps, both by their lameness and their wishes light. And as a man who weary is with trotting, lets his companions onward go, and walks until he vents the panting of his chest. So did Forrest let the holy flock pass by, and came with me behind it, saying, How long? I answered, I may live, I know not yet my return will not so speedy be, but I shall sooner and desire arrive. He said, For him most guilty of it in a beast's tail, behold, I dragged along towards the valley where is no repentance. Faster at every step the beast is going, increasing evermore until it smites him, and leaves the body vilely mutilated. As sometimes issues forth upon a gallop a cavalier from out a troop that ride, and seeks the honor of the first encounter. So he with greater strides departed from us, and on the road remained I with those two who were such mighty marshals of the world. And when before us he had gone so far, mine eyes became to him such pursuivants as was my understanding to his words. Appeared to me with laden and living boughs another apple tree, and not far distant from having but just then turned thitherward. People I saw beneath it lift their hands, and cry, I know not what, towards the leaves, like little children eager and deluded. Who pray, and he they pray to doth not answer, but, to make very keen their appetite, holds their desire aloft, and hides it not. Then they departed as if undeceived, and now we came unto the mighty tree which prayers and tears so manifold refuses. Pass farther onward without drawing near the tree of which he ate is higher up, and out of it one has this tree been raised. Thus said I know not who among the branches where it Virgilius stayed us, and myself went crowding forward on the side that rises. Said he, of the accursed ones formed of the cloud rack, who in every eight combated Theseus with their double breasts. Thus closely pressed to one of the two borders, on past we, hearing sins of gluttony, followed forsooth by miserable gains. Then set at large upon the lonely road, a thousand steps and more we onward went, in contemplation, each without a word. But go ye thinking thus, ye three along? Said suddenly a voice, worried I started, as terrified and timid beasts are wont. I raised my head to see who this might be, and never in a furnace was there seen metals or glass so loosened and so red. If it may please you to mount aloft, here it behoves you turn this way goes he who goeth after peace. His aspect had bereft me of my sight, so that I turned me back unto my teachers like one who goeth as his hearing guides him. And as the harbinger of early dawn, 
The air of May doth move and breathe out fragrance, impregnate all with herbage and with flowers. So did I feel a breeze strike in the midst my front, and felt the moving of the plumes that breathed around an odor of ambrosia. Purgatoria Canto C Now was it thus, and no hindrance brooked, because the sun had his meridian circle to Taurus left, and night to Scorpio. Wherefore as doth a man who tarries not, but goes his way, waiter to him appear, if of necessity the sting transfix him. In this wise did we enter through the gap, taking the stairway, one before the other, which by its narrowness divides the climbers. And as the little stork that lifts its wing with a desire to fly, and does not venture to leave the nest, and lets it downward droop. Even such was I, with the desire of asking kindled unquenched, unto the motion coming he makes who doth address himself to speak. Not for our pace, though rapid it might be, my father sweet forbore but say. But fly the vow of speech thou to the barb hast drawn. With confidence I opened then my mouth, and I began. How can one meager grow there where the need of nutriment applies not? If thou wouldst call to mind how meager was wasted by the wasting of a brand, this would not. And wouldst thou think how at each tremulous motion trembles within a mirror your own image that which seems hard would mellow seem to thee? If I unfold to him the eternal vengeance, Responded Statius, where thou present art, be my excuse that I cannot deny thee. The perfect blood, which never is drunk up into the thirsty veins, and which remaineth like food that from the table thou removest, takes in the heart for all the human members virtue informative, as being that which to be changed to them goes through the veins, again digest, descends it where it is better silent to be than say on then drops thence upon another's blood in natural vase. There one together with the other mingles, one to be passive meant, the other active by reason of the perfect place it springs from. And being conjoined, begins to operate, coagulating first, then vivifying what for its matter it had made consistent. The active virtue, being made a soul as of a plant in so far different, this on the way is that arrived already. Then works so much, that now it moves and feels like a sea fungus, and then undertakes to organize the powers whose seed it is. Now sun dilates on, now distends itself the virtue from the generator's heart, where nature is intent on all the members. But how from animal it man becomes thou dost not see as yet this is a point which made a wiser man than thou once ere. So far, that in his doctrine separate he made the soul from possible intellect, for he no organ saw by this assumed. Open thy breast unto the truth that's coming, and know that just as soon as in the fotus the articulation of the brain is perfect. The primal motor turns to it well pleased at so great art of nature, and inspires a spirit new with virtue all replete. Which what it finds there active doth attract into its substance, and becomes one's soul, which lives, and feels, and on itself revolves. And that thou less may wonder at my word, behold the sun's heat, which becometh wine, joined to the juice that from the vine distills. When never latches this has no more thread, it separates from the flesh, and virtually bears with itself the human and divine. The other faculties are voiceless all the memory, the intelligence, and the will in action far more vigorous than before. Without a pause it falleth of itself in marvelous way on one shore or the other thereof its roads it first is cognizant. Soon as the place there circumscribeth it, the virtue informative rays round about, as, and as much as, in the living members. And even as the air, when full of rain, by alien rays that are therein reflected, with divers colors shows itself adorned. So there the neighboring air doth shape itself into that form which doth impress upon it virtually the soul that has stood still. And then in matter of the little flame, which followeth the fire where it shifts, after the spirit followeth its new form. Since afterwards it takes from this its semblance, it is called shade, and thence it organizes thereafter every sense, even to the sight. 
thence is it that we speak, and thence we laugh, thence is it that we form the tears and sighs, and on the mountain thou may have hast hurt. And now unto the last of all the circles had we arrived, unto the right hand turned, and were attentive to another care. There the embankment shoots forth flames of fire, and upward doth the cornice breathe a blast that drives them back, and from itself sequesters. Hence we must needs go on the open side, and one by one, and I did fear the fire on this side, and on that the falling down. Long this place one ought to keep upon the eyes of tide and rain, seeing that one so easily might err. Some may dis clement I. In the bosom of the great burning chanted then I heard, which made me no less eager to turn round. And spirit saw I walking through the flame wherefore I looked to my own steps and there's apportioning my sight from time to time. After the close which to that hymn is made, aloud they shouted. Then recommenced the hymn with voices low. This also ended, cried they. To the wood Diana ran and drove forth Hellas therefrom, who had of Venus felt the poison. Then to their song returned they, then the wives they shouted, and the husbands who were chaste. As virtue and the marriage vow imposes. And I believe that then this mode suffices, for all the time the fire is burning them with such care as it needful, and such food. That the last wound of all should be closed up. Purgatory Canto Xuvi. Well, on the brink thus one before the other, we went upon our way off the good master said. Take thou heed, suffice it that I warn thee. On the right shoulder smote me now the sun, that, raying out, already the whole west changed from its azure aspect into white. And with my shadow did I make the flame appear more red, and even to such a sign shade saw I many, as they went, give heed. This was the cause that gave them a beginning to speak of me, and to themselves began they to say, that seems not a factitious body. Then towards me, as far as they could come, came certain of them, always with regard not to step forth where they would not be burned. Nor to me only is thine answer needful, for all of these have greater thirst for it than for cold water, Ithip or Indian. Thus one of them addressed me, and I straight should have revealed myself, were I not bent on other novelty that then appeared. For through the middle of the burning road there came a people face to face with these, which held me in suspense with gazing at them. There see I hastening upon either side each of the shades, and kissing one another without a pause, content with brief salute. Thus in the middle of their brown battalions muzzle to muzzle one ant meets another perchance to spy their journey or their fortune. No sooner is the friendly greeting ended, or ever the first footstep passes onward, each one endeavors to outcry the other. Jodam and Gomorra! The rest into the cow pacify enters, so that the bull unto her lust may run. Then as the cranes, that two ripping mountains might fly in part, and part towards the sands, these of the frost, those of the sun avoidant. One folk is going, and the other coming, and weeping they return to their first songs, unto the cry that most befitteth them. And close to me approached, even as before, the very same who had entreated me, that and to listen in their countenance. Neither unripe nor ripened have remained my members upon earth, but here are with me with their own blood and their articulations. I go up here to be no longer blind, a lady is above, who wins this grace, whereby the mortal through your world I bring. But as your greatest longing satisfied may soon become, so that the heaven may house you which full of love is, and most amply spreads. Not otherwise with wonder is bewildered the mountaineer, and staring round is dumb, when rough and rustic to the town he goes. Then every shade became in its appearance, but when they of their stupor were disburdened, which in high hearts is quickly quieted. He recommends to first had questioned us, experience freightest for a better life. The folk that comes not with us have offended in that for which once Caesar, triumphing, heard himself called in contumely queen. Therefore they separate, exclaiming, Sodom, themselves reproving, even as thou hast heard, and add unto their burning by their shame. 
our own transgression was hermaphrodite, but because we observed not human law, following like unto beasts our appetite. In our opprobrium by us is read, when we part company, the name of her who bestialized herself and bestial wood. Now knowest thou our acts, and what our crime was, wouldst thou perchance by name know who we are? There is not time to tell, nor could I do it. The same that in the sadness of Lycurgus two sons became, their mother reboholding such I became, but rise not to such height. The moment I heard name himself the father of me and of my betters, who had ever practiced the sweet and gracious rhymes of love. And without speech and hearing thoughtfully for a long time I went beholding him, nor for the fire did I approach him nearer. When I was fed with looking, utterly myself I offered ready for his service, with affirmation that compels belief. Those dulcet lays of yours which, long as shall endure our modern fashion, shall make forever dear their very ink. O oh, brother! He whom I point out, and here he pointed at a spirit in front, was of the mother tongue of better smith. Verses of love and proses of romance, he mastered all and let the idiots talk, who think the Lamosin surpasses him. To clamor more than truth they turn their faces, and in this way establish their opinion ere art or reason has by them been heard. Thus many ancients with Gitun did, from cry to cry still giving him applause until the truth has conquered with most persons. Now, if thou hast such ample privilege, tis granted thee to go unto the cloister wherein is Christ the abbot of the college, and to give place perchance to one behind, whom he had near, he vanished in the fire as fish in water going to the bottom. I moved a little towards him, pointed out, and said that to his name my own desire and honorable place was making ready. He of his own free will began to Satan in a bell as Buster court as demon Q ju num pusk nivul of vas cabrier. You sui are not Q plori ve chant and consuros ve la passata folor, e ve jos and lo jorn quo esper denen. Aravas prek per aquela valor, Q vas condas elsam de la scalina soving of vas a tempora ma dolor. So pleases me your courteous demand, I cannot and I will not hide me from you. I am Arnot, who weep and sing and go contrite, I see the folly of the past, and joyous see the hope for day before me. Therefore do I implore you, by that power which guides you to the summit of the stairs, be mindful to assuage my suffering. Purgatory Canto Xvai As when he vibrates forth his earliest rays, in regions where his maker shed his blood, the bro falling under lofty Libra. And waters in the Ganges burnt with noon, so stood the sun, hence was the day departing, when the glad angel of God appeared to us. Outside the flame he stood upon the verge, and chanted forth, in voice by far more living than our own, that no one farther goes, souls sanctified, if first the fire bite not within it enter, and be not deaf unto the song bond. When we were close beside him thus he said, wherefore in such became I, when I heard him, as he is who is put into the grave. Upon my clasped hands I straightened me, scanning the fire, and vividly recalling the human bodies that I had once seen burned. Remember thee, remember! And if I, Anjurion, have safely guided thee, what shall I do now I am near God? Believe for certain, shouldst thou stand a full millennium in the bosom of this flame, it could not make thee bald a single hair. And if perchance thou think that I deceive thee, draw near to it, and put it to the proof with thine own hands upon thy garment's hem. Seeing me stand still motionless, unstubborn, somewhat disturbed, he said, Now look thou, son, betwixt Beatrice and thee there is this wall, as at the name of this be oped his lids the dying Pyramus, and gazed upon her, what time the mulberry became vermilion. Even thus my obduracy being softened, I turned to my wise God, hearing the name that in my memory evermore is welling. How now? Shall we stay on this side? Then smiled as one does at a child who's vanquished by an apple. Then into the fire in front of me he entered, beseeching Statius to come after me, 
who a long way before divided us. When I was in it, into molten glass I would have cast me to refresh myself, so without measure was the burning there. And my sweet father, to encourage me, discoursing still of Beatrice, went on, saying, Her eyes I seem to see already, a voice, and on the other side was singing, directed us, and we, and hent alone on that, came forth where thus and began. Venet, benedicted Petrus May, sounded within a splendor, which was there such it overcame me, and I could not look. It added, the night cometh, tarry ye not, but onward urge your steps, so long as yet the west becomes not dark. Straight forward through the rock the path ascended in such a way that I cut off the rays before me of the sun, that now was low. And a few stairs we yet had made assy, ere by the vanished shadow the sun setting behind us we perceived, I and my sages. And ere in all its parts a measure of the horizon of one aspect had become, and night her boundless dispensation held. Each of us of a stair had made his bed because the nature of the mount took from us the power of climbing more than the delight. Even as in ruminating passive grow the goats, who have been swift and venturesome upon the mountain tops ere they were fed. Hushed in the shadow while the sun is hot, watched by the herdsman who upon his staff is leaning, and in leaning tendeth him. And as the shepherd, lodging out of doors, passes the night beside his quiet flock, watching that no wild beast may scatter it. Such at that hour were we all three of us, I like the goat, and like the herdsmen they, begird on this side and on that by rocks. Little could there be seen of things without, but through that little I beheld the stars more luminous and larger than their wont. Thus ruminating, and beholding these sleep seized upon me, sleep, that oftentimes before a deed is done has tidings of it. It was the hour, I think, when from the east first on the mountain thither beamed, who with the fire of love seems always burning. Youthful and beautiful in dreams methought I saw a lady walking in a meadow, gathering flowers and singing she was saying, To please me at the mirror. Here I deck me, but never does my sister Rachel leave her looking glass, and sitteth all day long. And now before the Antilucan splendors that unto pilgrims the more grateful rise, as Homer turning, less remote they lodge. The darkness fled away on every side, and slumber with it, whereupon I rose, seeing already the great masters risen. That apple sweet, which drew so many branches the care of mortals goeth in pursuit of, the day shall put in peace thy hungerings. Speaking to me, Virgilius, of such words as these made use, and never were there gardens that could in pleasantness compare with these. Such longing upon longing came upon me to be above, that at each step thereafter for flight I felt in me opinions growing. When underneath us was the stairway all run o'er, and we were on the highest step, Virgilius fastened upon me his eyes. I intellect and art I here have brought thee take thine own pleasure for thy guide henceforth by the steep ways and the narrow art thou. Behold the sun that shines upon thy forehead, behold the grass, the flowers, and the shrubs which of itself alone this land produces. Until rejoicing come the beauteous eyes which weeping caused me to come unto thee, thou canst sit down, and thou canst walk among them. Expect no more or word or sign from me, free and upright and sound is thy free will, and error were it not to do its bidding. Eager already to search in and round the heavenly forest, dense and living green, which tempered to the eyes the new worn day. Without and more delay I left the bank, taking the level country slowly, slowly over the soil that everywhere breathes fragrance. A softly breathing air, that no mutation had in itself, upon the forehead smote me no heavier blow than of a gentle wind. Whereat the branches, lightly tremulous, did all of them bow downward toward that side where its first shadow casts the holy mountain. And not from their upright direction swayed, so that the little birds upon their top should leave the practice of each art of theirs. But with full ravishment the hours of prime singing received they in the midst of leaves that ever bore a burden to their rhymes. 
such as from branch to branch ghosts gathering on through the pine forest on the shore of Chiasi, when Elison loses the Serco. Already my slow steps had carried me into the ancient wood so far that I could not perceive where I had entered it. And thou! My further course a stream cut off which towered the left hand with its little waves bent down the grass that on its margin sprang. All waters that on earth most limpid are would seem to have within themselves some mixture compared with that which nothing doth conceal. Although it moves on with a brown, brown current under the shade perpetual, that never a ray of the sun lets in, nor of the moon. With feet I stayed, and with mine eyes I passed upon the rivulet to look upon the great variety of the fresh may. And there appeared to me even as appears suddenly something that doth turn aside through very wonder every other thought. A lady all alone, who went along singing and culling floweret after floweret, with which her pathway was all painted over. As turns herself, with feet together pressed unto the ground, a lady who is dancing and hardly puts one foot before the other. On the vermilion and the yellow floweret she turned towards me, not in other wise than maiden who her modest eyes casts down. And my entreaties made to be content, so near approaching, that the dulcet sound came unto me together with its meaning. As soon as she was where the grasses are, bathed by the waters of the beauteous river, to lift her eyes she granted me the boon. I do not think there shone so great a light under the lids of Venus, when transfixed by her own son beyond his usual custom. Wrecked upon the other bank she smiled, bearing full many colors in her hands, which that highland produces without seed. Part three paces did the river make us but Hellespont, where Xerxes passed across, a curb still to all human arrogance. More hatred from Leander did not suffer for rolling between Cestus and Abydos than that from me, because it oped not then. Began she, peradventure, and this place elect to human nature for its nest. Some apprehension keeps you marveling, but the psalm delect is to give it light which has the power to uncloud your intellect. Said I. And the forest sound are combating within me my new faith in something which I heard opposed to this, the good supreme soul in itself delighting, created man good, and this goodly place gave him as Hansel of eternal peace. By his default sure while he sojourned here, by his default to weeping and to toil he changed his innocent laughter and sweet play. That the disturbance which below is made by exhalations of the land and water, which far as may be follow after heat, might not upon mankind wage any war. This mount ascended towards the heaven so high and is exempt from there where it is locked. Now since the universal atmosphere turns in a circuit with the primal motion unless the circle is broken on some side, upon this height that all is disengaged in living ether, doth this motion strike and make the forest sound, for it is dense. And so much power the stricken plant possesses that with its virtue it impregns the air, and this revolving scatters it around. And yonder earth, according as tis worthy in self or in its clime, conceives and bears of diverse qualities the diverse trees. It should not seem a marvel then on earth, this being heard whenever any plant without seed manifest there taketh root. And thou must know, this holy table and in which thou art is full of every seed, and fruit has in it never gathered there. The water which thou seest springs not from vein restored by vapor that the cold condenses like to a stream that gains or loses breath, but issues from a fountain safe uncertain, which by the will of God as much regains as it discharges open on two sides. Upon this side with virtue it descends, which takes away all memory of sin on that, of every good deed done restores it. Your lady, as upon the other side, you know, it is called and worketh not if first on either side it be not tasted. This every other sever doth transcend, and notwithstanding slate so far may be thy thirst, that I reveal to thee no more. I'll give thee a corollary still in grace, nor think my speech will be to thee less dear if it spread out beyond my promise to thee. 
those who in ancient times have feigned in song the age of gold and its felicity, dreamed of this place perhaps upon Parnassus. Then backward did I turn me wholly round unto my poets, and saw that with a smile they had been listening to these closing words. Purgatoria Canto Xic Singing like unto an enamored lady she, with the ending of her words, continued, Vidi quorum tectus on peceta, and even as nymphs, that wandered all alone among the sylvan shadows, sedulous one to avoid and one to see the sun. She then against the stream moved onward, going along the bank, and I abreast of her, her little steps with little steps attending. Between her steps and mine were not a hundred, when equally the margins gave a turn in such a way, that to the east I faced. Nor even thus our way continued far before the lady wholly turned herself unto me, saying, And lo! A sudden luster ran across on every side athwart the spacious forest, such that it made me doubt if it were lightning. But since the lightning ceases as it comes, and that continuing brightened more and more within my thought, I said, a thing is this, and the delicious melody there ran along the luminous air whence holy zeal made me rebuke the hard hood of thee. For there where earth and heaven obedient were, the woman only, and but just created, could not endure to stay beneath any veil. Underneath which had she devoutly stayed, I sooner should have tasted those delights ineffable, and for a longer time. While mid such manifold first fruits I walked of the eternal pleasure all enwrapped and still solicitous of more delights. In front of us like an enkindled fire became there beneath the verdant boughs, and the sweet sound as singing now was heard. O virgins sacrosanct! If ever hunger, vigils, or cold for you I have endured, the occasion spurs me their reward to claim. Now Helicon must needs pour forth for me, and with her choir Verania must assist me to put in verse things difficult to think. A little farther on, seven trees of golden semblance, the long space still intervening between ourselves on them did counterfeit. But when I had approached so near to them the common object, which the sense deceives, lost not by distance any of its marks. The faculty that lends discourse to reason did apprehend that they were candlesticks, and in the voices of the song. Above them flamed the harness beautiful, far brighter than the moon in the serene of midnight at the middle of her month. I turned me round, with admiration filled, to good Virgilius, and he answered me with visage no less full of wonderment. Then back I turned my face to those high things, which moved themselves towards us so sedately, they had been distanced by new-wedded brides. The lady chid me. Why dost thou burn only so with affection for the living lights, and dost not look at what comes after them? Then saw I people, as behind their leaders, coming behind them, garmented in white, and such a whiteness never was on earth. The water on my left flank was resplendent, and back to me reflected my left side, in as a mirror if I looked therein. When I upon my margin had such post that nothing but the stream divided us, better to see I gave my steps repose. And I beheld the flamelets onward go, leaving behind themselves the air depicted, and they of trailing pendants had the semblance. So that it overhead remained distinct with sevenfold lists, all of them of the colors whence the sun's bow is made, and Delia's girdle. These standards to the rearward longer were than was my sight, and, as it seemed to me, ten paces were the outermost apart. Under so fair a heaven as I described the four and twenty elders, two by two, came on in coronet with flowered loose. Blessed thou among the daughters of Adam art, and blessed for evermore shall be thy loveliness. After the flowers and other tender grasses in front of me upon the other margin were disencumbered of that race elect. Even as in heaven star followeth after star, there came close after them four animals, in coronet each one with verdant leaf. Plumed with six wings was every one of them, the plumage full of eyes the eyes of Argus if they were living would be such as these. Reader! 
to trace their forms no more i waste my rhymes for other spendings press me so that i in this can't be prodigal but red ezekiel who depicteth them as he beheld them from the region cold coming with cloud with whirlwind and with fire and such as thou shalt find them in his pages such were they here saving that in their plumage john is with me and differeth from him the interval between these four contained a chariot triumphal on two wheels which by a griffin's neck came drawn along and upward he extended both his wings between the middle list and three and three so that he injured none by cleaving it so high they rose that they were lost to sight his limbs were gold so far as he was bird and white the others with vermilion mingled not only rome with no such splendid car e'er gladdened africanus or augustus but poor to it that of the sun would be that of the sun which sorving was burnt up at the importunate orison of earth when jove was so mysteriously just three maidens at the right wheel in a circle came onward dancing one so very red that in the fire she hardly had been noted the second was as if her flesh and bones had all been fashioned out of emerald the third appeared as snow but newly fallen and now they seemed conducted by the white now by the red and from the song of her the others took their step or slow or swift upon the left hand four made holiday vested in purple following the measure of one of them with three eyes on her head in rear of all the group here treated of two old men i beheld unlike in habit but like in gait each dignified and grave one showed himself as one of the disciples of the supreme hypocrites whom nature made for the animals she holds most dear contrary care the other manifested with sword so shining and so sharp it caused terror to me on this side of the river after four i saw of humble aspect and behind all an aged man alone walking in sleep with countenance acute and like the foremost company these seven were half at it yet of the florid loose no garland round about the head they wore but of the rose and other flowers vermilion at little distance with the sight of sworn that all were in a flame above their brows and when the car was opposite to me thunder was heard and all that folk august seemed to have further progress interdicted purgatory cantox when the septentrion of the highest heaven which never either setting new or rising nor veil of other cloud than that of sin and which made every one therein aware of his own duty as the lord makes whoever turns the helm to come to port motionless halted the voracious people that came at first between it and the griffin turned themselves to the car as to their peace and one of them as if by heaven commissioned singing shouted three times and all the others after even as the blessed at the final summons shall rise up quickened each one from his cavern uplifting light the reinvested flesh so upon that celestial chariot a hundred rose that was some ministers and messengers of life eternal they all were saying bundictus qui venis and scattering flowers above and round about manibus o date lilia plenis ere now have i beheld as day began the eastern hemisphere all tinged with rose and the other heaven with fair serene adorn and the sun's face uprising overshadowed so that by tempering influence of vaporous for a long interval the eye sustained it thus in the bosom of a cloud of flowers which from those hands angelical ascended and downward fell again inside and out over her snow-white veil with olive scent appeared a lady under a green mantle vested in color of the living flame and my own spirit that already now so long a time had been that in her presence trembling with i it had not stood abashed without more knowledge having by mine eyes through a cold virtue that from her proceeded of ancient love the mighty influence felt as soon as on my vision smote the power sublime that had already pierced me through air from my boyhood i had yet come forth to the left hand i turned with the reliance with which the little child runs to his mother when he has fear or when he is afflicted not a drachm of blood remains in me that does not tremble i know the traces of the ancient flame 
but us Virgilius of himself deprived had left Virgilius, sweetest of all fathers, Virgilius, to whom I for safety gave me. Nor whatsoever lost the ancient mother availed my cheeks now purified from dew, that weeping they should not again be darkened. Dante, because Virgilius has departed, do not weep yet, do not weep yet a while, for by another sword thou needst must weep. And as an admiral who on poop and prow comes to behold the people that are working in other ships, and cheers them to well-doing. Upon the left-hand border of the car, when at the sound I turned of my own name, which of necessity is here recorded, I saw the lady who erewhile appeared veiled underneath the angelic festival, direct her eyes to me across the river. Although the veil that from her head descended, encircled with the foliage of Minerva, did not permit her to appear distinctly. In attitude still royally majestic continued she like unto one who speaks, and keeps his warmest utterance in reserve. Look at me well in sooth I'm Beatrice. How didst thou deign to come unto the mountain? Didst thou not know that man is happy here? Mine eyes fell downward into the clear fountain, but seeing myself therein I sought the grass, so great a shame did weigh my forehead down. As to the son the mother seems superb, so she appeared to me for somewhat bitter test at the savour of severe compassion. Silent became she, and the angel sang suddenly, In te domini spurvi, but beyond these muse did not pass, even as the snow among the living rafters upon the back of Italy congules, blown on and drifted by Sclavonian winds and then dissolving trickles through itself under the land that loses shadow breeze so that it seems a fire that melts a taper and thus was i without a tear or sigh before the song of those who sing forever after the music of the eternal spheres but when i heard in their sweet melodies compassion for me more than had they said oh wherefore Lady, dost thou thus upbraid him? The ice that was about my heart congealed, to air and water changed, and in my anguish through mouth and eyes came gushing from my breast. She on the right-hand border of the car still firmly standing, to those holy beings thus her discourse directed afterwards. Therefore my answer is with greater care, that he may hear me who is weeping yonder, so that the sin and dole be of one measure. Not only by the work of those great wheels, that destine every seed unto some end, according as the stars are in conjunction. But by the largest of celestial graces, which of such lofty vapours for their reign that near to them our sight approaches not. Such had this man become in his new life potentially, that every righteous habit would have made admirable proof in him. But so much more malignant and more savage becomes the land until done with bad seed, the more good earthly vigour it possesses. Some time did I sustain him with my look revealing unto him my youthful eyes, I led him with me turned in the right way. As soon as ever of my second age I was upon the threshold and changed life, himself from me he took and gave to others. When from the flesh to spirit I ascended, and beauty and virtue were in me increased, I was to him less dear and less delightful. And into ways untrue he turned his steps, pursuing the false images of good that never any promises fulfill. Nor prayer for inspiration me availed by means of which in dreams and otherwise I called him back, so little did he heed them. So low he felt that all appliances for his salvation were already short, save showing him the people of perdition. For this I visited the gates of death, and unto him who so far up has led him my intercessions were with weeping born. God's lofty fire would be violated, if leather should be passed, and if such viands should tasted be without in any scot. O thou who art beyond the sacred river! Turning to me the point of her discourse, that edgewise even had seemed to me so keen, she recommenced, continuing without pause. J. Say, if this be true to such a charge, thy own confession needs must be conjoined. My faculties were in so great confusion, that the voice moved but sooner was extinct than by its organs it was set at large. While she waited then she said, 
What thinkest? Answer me for the mournful memories in thee not yet are by the waters injured. Confusion and dismay together mingled for such a yes. From out my mouth that sight was needful to the understanding of it. Even as a crossbow breaks, when tis discharged too tensely drawn the bowstring and the bow, and with less force the arrow hits the mark. So I gave way beneath that heavy burden, outpouring in a torrent tears on size, and the voice flagged upon its passage forth. What trenches lying traverse, or what chains didst thou discover, that of passing onward thou shouldst have thus despoiled thee of the hope? After the heaving of a bitter sigh, hardly had I the voice to make response, and with fatigue my lips did fashion it. The things that present were with their false pleasure turned aside my steps, soon as your countenance concealed itself. But when from one's own cheeks comes bursting forth the accusal of a sin in our tribunal against the edge the wheel doth turn itself. But still that thou mayst feel a greater shame for thy transgression, and another time hearing the sirens thou mayst be more strong. Cast down the seed of weeping and attend, so shalt thou hear how in an opposite way my buried flesh should have directed thee. Never to thee presented art or nature pleasure so great as the fair limbs wherein I was enclosed, which scattered are in earth. And if the highest pleasure thus did fail thee by reason of my death, what mortal thing should then have drawn thee into its desire? Thou oughtest verily at the first shaft of things fallacious to have risen up to follow me, who was no longer such. Thou oughtest not to have stooped thy pinions downward to wait for further blows, or little girl, or other vanity of such brief use. Even as children silent and their shame stand listening with their eyes upon the ground, unconscious of their fault, unpenitent. If thou in hearing sufferest pain, lift up thy beard, and thou shalt feel a greater pain and sing. With less resistance is a robust home uprooted, either by a native wind or else by that from regions of Iarbus. Then I appraised at her command my chin, and when she by the beard the face demanded, while well, I perceived the venom of her meaning. And as my countenance was lifted up, Mine I perceived those creatures beautiful had rested from the strewing of the flowers. And still but little reassured, mine eyes saw Beatrice turned round towards the monster that is one person only in two natures. Beneath her veil, beyond the margent green, she seemed to me far more her ancient self to excel than others here when she was here. So prick me then the thorn of penitence. And of all other things, the one which turned me most to its love became the most my foe. Such self conviction stung me at the heart o'erpowered I fell, and what I then became she knoweth who had furnished me the cause. Then, when the heart restored my outward sense, the lady I had found alone above me I saw, and she was saying, Up to my throat she in the stream had drawn me, and dragging me behind her, she was moving upon the water lightly as a shuttle. When I was near unto the blessed shore. Asperges me. I heard so sweetly sung, remember it, I cannot, much less write it. The beautiful lady opened wide her arms, embraced my head, and plunged me underneath, where I was forced to swallow of the water. Then forth she drew me, and all dripping brought into the dance of the four beautiful, and each one with her arm did cover me. We hear our nymphs. And in the heaven our stars ere Beatrice descended to the world, we as her handmaids were appointed her. We'll led thee to her eyes, but for the pleasant light that within them is shall sharpen thine the three bound, who more profoundly look. Thus singing they began, and afterwards on to the griffin's breast they led me with them, where Beatrice was standing, turned towards us. See that thou dost not spare thine eyes. Before the emeralds have we stationed thee, whence love aforetime drew for thee his weapons. A thousand longings, hotter than the flame, fastened mine eyes upon those eyes relucent, that still upon the griffin's steadfast state. As in a glass the sun, not otherwise within them was the twofold monster shining, now with the one, now with the other nature. Think, reader. If within myself I marvelled, when I beheld the thing itself stand still, and in its image it transformed itself. 
while with amazement filled and jubilant my soul was tasting of the food that while it satisfies us makes us hunger for it. Themselves revealing of the highest rank and bearing did the other three advance singing to their angelic sarvan. Turn Beatrice, O oh, turn thy holy eyes. Such was their song unto thy faithful one who has to see thee ten so many steps, O oh, splendor of the living light eternal who underneath the shadow of Parnassus has grown so pale, or drunk so at its cistern. He would not seem to have his mind encumbered striving to paint thee as thou didst appear where the harmonious heaven o'ershut out thee. Purgatory Canto Xe So steadfast and attentive were mine eyes in satisfying their decennial thirst that all my other senses were extinct. And upon this side and on that they had walls of indifference, so the holy smile drew them unto itself with the old net. And forcibly my sight was turned away towards my left hand by those goddesses, because I heard from them. And that condition of the sight which is in eyes, but lately smitten by the sun, bereft me of my vision some short while. But to the less when sight reshaped itself, I say the less in reference to the greater splendor from which perforce I had withdrawn. I saw upon its right wing wheeled about the glorious host returning with the sun and with the sevenfold flames upon their faces. As underneath its shields, to save itself, a squadron turns, and with its banner wheels, before the whole thereof can change its front. That soldiery of a celestial kingdom which marched in the advance had wholly passed us before the chariot had turned its pole. Then to the wheels the maidens turned themselves, and the griffin moved his burden bendite, but so that not a feather of him fluttered. The lady fair who drew me through the ford followed with status and myself the wheel which made its orbit with the lesser arc. So passing through the lofty forest, vacant by fault of her who in the serpent trusted, angelic music made our steps keep time. Perchance as great a space had in three flights an arrow loosened from the string o'er past, as we had moved when Beatrice descended. Ah, now! Then circled they about a tree despoiled of blooms and other leafage on each bough, its tresses which so much the more dilate as higher they ascend had been by Indians among their forests marvelled at for height. Blessed art thou, O griffin, who dost not pluck with thy beak these branches sweet to taste, since appetite by this was turned to evil. After this fashion, round the tree robust the others shouted on the twofold creature. Thus is preserved the seed of all the just, and turning to the pole which he had dragged, he drew it close beneath a widowed bough, and what was of it until it left bound. In the same manner as our trees when downward falls the great light with that together mingled which after the celestial lost chains begin to swell and then renew themselves, each one with its own color, ere the sun harness his steeds beneath another star. Less than of rose and more than violet a hue disclosing, was renewed the tree that had her while its boughs so desolate. I never heard, nor here below is sung, the hymn which afterward that people sang, nor did I bear the melody throughout. Had I the power to paint how fell asleep those eyes compassionless, of syrinx hearing, those eyes to which more watching cost so dear. Even as a painter who from model paints I would portray how I was lulled asleep he may, who well can picture drowsehood. Therefore I passed to what time I awoke, and say a splendor rent from me a veil of slumber and a calling. As to behold the aplitrian blossom which makes the angels greedy for its fruit, and keeps perpetual bridles in the heaven. Peter and John and James conducted were, and overcome, recovered at the word by which still greater slumbers have been broken, and saw their school diminished by the loss not only of Elias, but of Moses, and the peril of their master changed. So I revived, and saw that piteous one above me standing who had been conductress aforetime of my steps beside the river. And all in doubt I said, Where's Beatrice? And she behold her seated underneath the leafage new, upon the root of it. And if her speech were more diffuse, I know not, because already in my sight was she who from the hearing of aught else had shut me. 
lone she sat upon the very earth, left there as guardian of the chariot which I had seen the before monster fasten. Encircling her, a cloister made themselves the seven nymphs, with those lights in their hands which are secure from Aquila and Oster. Thus Beatrice and I, who at the feet of her commandments all devoted was, my mind and eyes directed where she willed. Never descended with so swift a motion fire from a heavy cloud, when it is raining from out the region which is most remote. As I beheld the bird of Jove descend down through the tree, rending away the bark, as well as blossoms on the foliage new. And he with all his might the chariot smote, where it reeled like vessel on a tempest tossed by the waves, now starboard and now larboard. Thereafter saw I leap into the body of a triumphal vehicle a fox that seemed unfit with any wholesome food. But for his hideous sins upbraiding him, my lady put him to as swift a flight as such a fleshless skeleton could bear. Then by the way that it before had come, into the chariot's chest I saw the eagle descend, and leave it feathered with his plumes. And such as issues from a heart that mourns, a voice from heaven there issued, and it said, he thought then that the earth did yawn between both wheels, and I saw rise from it a dragon, who through the chariot upward fixed his tail. And as a wasp that draweth back its sting, drawing unto himself his tail malign, drew out the floor, and went his way rejoicing. That which remained behind, even as with grass a fertile region, with the feathers offered perhaps with pure intention and benign, reclothed itself and with them a reclout of the pole and both the wheels so speedily, a side doth longer keep the lips apart. Transfigured thus the holy edifice thrust forward heads upon the parts of it, three on the pole and one at either corner. The first were horned like oxen, but the forehead but a single horn upon the forehead a monster such had never yet been seen. Firm as a rock upon a mountain high, seated upon it, there appeared to me a shameless whore, with eyes swift glancing round. And as if not to have her taken from him, a prank beside her I beheld a giant, and ever and anon they kissed each other. But because she her wanton, roving eye turned upon me, her angry paramour did scourge her from her head unto her feet. Then full of jealousy, and fierce with wrath, he loosed the monster, and across the forest dragged it so far, he made of that alone. A shield unto the whore and the strange beast. Just venerant gents. Alternating now three, now four, melodious psalmody the maidens in the midst of terrors began, and Beatrice, compassionate and sighing, listened to them with such a countenance, that scarce more changed was Mary at the cross. But when the other virgin's place had given for her to speak, uprising to her feet with color as of fire, she made response, Modicum ad non vibitis me ad itrum, my sister's predilect, modicum ad bas vibitis me. Then all the seven in front of her she placed and after her, by beckoning only, moved me and the lady and the sage who stayed. So she moved onward, and I do not think that her tenth step was placed upon the ground, when with her eyes upon mine eyes she smote. And with a tranquil aspect, Come more quickly, do me, she said that, if I speak with thee, to listen to me, thou mayst be well placed. As soon as I was with her as I should be, she said to me, Why, brother, dost thou not venture to question now in coming with me? As unto those who are too reverential, speaking in presence of superiors, who drag no living utterance to their teeth. It me befell that without perfect sound began I. By necessity, Madonna, you know, and that which thereunto is good. Know that the vessel which the serpent broke was, and is not but let him who is guilty think that God's vengeance does not fear a sop. Without an heir shall not forever be the eagle that left his plumes upon the car, whence it became a monster, then a prey. For verily I see, and hence narrate it, the stars already near to bring the time from every hindrance safe, and every bar. Within which of five hundred ten on five, one sent from God, shall slay the thievish woman and that same giant who is sinning with her. 
and peradventure my dark utterance like the miss and the sphinx may less persuade these sins in their mode it clouds the intellect but soon the facts shall be the naids who shall this difficult enigma solve without destruction of the flocks and harvests note thou and even as by me are uttered these words so teach them unto those who live that life which is a running unto death and bear in mind when thou writest them not to conceal what thou hast seen the plant that twice already has been pillaged here whoever pillages or shatters it with blasphemy of deed offendeth god who made it holy for his use alone for biding that in pain and in desire five thousand years and more the first-born soul craved him who punished in himself the bite thy genius slumbers if it deem it not for special reasons so preeminent in height and so inverted in its summit and if thy vain imaginings had not been water of Elsa round about thy mind, and Pyramus to the mulberry their pleasure, thou by so many circumstances only the justice of the interdict of God morally in the tree wouldst recognize. But since I see thee in thine intellect converted into stone and stained with sin, so that the light of my discourse doth daze thee, she said, The school which thou hast followed, and mayst see how far its doctrine follows after my discourse. Whence her I answered, I do not remember that ever I estranged myself from you, nor have I conscience of it that reproves me, and if thou art not able to remember. Smiling, she answered, Recollect thee now that thou this very day hast drunk of leather and if from smoke of fire may be inferred such in oblivion clearly demonstrates some error in thy will elsewhere intent and more coruscant and with slower steps the sun was holding the meridian circle which with the point of view shifts here and there when halted as he cometh to a halt who goes before a squadron as its escort if something new he find upon his way the ladies seven at a dark shadow's edge such as beneath green leaves and branches black the alp upon its frigid border wears in front of them the tigress and euphrates methought i saw forth issue from one fountain and slowly part like friends from one another o light o glory of the human race what stream is this which here unfolds itself from out one source and from itself withdraws for such a prayer twas said unto me Pray, Matilda, that she tell thee, and here answered, as one does who doth free himself from blame, the beautiful lady. This and other things were told to him by me, and sure I am the water of lead has not hid them from him. Like gentle soul, that maketh no excuse, but makes its own will of another's will as soon as by a sign it is disclosed. Even so, when she had taken hold of me, the beautiful lady moved, and unto Statia set in her womanly manner. If, reader, I possessed a longer space for writing it, I yet would sing in part of the sweet draught that ne'er would satiate me. But in as much as full are all the leaves made ready for this second canticle, the curb of art no farther lets me go. From the most holy water I return regenerate in the manner of new trees that are renewed with a new foliage. Pure and disposed to mount unto the stars. The glory of him who moveth everything doth penetrate the universe, and shine in one part more and in another less. Within that heaven which most his light receives was I, on things beheld which to repeat nor knows, nor can, who from above descends. The cause in drawing near to its desire our intellect ingulfs itself so far, that after it the memory can it go. Truly whatever of the holy realm I had the power to treasure in my mind shall now become the subject of my song. O good Apollo, for this last emprise make of me such a vessel of thy power as giving the beloved laurel asks. One summit of Parnassus hitherto has been enough for me, but now with both I needs must enter the arena left. Enter into my bosom, thou and breed as at the time when marcius thou didst draw out of the scabbard of those limbs of his O power divine lendst thou thyself to me so that the shadow of the blessed realm stamped in my brain i can make manifest thou'lt see me come unto thy darling tree 
and crown myself thereafter with those leaves of which the theme and thou shalt make me worthy. So seldom, father, do we gather them for triumph or of Caesar or of poet, the fault and shame of human inclinations. That the penny and foliage should bring forth joy to the joyous Delphic deity, when any one it makes too thirst for it. A little spark is followed by great flame, perchance with better voices after me shall prayer be made that Sarah may respond. Two mortal men by the passages diverse apprises the world's lamp, but by that one which circles for whom it with three crosses. With better course and with a better star conjoined it issues, and the mundane wax tempers and stamps more after its own fashion. Almost that passage had made morning there and evening here, and there was wholly white that hemisphere, and black the other part. When betressed towards the left-hand side I saw turned round, and gazing at the sun never did eagle fasten so upon it. And even as a second ray is wont to issue from the first unreasoned, like to a pilgrim who would fain return. Thus of her action, through the eyes infused in my imagination, mine I made, and sunward fixed mine eyes found our wont. There much is lawful which is here unlawful unto our powers, by virtue of the place made for the human species as its own. Not long I bore it, nor so little while, but I beheld it sparkle round about like iron that comes molten from the fire. And suddenly it seemed that day to day was added, as if he who has the power had with another son the heaven adorned. With eyes upon the everlasting wheel stood Beatrice all intent, and I, on her fixing my vision from above removed. Such at her aspect inwardly became as Glaucus, tasting of the herb that made him peer of the other gods beneath the sea. To represent transhumanism in words impossible were the example, then suffice him for whom grace the experience reserves. If I was merely what of me thou newly createdst, love who governest the heaven thou knowest, who didst lift me with thy light. When now the wheel, which thou dost make eternal desiring thee, made me attentive to it by harmony thou dost modulate and measure, then seemed to me so much of heaven enkindled by the sun's flame, that neither rain nor river nor made a lake so widely spread abroad. The newness of the sound and the great light kindled in me a longing for their cause, never before with such acuteness felt. Once she, who saw me as I saw myself, too quiet in me my perturbed mind, opened her mouth ere I did mine to ask. If of my former doubt I was divested by these brief little words more smiled than spoken, I in a new one was the more ensnared. Already did I rest content from great amazement, but am now amazed in what way I transcend these bodies' light. Whereupon she, after a pitying sigh, her eyes directed towards me with that look a mother casts on a delirious child. Here do the higher creatures see the footprints of the eternal power, which is the end whereto is made the law already mentioned. In the order that I speak of are inclined all natures, by their destinies diverse more or less near unto their origin. Hence they move onward unto ports diverse or the great sea of being and each one with instinct given it which bears it on. This bears away the fire towards the moon, this is in mortal hearts the motive power, this binds together and unites the earth. Nor only the created things that are without intelligence, this bow shoots forth, but those that have both intellect and love. The providence that regulates all this makes with its light the heaven forever quiet, wherein that turns which has the greatest haste. And thither now, as to a sight decreed, bears us away the virtue of that cord which aims its arrows at a joyous mark. True is it, that as oftentimes the form accords not with the intention of the art, because an answering is matter deaf. So likewise from this course doth deviate sometimes the creature, who the power possesses, though thus impelled, to swerve some other way. In the same wise as one may see the fire fall from a cloud, if the first impetus earthward is rested by some false delight. Thou shouldst not wonder more, if well I judge, at thine ascent, than at a rivulet from some high mount descending to the lowland. Verdi so canto I. Oi, 
who in some pretty little boat, eager to listen, have been following behind my ship that singing sails along. Turn back to look again upon your shores, do not put out to sea, lest peradventure in losing me, you might yourselves be lost. The sea I sail has never yet been past Minerva breeze, and pilots me Apollo, and muses nine point out to me the bearers. The other few who have a neck uplifted betimes to the bread of angels upon which one liveth here and grows not sated by it. Well may you launch upon the deep salt sea your vessel, keeping still my wake before you upon the water that grows smooth again. Those glorious ones who unto cultus past were not so wonderstruck as you shall be, when Jason they beheld a plathman may. The concreted and perpetual thirst for the realm deform did bear us on, as swift almost as ye the heavens behold. Upward gazed Beatrice, and I at her and in such space perchance as strikes a bolt and flies, and from the notch unlocks itself. Arrived I saw me where a wondrous thing drew to itself my sight, and therefore she from whom no care of mine could be concealed. The wards me turning, blithe as beautiful, said unto me, Fix gratefully thy mind on God, who unto the first star has brought us. It seemed to me a cloud encompassed us, luminous, dense, consolidate, and bright as adamant on which the sun is striking. Into itself did the eternal pearl receive us, even as water doth receive a ray of light, remaining still unbroken. If I was body, and we here conceive not how one dimension tolerates another which needs must be if body enter body, more the desire should be enkindled in us that essence to behold wherein is seen how God and our own nature were united. There will be seen what we receive by faith, not demonstrated but self-evident in guise of the first truth that man believes. If the opinion of mortals be erroneous, she said, where the key of sense doth not unlock, certes, the shafts of wonder should not pierce thee now, for as much as, following the senses, thou seest that the reason has short wings. But tell me what thou thinkst of it thyself. And I, what seems to us up here diverse, is caused, I think, by bodies rare and dense. Lights many the eighth sphere displaced to you which in their quality and quantity may noted be of aspects different. If this were caused by a rare and dense alone, one only virtue would there be in all or more or less diffused, or equally. Virtues diverse must be perforce the fruits of formal principles on these save one, of course, would by thy reasoning be destroyed. Besides, if rarity were of this dimness the cause thou askest, either through and through this planet thus attenuate were of matter. Or else, as in a body is apportioned the fat and lean, so in like manner this would in its volume interchange the leaves. Were the former in the sun's eclipse it would be manifest by the shining through of light, as throughout tenuous interfused. This is not so hence we must scan the other, and if it chance the other I demolish, then falsified will thy opinion be. But if this rarity go not through and through, there needs must be a limit, beyond which its contrary prevents the further passing. And thence the foreign radiance is reflected, even as a color cometh back from glass, the which behind itself concealeth lead. Now thou wilt say the sunbeam shows itself more dimly there than in the other parts, by being there reflected farther back. From this reply experiment will free thee if ere thou try it, which is wont to be the fountain to the rivers of your arts. Three mirrors shalt thou take, and two remove alike from thee, that other more remote between the former two shall meet thine eyes. Turn towards these, cause that behind thy back be placed a light, illumining the three mirrors and coming back to thee by all reflected. Though in its quantity be not so ample the image most remote, there shalt thou see how it perforce is equally resplendent. Now as beneath the touches of warm rays naked the subject of the snow remains both of its former color and its cold. Be thus remaining in thy intellect will I inform with such a living light that it shall tremble in its aspect to thee. Within the heaven of the divine repose revolves a body in whose virtue lies the being of whatever it contains. The following heaven, that has so many eyes, divides this being by essences diverse, distinguished from it, and by it contained.
but other spheres by various differences all the distinctions which they have within them dispose unto their ends on their effects thus do these organs of the world proceed as thou perceivest now from grade to grade since from above they take and act beneath observe me well how through this place i come unto the truth thou wishest that hereafter thou mayst alone know how to keep the fort the power and motion of the holy spheres as from the artisan and the hammer's craft forth from the blessed motors must proceed the heaven which lights so manifold make fair from the intelligence profound which turns it an image takes and makes of it a seal and even as the soul within your dust remembers different and accommodated two faculties diverse expands itself so likewise this intelligence diffuses its virtue multiplied among the stars itself revolving on its unity virtue diverse doth a diverse alloyage make with the precious body that it quickens in which as life in you it is combined from the glad nature whence it is derived the mingled virtue through the body shines even as gladness through the living pupil from this proceeds whether from light to light appeareth different not from dense and rare this is the formal principle that produces that sun which erst with love my bosom warmed of beauteous truth had unto me discovered by proving and reproving the sweet aspect and that i might confess myself convinced and confident so far as was befitting i lifted more erect my head to speak but there appeared a vision which withdrew me so close to it in order to be seen that my confession i remembered not such as through polished and transparent glass or waters crystalline and undisturbed but not so deep as that their bed be lost come back again the outlines of our faces so feeble that a pearl on forehead white comes not less speedily unto our eyes such saw I many faces prompt to speak, so that I ran in air opposite to that which kindled love twixt man and fountain. As soon as I became aware of them, esteeming them as mirrored semblances to see of whom they were, mine eyes I turned. And nothing saw, and once more turned them forward direct into the light of my sweet guide, who smiling kindled in her holy eyes. She said to me, Because I smile at this thy puerile conceit, since on the truth it trusts not yet its foot. But turns thee, as tis wont, on emptiness. True substances are these which thou beholdest, here relegate for breaking of some vow. And I unto the shade that seemed most wishful to speak directed me, and I began, as one whom too great eagerness bewilders. I was a virgin sister in the world, and if thy mind doth contemplate me well, the being more fair will not conceal me from thee. But thou shalt recognize I am Picarda, who stationed here among these other blessed myself am blessed in the slowest sphere. All our affections, that alone inflamed are in the pleasure of the Holy Ghost, rejoice at being of his order form. Therefore I was not swift in my remembrance, but what thou tellest me now aids me so, that the refiguring is easier to me. First with those other shades she smiled a little thereafter answered me so full of gladness she seemed to burn in the first fire of love. If to be more exalted we aspired, discordant would our aspirations be unto the will of him who here secludes us. Which thou shalt see finds no place in these circles, if being in charity is needful here, and if thou lookest well into its nature. Yea, tis essential to this blessed existence, to keep itself within the will divine, whereby our very wishes are made what? So that, as we are station above station throughout this realm, to all the realm displeasing as to the king who makes his will our will. Then it was clear to me how everywhere in heaven is paradise, although the grace of good supreme there reign not in one measure. But as it comes to pass, if one food sates, and for another still remains the longing, we ask for this, and that decline with thanks. And thus did I with gesture and with word, to learn from her what was the web wherein she did not ply the shuttle to the end. Dead she, by whose rule down in your world they vest unveil themselves. 
and until death they may both watch and sleep beside that spouse who every vow accepts which charity conformeth to his pleasure. To follow her in girlhood from the world I fled, and in her habit shut myself, and pledged me to the pathway of her sect. Then men accustomed unto evil more than unto good, from the sweet cloister tore me, God knows what afterward my life became. This other splendor, which to thee reveals itself on my right side, and is enkindled with all the illumination of our sphere. But it of myself I say applies to her, and none was she, and likewise from her head was tan the shadow of the sacred wimple. But when she too was to the world returned against her wishes and against good usage, of the heart's veil she never was divested. Thus unto me she spake, and then began. Singing and in singing vanished, as through deep water something heavy, my sight, that followed her as long a time as it was possible, when it had lost her turn round unto the mark of more desire. And holy unto Beatrice reverted, but she such lightnings flashed into mine eyes, that at the first my sight endured it not. And this in questioning more backward made me. Paradiso canto if. Between two viands equally removed and tempting, a free man would die of hunger ere either he could bring unto his teeth. So would a lamb between the ravenings of two fierce wolves stand fearing both alike, and so would stand a dog between two doves. And if I held my peace myself, I blame not impelled in equal measure by my doubts, since it must be so, nor do I commend. I held my peace, but my desire was painted upon my face unquestioning with that more fervent far than by articulate speech. Beatrice did as Daniel had done relieving Nebuchadnezzar from the wrath which rendered him unjustly merciless. Thou art guest, if good will be permanent, the violence of others, for what reason doth it decrease the measure of my merit? Again for doubting furnish the occasion souls seeming to return unto the stars, according to the sentiment of Plato. These are the questions which upon thy wish are thrusting equally, and therefore first will I treat that which hath the most of gall. He of the Seraphim most absorbed in God, Moses, and Samuel, and whichever John thou mayst select, I say, and even Mary, have not in any other heaven their seats than have those spirits that just appeared to thee, nor of existence more or fewer years. But all make beautiful the primal circle and of sweet life in different degrees, by feeling more or less the eternal breath. They showed themselves here, not because allotted this sphere has been to them, but to give sign of the celestial which is least exalted. To speak thus is adapted to your mind, since only through the sense it apprehendeth what then it worthy makes of intellect. On this account the scripture condescends unto your faculties, and feet and hands to God attributes, and means something else. And holy church under an aspect human Gabriel and Michael represent to you, and him who made Tobias whole again. That which Timaeus argues of the soul doth not resemble that which here is seen, because it seems that as he speaks he thinks. He says the soul unto its star returns, believing it to have been severed thence whenever nature gave it as a form. Perhaps his doctrine is of other guise than the words sound, and possibly may be with meaning that is not to be derided. If he doth mean that to these wheels return the honor of their influence and the blame, perhaps his bow doth hit upon some truth. This principle ill understood once warped the whole world nearly, till it went astray invoking Jove and Mercury and Mars. The other doubt which doth disquiet thee less venom has, for its malevolence could never lead the other way from me. That as unjust our justice should appear in eyes of mortals, is an argument of faith, and not of sin heretical. But still that your perception may be able to thoroughly penetrate this verity, as thou desirest, I will satisfy thee. If it be violence when he who suffers cooperates not with him who uses force, these souls were not on that account excused. For will is never quenched unless it will, but operates as nature doth in fire if violence a thousand times distort it. Hence, if it yieldeth more or less, it seconds the force and these have done so, having power of turning back unto the holy place. 
if there will had been perfect like to that which Lawrence fast upon his greed air and held unmutious made severe to his own hand. It would have urged them back along the road whence they were dragged, as soon as they were free, but such a solid will is all too rare. And by these words, if thou hast gathered them as thou shouldst do, the argument is refuted that would have still annoyed thee many times. But now another passage runs across before thine eyes, and such that by thyself thou couldst not thread it ere thou wouldst be weary. And then thou from Picarda mightst have heard Costanza kept affection for the veil, so that she seemeth here to contradict me. Many times, brother, has it come to pass, that, to escape from peril, with reluctance that has been done it was not right to do. And as Alcmain, who, being by his father thereto entreated, his own mother slew not to lose pity pitiless became. At this point I desire thee to remember that force with will come mingles, and they cause that the offences cannot be excused. Will absolute consenteth not to evil, but in so far consenteth as it fears, if it refrain, to fall into more harm. Such was the flowing of the holy river that issued from the fount whence springs all truth is put to rest my wishes one and all. O love of the first lover, O divine! That I forthwith, whose speech inundates me and warms me so, it more and more revives me. My own affection is not so profound as to suffice in rendering grace for grace let him who sees and can there to respond. Well, I perceive that never sated is our intellect unless the truth illumit, beyond which nothing true expands itself. It rests therein, as wild beast in his lair, when it attains it, and it can attain it, if not, then each desire would frustrate be. Therefore springs up, in fashion of a shoot, dot at the foot of truth, and this is nature, which to the top from height to height impels us. This doth invite me, this assurance give me with reverence, lady, to inquire of you another truth, which is obscure to me. Beatrice gazed upon me with her eyes full of the sparks of love, and so divine, that, overcome my power, I turned my back. Paradiso canto v. Marvel thou not there it for this proceeds from perfect sight, which as it apprehends to the good apprehended moves its feet. Well, I perceive how is already shining into thine intellect the eternal light, that only seen in candles always love. And if some other thing your love seduce, tis nothing but a vestige of the same, ill understood, which there is shining through. This canto thus did Beatrice begin, and, as a man who breaks not off his speech, continued thus her holy argument. Most highly is the freedom of the will wherewith the creatures of intelligence both all and only were and are endowed. Now wilt thou see, if thence thou reasonest, the high worth of a vow, if it he made so that when thou consentest God consents. For, closing between God and man the compact, a sacrifice is of this treasure made such as I say, and made by its own act. What can be rendered then as compensation? Thinkst thou to make good use of what thou hast offered? With gains ill-gotten thou wouldst do good deed. Now art thou certain of the greater point, but because holy church in this dispenses, which seems against the truth which I have shown thee, behoves thee still to sit a while at table, because the solid food which thou hast taken requireth further aid for thy digestion. Open thy mind to that which I reveal, and fix it there within, for it is not knowledge, the having heard without retaining it. In the essence of this sacrifice, two things convene together, and the one is that of which tis made, the other is the agreement. This last forevermore is cancelled not unless complied with, and concerning this with such precision has above been spoken. Therefore it was enjoined upon the Hebrews to offer still, though sometimes what was offered might be commuted, as thou oughtst to know. The other, which is known to thee as matter, may well indeed be such that one there's not if it for other matter be exchanged. But let none shift the burden on his shoulder at his arbitrament, without the turning both of the white and of the yellow key. And every permutation deem as foolish, if in the substitute the thing relinquished, as the four is in six, be not contained. 
Therefore, whatever thing has so great weight and value that it drags down every balance cannot be satisfied with other spending. Let mortals never take a vow and just be faithful and not blind in doing that, as Jephthah was in his first offering. More Bazim to say, I have done wrong, and to do worse by keeping and as foolish thou the great leader of the Greeks will find. Whence wept Iphigenia her fair face, and made for her both wise and simple weep, who heard such kind of worship spoken of. Christians, be ye more serious in your movements, be ye not like a feather at each wind, and think not every water washes you. Ye have the Old and the New Testament, and the pastor of the church who guideth you, let this suffice you unto your salvation. If evil appetite cry out else to you, be ye as men, and not as silly sheep, so that the Jew among you may not mock you. Thus be addressed to me even as I write it, then all desireful turned herself again to that part where the world is most alive. Her silence and her change of countenance silence imposed upon my eager mind that had already in advance new questions. And as an arrow that upon the mark strikes ere the bowstring quiet hath become, so did we speed into the second realm. My lady there so joyful I beheld, as into the brightness of the heaven she entered, more luminous there at the planet grew. Now as in a fish pond which is pure and tranquil, the fishes draw to that which from without comes in such fashion that their food they deem it. So I beheld more than a thousand splendors drawing towards us, and in each was her. Lo, oh, this is she who shall increase our love. And as each one was coming unto us, full of beatitude, the shade was seen by the effulgence clear that issued from it. Think, reader, if what here is just beginning no farther should proceed, how thou wouldst have an agonizing need of knowing more. And of thyself felt see how I from these was in desire of hearing their conditions, as they unto mine eyes were manifest. Thus by some one among those holy spirits was spoken, and by Beatrice. Speak, speak securely, and believe them even as gods. This said I in direction of the light which first had spoken to me whence it became by far more loosened than it was before. Even as the sun, that doth conceal himself by too much light, when heat has worn away the tempering influence of the vapors dense. By greater rapture thus concealed itself in its own radiance the figure saintly, and thus close, close and folded answered me. And fashion as the following canto sings. Two hundred years and more the bird of God in the extreme of Europe held itself, near to the mountains whence it issued first. And under shadow of the sacred plumes it governed there the world from hand to hand, and changing thus, upon mine own alighted. Caesar I was, and am Justinian, who by the will of primal love I feel took from the laws the useless and redundant. And heir unto the work I was attend, one nature to exist in Christ, not more believed, and with such faith was I contented. But blessed Agapetus, he who was the supreme pastor, to the faith sincere pointed me out the way by words of his. Him I believed, and what was his assertion I now see clearly, even as thou ceased each contradiction to be false and true. As soon as with the church I moved my feet, God in his grace it pleased with this high task to inspire me, and I gave me wholly to it. And to my Belisarius I commended the arms, to which was heaven's right hand so joined it was a signal that I should repose. Now here too the first question terminates my answer, but the character thereof constrains me to continue with a sequel. In order that thou see with how great reason men move against the standard sacrosanct, both who appropriate and who oppose it. Behold how great a power has made it worthy of reverence, beginning from the hour when Pallas died to give it sovereignty. Thou knowest it made in Alba its abode three hundred years and upward, till at last the three to three fought for it yet again. Thou knowest what it achieved from Sabine wrong down to Lucretia's sorrow, and seven kings o'er coming round about the neighboring nations. Thou knowest what it achieved, borne by the Romans illustrious against Brennus, against Paris, against the other princes and confederates. 
Torquo Estens on Quintus, who from Lox unkempt was named Desai and Fabii, received the fame I willingly imbo. It struck to earth the pride of the Arabians, who, following Hannibal, had passed across the Alpine ridges, Po, from which thou glidest. Beneath it triumphed while they yet were young Pompey and Scipio, unto the hill beneath which thou wast born it bitter seemed. That near unto the time when heaven had willed to bring the whole world to its mood serene, did Caesar by the will of Rome assume it. What it achieved from Var unto the Rhine, Iser beheld unsown, beheld the Seine, and every valley whence the Rhone is filled. What it achieved when it had left Ravenna, and left the Rubicon, was such a flight that neither tongue nor pen could follow it. Round towards Spain it wheeled its legions, then towards Durazzo, and Parsalia smote that to the Calid Nile was felt the pain. Then Tendras on the Simois, whence it started, it saw again, and there where Hector lies, and ill for Ptolemy then roused itself. From thence it came like lightning upon Juba, then wheeled itself again into your west, where the Pompeian clarion it heard. From what it wrought with the next standard bear, Brutus and Cassius howl and hell together, and Modena and Perugia dull and were. Still doth the mournful Cleopatra weep because thereof, who, fleeing from before it, took from the adder sudden and black death. With him it ran even to the Red Sea shore, with him it placed the world in so great peace that unto Janus was his temple closed. But what the standard that has made me speak achieved before, and after should achieve throughout the mortal realm that lies beneath it, becometh in appearance mean and dim, if in the hand of the third Caesar seen with eye unclouded and affection pure. Because the living justice that inspires me granted it, in the hand of him I speak of the glory of doing vengeance for its wrath. Now here attend to what I answer thee later it ran with Titus to do vengeance upon the vengeance of the ancient sin. And when the tooth of Lombardy had bidden the holy church, then underneath its wings did Charlemagne victorious succor her. Now hast thou power to judge of such as those whom I accused above, and of their crimes, which are the cause of all your miseries. To the public standard one the yellow lilies opposes, the other claims it for a party so that tis hard to see which sins the most. But let the Gabellines ply their handicraft beneath some other standard for this ever ill follows he who it had just as parts. And let not this new Charles er strike it down, beyond his gulfs, but let him fear the talons that from a nobler lion strip the fell. Already oftentimes the sons have wept the father's crime, and let him not believe that God will change his scutcheon for the lilies. And whensoever the desires mount thither, thus deviating must perforce the rays of the true love less vividly mount upward. But in commensuration of our wages with our desert is portion of our joy, because we see them neither less nor greater. Herein doth living justice sweeten so affection in us, that forevermore it cannot warp to any iniquity. Voices diverse make up sweet melodies, so in this life of ours the seats diverse render sweet harmony among these spheres. And in the compass of this present pearl shineth the sheen of Romeo, of whom the grand and beauteous work was ill rewarded. But the proven calls who against him wrought, they have not laughed, and therefore ill goes he who makes his hurt of the good deeds of others. Four daughters, and each one of them a queen, had Raymond Beringer, and this for him did Romeo, a poor man and a pilgrim. And then malicious words incited him to summon to a reckoning this just man, who rendered to him seven and five for ten. Then he departed poor and stricken in years, and if the world could know the heart he had in begging bit by bit his livelihood. Ozana Sanctus Deus Sabbath Superlustrans clarity to a fellas's ain's horomoth. In this wise, to his melody returning, this substance, upon which a double light doubles itself, was seen by me to sing. And to their dance this and the others moved, and in the manner of swift erring sparks veiled themselves from me with a sudden distance. Doubting was I, and saying, Within me, tell her. Tell my lady, who slakes my thirst with her sweet effluences.
and yet the reverence which doth lord it over the whole of me only by the end ice by me again like unto one who drowses sure while did beatrice endure me thus and she began lighting me with a smile such as would make one happy in the fire but i will speedily thy mind unloose and do thou listen for these words of mine of a great doctrine will a present make thee by not enduring on the power that wills curb for his good that man who ne'er was born damning himself damned all his progeny whereby the human species down below lay sick for many centuries in great error till to descend it pleased the word of god to where the nature which from its own maker estranged itself he joined to him in person by the sole act of his eternal love now unto what is said direct thy sight this nature when united to its maker such as created was sincere and good but by itself alone was banished forth from paradise because it turned aside out of the way of truth and of its life therefore the penalty the cross held out if measured by the nature thus assumed none ever yet with so great justice stung and none was ever of so great injustice considering who the person was that suffered within whom such a nature was contracted from one act therefore issued things diverse to god and to the jews one death was pleasing earth trembled at it and the heaven was opened it should no longer now seem difficult to thee when it is said that a just vengeance by a just corp was afterward avenged but now do i behold thy mind entangled from thought to thought within a knot from which with great desire it waits to free itself thou sayest well discern i what i hear but it is hidden from me why god willed for our redemption only this one mode buried remaineth brother this decree unto the eyes of every one whose nature is in the flame of love not yet adult Verily in Nesmach as at this mark one gazes long and little is discerned, wherefore this mode was worthiest will I say. Goodness divine, which from itself doth spurn all envy, burning in itself so sparkles that the eternal beauties it unfolds. Whither from this immediately distills has afterwards no end, for ne'er removed is its impression when it sets its seal. Whither from this immediately rains down is wholly free because it is not subject unto the influences of novel things the more conformed thereto the more it pleases for the blessed ardour that irradiates all things and that most like itself is most vivacious with all of these things has advantage been the human creature and if one be wanting from his nobility he needs must fall tis sin alone which doth disfranchise him and render him unlike the good supreme so that he little with its light is blanched and to his dignity no more returns unless he fill up where transgression empties with righteous pains for criminal delights your nature when it sins so utterly in its own seed out of these dignities even as out of paradise was driven nor could itself recover if thou noticed with nicest subtlety by any way except by passing one of these two fords either that god through clemency alone had pardoned granted or that man himself had satisfaction for his folly made fix now thine eye deep into the abyss of the eternal counsel to my speech as far as may be fastened steadfastly far as he disobeying thought to rise and for this reason man has been from power of satisfying by himself excluded therefore it god behoved in his own ways man to restore unto his perfect life i say in one or else in both of them but since the action of the doer is so much more grateful as it more presents the goodness of the heart from which it issues goodness divine that doth imprint the world has been contented to proceed by each and all its ways to lift you up again nor twixt the first day and the final night such high and such magnificent proceeding by one or by the other was or shall be for god more bounteous was himself to give to make man able to uplift himself than if he only of himself had pardoned and all the other modes were insufficient for justice were it not the son of god himself had humbled to become incarnate now to fill fully each desire of thine return i to elucidate one place in order that thou there mayst see as i do thou sayst i see the air i see the fire 
the water and the earth and all their mixtures come to corruption and short while endure. And these things notwithstanding were created, therefore if that which I have said were true, they should have been secure against corruption. The angels, brother, and the land sincere in which thou art created may be called just as they are in their entire existence. But all the elements which thou hast named, and all those things which out of them are made by a created virtue are informed. Created was the matter which they have created was the informing influence within these stars that round about them go. The soul of every brute and of the plants by its potential temperament attracts the ray and motion of the holy light. But your own life immediately inspires supreme beneficence, and enamors it so with herself, it evermore desires her. And thou from this mayst argue furthermore your resurrection, if thou think again how human flesh was fashioned at that time. The world used in its peril to believe that the fair Cypria delirious love rayed out in the third epistical turning. Wherefore not only unto her paid honor of sacrifices and of votive cry the ancient nations in the ancient earth, but both Dion honored they and Cupid, that as her mother, this one as her son, and said that he had sat in Ditto's lap. And they from her, whence I beginning take, took the denomination of a star that woos the sun, now following, now in front. I was not aware of our ascending to it, but of our being in it gave full faith my lady whom I saw more beauteous grow. And as within a flame a spark is seen, and as within a voice a voice discerned, when one is steadfast and one comes and goes. Within that light beheld I other lamps move in a circle, speeding more and less, methinks in measure of their inward vision. From a cold cloud descended never winds, or visible or not, so rapidly they would not laggard unimpeded seem. To any one who had those lights divine seen come towards us, leaving the duration begun at first in the high seraphim, and behind those that most in front appeared sounded. So that never since to hear again was I without desire. We turn round with the celestial princes, one gyre and one duration and one thirst, to whom thou in the world of old didst say. After these eyes of mine themselves had offered unto my lady reverently, and she content uncertain of herself had made them. Back to the light they turned, which so great promise made of itself, and Jay, who art thou? Was my voice imprinted with a great affection? Oh, how and how much I beheld it grow with a new joy that superadded was unto its joys as soon as I had spoken. My gladness keepeth me concealed from thee, which rayeth round about me, and doth hide me like as a creature swathed in its own silk. Much didst thou love me, and thou hadst good reason for had I been below, I should have shown thee somewhat beyond the foliage of my love. That left hand margin which doth bathe itself in Rhone when it is mingled with the sword give me for its lord awaited in due time. And that horn of Asunia, which is towned with Bari, with Gita and Katana, whence Tronto and Verdi in the sea disgorge. Already flashed upon my brow the crown of that dominion which the Danube waters after the German borders it abandons. And beautiful Trinacria, that is murky twixt Pacino and Peloro on the gulf which greatest scath from Eurus doth receive. Not through Typhus, but through nascent sulphur, would have awaited her own monarch still through me from Charles descended and from Rudolph. If evil lordship, that exasperates ever the subject populations, had not moved Palermo to the outcry of death. Death! And if my brother could but this foresee, the greedy poverty of Catalonia straight would he flee, that it might not molest him. For verily tis needful to provide, through him or other, so that on his bark already freighted no more freight be placed. Thou seest as I see it, the more grateful is it to me on this to hold I dear, that gazing upon God thou dost discern it. The good which all the realm thou art ascending turns on contents, maketh its providence to be a power within these bodies vast. And not alone the natures are foreseen within the mind that in itself is perfect, but they together with their preservation. 
For whatsoever thing this bow shoots forth falls foreordained unto an end foreseen, even as a shaft directed to its mark. If it were not, the heaven which thou dost walk would in such manner its effects produce, that they no longer would be arts, but ruins. This can't be, if the intelligences that keep these stars in motion are not maimed, and maimed the first that has not made them perfect. Wilt thou this truth have clearer made to thee? And I not so, for it is impossible that nature tire, I see in what is needful. When see again. Now say, would it be worse for men on earth were they not citizens? I reply. And here I ask no reason. And can they be so, if below they live not diversely unto offices diverse? No, if your master readeth well for you. Hence one is Solon born, another Xerxes, another Melchistic, and another he who, flying through the air, his son did lose. Revolving nature, which a signet is to mortal wax, doth practice well her art, but not one indistinguished from another. Thence happens it that Esau differeth than seed from Jacob, and Quirinus comes from Sire so vile that he is given to Mars. A generated nature its own way would always make like its progenitors, if providence divine were not triumphant. Now that which was behind thee is before thee, but that thou know that I with thee am pleased, with a corollary will I mantle thee. Evermore nature, if it fortune find discordant to it, like each other seed out of its region maketh evil thrift. And if the world below would fix its mind on the foundation which is laid by nature, pursuing that, could of the people good. But you unto religion wrench aside him who was born to gird him with the sword, and make a king of him who is for sermons. Beautiful Clements, after that thy Charles had me enlightened, he narrated to me the treacheries his seed should undergo. Be still and let the ears roll round. So I can only say, that lamentation legitimate shall follow on your wrongs, and of that holy light the life already had to the sun which fills it turned again, as to that good which for each thing sufficeth. Ah, souls deceived, and creatures impious, who from such good do turn away your hearts, directing upon vanity your foreheads. And now, behold, another of those splendors approached me, and its will to pleasure me it signified by brightening outwardly. The eyes of Beatrice, that fastened were upon me, as before, of dear assent to my desire assurance gave to me. Ah, bring swift compensation to my wish, thou blessed spirit. And give me proof that what I think in thee I can reflect, were it the light, that still was new to me, out of its depths, whence it before was singing, as one delighted to do good continued. Rises a hill, and mounts not very high, wherefrom descended formerly a torch that made upon that region great assault. Out of one root were born both I and it kinis was I called, and here I shine because the splendor of this star o'ercame me. But gladly to myself a cause I pardon of my allotment, and it does not grieve me which would perhaps seem strong unto your vulgar. Of this so loculent and precious jewel, which of our heaven is nearest unto me, great fame remained unto ere it die away. This hundredth year shall yet quintuple be. See if man ought to make him excellent, so that another life the first may leave. And thus thinks not the present multitude shut in by a dyche and to, nor yet for being scourged is penitent. But soon twill be that Padua and the marsh will change the water that vice in obeys, because the folk are stubborn against duty. And where the sile and cagnino join, one lordeth it, and goes with lofty head, for catching whom he now the net is making. Feltro, moreover, of her impious pastor shall weep the crime, which shall so monstrous be that for the like none ever entered Malta. Ample exceedingly would be the vet that of the furrers could hold the blood, and weary who should weigh it ounce by ounce. Of which this courteous priest shall make a gift to show himself a partisan, and such gifts will to the living of the land conform. Here it was silent, and it had the semblance of being turned elsewhere by the wheel on which it entered as it was before. The other joy, already known to me, became a thing transplendent in my sight, as a fine ruby smitten by the sun. 
Brute joy effulgence is acquired above, as here a smile, but down below, the shade outwardly darkens as the mind is sad. God seeth all things, and in him, blessed spirit, thy sight is. Said I, so that never will of his ken possibly from thee be hidden. Thy voice then, that forever makes the heavens glad, with the singing of those holy fires which of their six wings make themselves a cow. Forthwith its words began, that sea accepted which the earth and garlands. Between discordant shores against the sun extends so far, that it meridian makes where it was wont before to make the horizon. I was a dweller on that valley's shore twixt Ebro and Magra that with journey short doth from the Tuscan part the Genos. With the same sunset and same sunrise nearly sit Bagia and the city whence I was, that with its blood once made the harbour hot. Volga that people called me unto whom my name was known, and now with me this heaven prince itself, as I did once with it. For more the daughter of Belus never burned, offending both Sichius and Creusa, than I, so long as it became my locks. Nor yet that Rudadaphine, who deluded was by Demophon, nor yet Alcides when Yoli he in his heart had locked. And here is no repenting, but we smile, not at the fault which comes not back to mind, but at the power which ordered and foresaw. Here we behold the art that doth adorn with such affection, on the good discover whereby the world above turns that below. But that thou wholly satisfied mayst bear thy wishes hence which in this sphere are born, still farther to proceed behoveth me. Thou fain wouldst know who is within this life that here beside me thus is scintillating, even as a sunbeam in the limpid water. Then know thou that within there is at rest Rab, on being to our order joined, with her in its supremest grade to seal. Into this heaven, where ends the shadowy cone cast by your world before all other souls first of Christ's triumph was she taken up. Full meat it was to leave her in some heaven, even as a palm of the high victory which he acquired with one palm and the other. Because she favored the first glorious deed of Joshua upon the holy land, that little stirs the memory of the Pope. My city, which an offshoot is of him who first upon his maker turned his back, and whose ambition is so sorely wept, brings forth and scatters the accursed flower which both the sheep and lambs have led astray since it has turned the shepherd to a wolf. For this the evangel and the mighty doctors are derelict, and only the decretals so studied that it shows upon their margins. On this our pope and cardinals intent their meditations reach not Nazareth, there were his pinions Gabriel unfolded. But Vatican and the other parts elect of Rome, which have a cemetery been unto the soldiery that followed Peter. Looking into his son with all the love which each of them eternally breathes forth, the primal and unutterable power. But here before the mind or I revolves with so much order made, there can be none who this beholds without enjoying him. Lift up then, reader, to the lofty wheels with me thy vision straight unto that part where the one motion on the other strikes. And there begin to contemplate with joy that master's art, who in himself so loves it that never doth his eye depart therefrom. Behold how from that point goes branching off the oblique circle, which conveys the planets, to satisfy the world that calls upon them. And if their pathway were not thus inflected, much virtue in the heavens would be in vain, and almost every power below here dead. From the straight line distant more or less were the departure, much would wanting be above and underneath of mundane order. Remain now, reader, still upon thy bench, and thought pursuing that which is foretasted, if thou wouldst jock and be instead of weary. I set before thee henceforth feed thyself, for to itself diverteth all my care that theme whereof I have been made the scribe. The greatest of the ministers of nature, who with the power of heaven the world imprints and measures with his light the time for us. With that part which above is called to mind conjoined on the spirals was revolving, where each time earlier he presents himself. And I was with him, but of the ascending I was not conscious, saving as a man of a first thought is conscious ere it come. 
and Beatrice she who is seen to pass from good to better, and so suddenly that not by time her action is expressed. How lucent in herself must she have been? And what was in the sun wherein I entered, apparent not by color but by light? I, though I call on genius, art, and practice, can't so tell that it could be imagined, believe one can, and let him long to see it. And if our fantasies too lowly are for altitude so great, it is no marvel, since o'er the sun was never I could go. Such in this place was the fourth family of the High Father, who forever saints it, showing how he breathes forth and how begets. And Beatrice began, Give thanks, give thanks unto the Son of Angels, who to this sensible one has raised thee by his grace. Never was heart of mortal so disposed to worship, nor to give itself to God with all its gratitude was it so ready. As at those words did I myself become and all my love was so absorbed in him, that in oblivion Beatrice was eclipsed. Nor this displeased her, but she smiled at it so that the splendor of her laughing eyes my single mind on many things divided. Lights many saw I, vivid and triumphant, make us a center and themselves a circle more sweet in voice than luminous in aspect. Thus girt about the daughter of Latona we sometimes see, when pregnant is there, so that it holds the thread which makes her zone. Within the court of heaven, whence I return, are many jewels found, so fair and precious they can't be transported from the realm. And of them was the singing of those lights. Who takes not wings that he may fly up thither, the tidings thence may from the dumb await. As soon as singing thus those burning suns had round about us whirled themselves three times, like unto stars neighboring the steadfast poles. Ladies they seemed, not from the dance released, but who stop short in silence listening till they have gathered the new melody. Within the multiplied is so resplendent that it conducts the upward by that stair, where without rescinding none descends. Who should deny the wine out of his vial unto thy thirst, and liberty were not except as water which descends not seaward? Fain wouldst thou know with what plants is in Florida this garland that encircles with delight the lady fair who makes thee strong for heaven? Of the lambs was I of the holy flock which Dominic conducteth by a road where well one fattens if he strayeth not. He who is nearest to me on the right my brother and master was, and he Albertus is of Cologne, I Thomas of Aquinum. If thou of all the others wouldst be certain, follow behind my speaking with thy sight upward along the blessed garland, turning. That next effulgence issues from the smile of Gratian, who assisted both the courts in such wise that it pleased in paradise. The other which nearby adorns our choir that Peter was who, in as the poor widow, offered his treasure unto holy church. The fifth light that among us is the fairest, breathes forth from such a love, that all the world below is greedy to learn tidings of it. Within it is the lofty mind, where knowledge so deep was put, that, if the true be true, to see so much there never rose a second. Thou seest next the luster of the taper, which in the flesh below looked most within the angelic nature and its ministry. Within that other little light is smiling the advocate of the Christian centuries, out of whose rhetoric Augustine was furnished. Now if thou trainest thy mind's eye along from light to light pursuant of my praise, with thirst already of the eighth thou waitest. By seeing every good therein exults the sainted soul, which the fallacious world makes manifest to him who listeneth well. The body whence twas hunted forth is lying down in sealed oro, and from martyrdom and banishment it came unto this peace. See farther onward flame the burning breath of Isidore, of Beda, and of Richard who was in contemplation more than man. This whence to me returneth thy regard, the light is of a spirit unto whom in his grave meditations death seemed slow. Then, as a horologe that calleth us what time the bride of God is rising up with maidens to her spouse that he may love her, where in one part the other draws and urges, Tink, Tink, resounding with so sweet a note that swells with love the spirit well disposed. 
Thus, I beheld the glorious wheel move round, and render voice to voice in modulation and sweetness that cannot be comprehended. Accepting there where joy is made eternal. Verdi so canto she. O thou insensate care of mortal man, how inconclusive are the syllogisms that make thee beat thy wings in downward flight. One after laws owned one two aphorisms was going, and one following the priesthood, and one two reign by force or sophistry. And one in theft, and one in state affairs, one in the pleasures of the flesh involved wearied himself, one gave himself to eat. When I from all these things emancipate, with Beatrice above there in the heavens with such exceeding glory was received. When each one had returned unto that point within the circle where it was before, it stood as in a candlestick a candle. And from within the effulgence which at first had spoken unto me, I heard begin smiling while it more luminous became. Thou doubtest, and wouldst have me too resift in language so extended and so open my speech, that to thy sense it may be plain. Where just before I said, where well one fattens, and where I said, there never rose a second, and here tis needful we distinguish well. The providence, which governeth the world with counsel, wherein all created vision is vanquished ere it reach unto the bottom, so that towards her own beloved might go the bride of him who, uttering a loud cry, espoused her with his consecrated blood. Self confident, and unto him more faithful, two princes did ordain in her behoof, which on this side and that might be her guide. The one was all seraphical and ardor, the other by his wisdom upon earth a splendor was of light cherubical. One will I speak of, for of both is spoken and praising one, whichever may be taken, because unto one end their labors were. Between Tupano and the stream that falls down from the hill elect of blessed Ebold, a fertile slope of lofty mountain hangs, from which Prugia feels the cold and heat through Porta's soul and behind it weep Galdu and Nochera their grievous yoke. From out that slope, there where it breaketh most its steepness, rose upon the world a sun as this one does sometimes from out the Ganges. Therefore let him who speaketh of that place say not Assesi, for he would say little, but Orient, if he properly would speak. He was not yet far distant from his rising before he had begun to make the earth some comfort from his mighty virtue feel. For he and his father's wrath incurred for a certain dame, to whom, as unto death, the gate of pleasure no one doth unlock, and was before his spiritual court the Coram Petra unto her united then day by day more fervently he loved her. She reft of her first husband, scorned, obscure, one thousand and one hundred years and more, waited without a suitor till he came. Not it availed to hear. The wither Miklas found her unmoved at sounding of his voice he who struck terror into all the world. Not it availed being constant and undaunted, so that, when Mary still remained below, she mounted up with Christ upon the cross. But that too darkly I may not proceed, Francis, and poverty for these two lovers take thou hence forward in my speech diffuse. Their concord and their joyous semblances, the love, the wonder, and the sweet regard they made to be the cause of holy thoughts, so much so that the venerable Bernard first bared his feet, and after so great peace ran, and in running thought himself too slow. A wealth unknown, a veritable good. Giles bears his feet, and bears his feet Sylvester behind the bridegroom, so doth please the bride. Then goes his way that father and that master, he and his lady and that family which now was girding on the humble court. More cowardice of heart weighed down his brow at being son of Peter Bernardin, nor for appearing marvelously scorned. But regally his hard determination too innocent he opened, and from him received the primal seal upon his order. After the people mendicant increased behind this man, whose admirable life better and glory of the heavens were sung. Incoronated with a second crown was through Honorius by the eternal spirit the holy purpose of this archimandrite. And when he had, through thirst of martyrdom, 
and the proud presence of the Sultan preach Christ and the others who came after him. And finding for conversion to unwreck the folk, and not to tarry there in vain, returned to fruit of the italic grass. On the rude rock twixt Tiber and the Arno from Christ did he receive the final seal, which during two whole years his members bore. When he, who chose him unto so much good, was pleased to draw him up to the reward that he had merited by being lowly. Unto his friars, as to the rightful heirs, his most dear lady did he recommend, and bade that they should love her faithfully. And from her bosom the illustrious soul wished to depart, returning to its realm, and for its body wished no other beer. Think now what man was he, who was a fit companion over the high seas to keep the bark of Peter to its proper bearings. And this man was our patriarch, hence whoever doth follow him as he commands can see that he is laden with good merchandise. But for new pasturage his flock has grown so greedy, that it is impossible they be not scattered over fields diverse. And in proportion as his sheep remote and vagabond go farther off from him, more void of milk return they to the fold. Verily some there are that fear a hurt, and keep close to the shepherd but so few, that little cloth doth furnish forth their hoods. Now if my utterance be not indistinct, if thine own hearing hath attentive been, if thou recall to mind what I have said, in part contented shall thy wishes be, for thou shalt see the plant that's chipped away, and the rebuke that lieth in the words. Soon as the blessed flame had taken up the final word to give it utterance, began the holy millstone to revolve. And in its gyre had not turned wholly round, before another in a ring enclosed it, and motion joined to motion, song to song. Song that as greatly doth transcend our muses, our sirens, and those dulcet clarions, as primal splendor that which is reflected. And as our span athwart a tender cloud two rainbows parallel and like in color, when Juno to her handmaid gives command. The one without born of the one within, like to the speaking of that vagrant one whom love consumed as doth the son of vapors. And make the people hear, through covenant God set with Noah, presageful of the world that shall no more be covered with a flood. In such wise of those sempiternal roses the garlands twain encompassed us about, and thus the outer to the inner are answered. After the dance, and other grand rejoicings, both of the singing, and the flaming forth effulgence with effulgence blithe and tender. Together at once, with one accord had stopped, even as the eyes, at, as volition moves them, must needs together shut and lift themselves. Out of the heart of one of the new lights there came a voice, that needle to the star made me appear in turning thitherward. Tis right, where one is, to bring in the other, that, as they were united in their warfare, together likewise may their glory shine. The soldiery of Christ, which it had cost so dear to arm again behind the standard moved slow and doubtful and in numbers few. When the emperor who reigneth evermore provided for the host that was in peril, through grace alone, and not that it was worthy. And as was said, he to his bride brought succor with champions twain, at whose deed, at whose word the straggling people were together drawn. Within that region where the sweet west wine rises, to open the new leaves, where with Europe is seen to clothe herself afresh. Not far off from the beating of the waves, behind which in his long career the sun sometimes conceals himself from every man, is situate the fortunate Kalahora, under protection of the mighty shield in which the lion subject his unsovereign. Therein was born the amorous paramour of Christian faith, the athlete consecrate, kind to his own and cruel to his foe. And when it was created was his mind replete with such a living energy, that in his mother her it made prophetic. As soon as the espousals were complete between him and the faith at Holy Font, where they with mutual safety dowered each other, the woman, who for him had given assent, saw in a dream the admirable fruit that issue would from him and from his heirs. And that he might be construed as he was, 
a spirit from this place went forth to name him with his possessive whose he holy was. Dominic was he called and him I speak of even as of the husbandman whom Christ elected to his garden to assist him. And by unservant sooth he seemed of Christ, for the first love made manifest in him was the first counsel that was given by Christ. Silent and wakeful many a time was he discovered by his nurse upon the ground, as if he would have said, For this I came. O thou his father, Felix, verily, O thou his mother, verily, Joanna, if this interpret it means as is said, not for the world which people toil for now in following Austin's son Tadia, but through his longing after the true manna. He in short time became so great a teacher, that he began to go about the vineyard, which fadeth soon, if faithless be the dresser. And of the sea, that once was more benignant unto the righteous poor, not through itself, but him who sits there on degenerates. Not to dispense or two or three for six, not any fortune of first vacancy, non decimus qui sunt pauperum dei. He asked for, but against the errant world, permission to do battle for the seed, of which these four and twenty plants surround thee. Then with the doctrine and the will together, with office apostolical he moved, like torrent which some lofty vein outpresses. And in among the shoots heretical his impetus with greater fury smote, wherever the resistance was the greatest. Of him were made thereafter divers runnels, whereby the garden Catholic is watered, so that more living its plantations stand. If such the one wheel of the bigot was, in which the holy church itself defended, and in the field its civic battle won, truly full manifest should be to thee the excellence of the other, unto whom Thomas so courteous was before my coming. But still the orbit, which the highest part of its circumference made, is derelict so that the mold is where was once the crust. His family that had straight forward moved with feet upon his footprints, are turned round so that they set the point upon the heel. And soon aware they will be of the harvest of this bad husbandry, when shall the terrors complain the granary is taken from them? Yet say I, he who searcheth leaf by leaf our volume through, would still some page discover where he could read, I am as I am wont. It will not be from Casal nor Aquasparta from whence comes such unto the written word that one avoids it, and the other narrows. Bonaventura of Bagnorge's life am I, who always in great offices postponed considerations sinister. Here are Illuminado and Augustino, who of the first barefooted beggars were that with accord the friends of God became. You of Saint Victor is among them here, and Peter Mangador, and Peter of Spain, who down below in volumes twelve is shining. Nathan the seer, and metropolitan Trisustum, and Anselmus, and Donatus, who deigned to lay his hand to the first art. Here is Rabanus, and beside me here shines the Calabrian abbot Joachim, he with the spirit of prophecy endowed. To celebrate so great a paladin have moved me the impassioned courtesy and the discreet discourses of Friar Thomas, let him imagine, who would well conceive what now I saw, and let him while I speak retain the image as a steadfast rock. The fifteen stars, that in their diverse regions the sky enliven with a light so great that it transcends all clusters of the air. Let him the way and imagine unto which our vault of heaven sufficeth night and day, so that in turning of its pole it fails not. Let him the mouth imagine of the horn that in the point beginneth of the axis round about which the primal wheel revolves. To have fashioned of themselves two signs in heaven like unto that which Meno's daughter made the moment when she felt the frost of death. And one to have its rays within the other, and both to whirl themselves in such a manner that one should forward go the other backward. And he will have some shadowing forth of that true constellation and the double dance that circled round the point at which I was. Because it is as much bond our wont, as swifter than the motion of the channel moved the heaven that all the rest outspeeds. They're saying they neither Bacchus nor Apollo, but in the divine nature persons three, and in one person the divine and human. 
the singing and the dance fulfilled their measure and unto us those holy lights gave need growing in happiness from care to care then broke the silence of those saints concord in the light in which that admirable life of god's own mendicant was told to me into that bosom thou believest whence was drawn the rib to form the beauteous cheek whose taste to all the world is costing dear and into that which by the lance transfixed before and since such satisfaction made that it weighs down the balance of all sin later of light it has to human nature been lawful to possess was all infused by the same power that both of them created and hence at what i said above dost wonder when i narrated that no second had the good which in the fifth light is enclosed now ope thine eyes to what i answer thee and thou shalt see thy creed and my discourse fit in the truth a centre in a circle that which can die and that which dieth not are nothing but the splendour of the idea which by his love our lord brings into being because that living light which from its fount effulgent flows so that it dissonates not from him nor from the love in them entrained through its own goodness reunites its rays in nine subsistences as in a mirror itself eternally remaining one thence it descends to the last potencies downward from act to act becoming such that only brief contingencies it makes and these contingencies i hold to be things generated which the heaven produces by its own motion with seed and without neither their wax nor that which tempers it remains immutable and hence beneath the ideal signet more and less shines through therefore it happens that the self-same tree after its kind bears worse and better fruit and ye are born with characters diverse if in perfection tempered were the wax and were the heaven in its supremest virtue the brilliance of the seal would all appear but nature gives it ever more deficient in the like manner working as the artist who has the skill of art on hand that trembles if then the fervent love the vision clear of primal virtue do dispose and seal perfection absolute is there acquired thus was of old the earth created worthy of all and every animal perfection and thus the virgin was impregnate me so that thine own opinion i commend that human nature never yet has been nor will be what it was in those two persons now if no farther forth i should proceed then in what way was he without a peer would be the first beginning of thy words but that may well appear what now appears not think who he was and what occasion moved him to make request when it was told him asked i've not so spoken that thou canst not see clearly he was a king who asked for wisdom that he might be sufficiently a king it was not to know the number and which are the motors here above or if necess with a contingent ear necess make non cs der prima mutamess or if in semicircle can be made triangle so that it have no right angle Whence, if thou notest this and what I said, a regal prudence is that peerless seeing in which the shaft of my intention strikes. And if on rose thou turnest thy clear eyes, thou'lt see that it has reference alone to kings who are many, and the good are rare. With this distinction take thou what I said, and thus it can consist with thy belief of the first father and of our delight. And let shall this be always to thy feet, to make thee like a weary man move slowly both to the yes and no thou seest not for very low among the fools is he who affirms without distinction or denies as well in one as in the other case because it happens that full often bends current opinion in the false direction and then the feelings bind the intellect far more than uselessly he leaves the shore since he returneth not the same he went who fishes for the truth and has no skill and in the world proofs manifest thereof parmenides melissus brissus are and many who went on and knew not whither thus did sabellius arius and those fools who have been even as swords unto the scriptures in rendering distorted their straight faces nor yet shall people be too confident in judging even as he is who doth count the corn in field or ever it be ripe for I have seen all winter long the thorn first show itself intractable and fierce, and after bear the rose upon its top. 
and I have seen a ship direct on swift run o'er the sea throughout its course entire, to perish at the harbour's mouth at last. Let not Dame Bertha nor Sir Martin think, seeing one steal, another offering make, to see them in the arbitrum and divine. From center unto rim, from rim to center, and a round vase, the water moves itself, as from without tis struck or from within. Into my mind upon a sudden dropped what I am saying, at the moment when silent became the glorious life of Thomas. Because of the resemblance that was born of his discourse and that of Beatrice, whom, after him, it pleased thus to begin. Declare unto him if the light wherewith blossoms your substance shall remain with you eternally the same that it is now. That is by a greater gladness urged and drawn they who are dancing in a ring sometimes uplift their voices and their motions quicken. So at that orison devout and prompt, the holy circles a new joy displayed in their revolving and their wondrous song. Uzu lamenteth him that here we die that we may live above has never there seen the refreshment of the eternal rain. The one and two and three who ever liveth, and reigneth ever and three and two and one, not circumscribed and all things circumscribing. Three several times was chanted by each one among those spirits, with such melody that for all merit it were just reward. And in the luster most divine of all the lesser ring, I heard a modest voice such as perhaps the angels was too merry. Its brightness is proportioned to the ardor, the ardor to the vision, and the vision equals what grace it has above its worth. When, glorious and sanctified, our flesh is resumed, then shall our persons be more pleasing by their being all complete. For will increase what it bestows on us of light gratuitous, the good supreme light which enables us to look on him. Therefore the vision must perforce increase, increase the ardor which from that is kindled, increase the radiance which from this proceeds. But even as a coal that sends forth flame, and by its vivid whiteness overpowers it so that its own appearance it maintains. Thus the effulgence that surrounds us now shall be o'erpowered in aspect by the flesh, which still today the earth doth cover up. So sudden and alert appeared to me both one and the other choir to say amen, that well they showed desire for their dead bodies. Nor soul for them perhaps, but for the mothers, the fathers, and the rest who had been dear or ever they became eternal flames. And lo! All round about of equal brightness arose a luster over what was there, like an horizon that is clearing up. And as it rise of early eve begin along the welkin new appearances, so that the sight seems real and unreal. It seemed to me that new subsistences began there to be seen, and make a circle outside the other two circumferences. Very sparkling of the Holy Spirit, how sudden and incandescent it became unto mine eyes, that vanquished bore it not. But Beatrice so beautiful and smiling appeared to me that with the other sights that followed not my memory I must leave her. Then to uplift themselves mine eyes resumed the power, and I beheld myself translated to higher salvation with my lady only. Well was I aware that I was more uplifted by the enkindled smiling of a star, that seemed to me more ruddy than its wont. With all my heart, and in that dialect which is the same in all, such holocaust to God I made as the new grace beseemed. And not yet from my bosom was exhausted the ardor of sacrifice, before I knew this offering was accepted and auspicious. For with so great a luster and so red splendors appeared to me in twofold rays, I say. Even as distinct with less and greater lights glimmers between the two poles of the world the galaxy that maketh wise men doubt. Thus constellated in the depths of Mars, those rays describe the venerable sign that quadrants joining in a circle make. Here doth my memory overcome my genius, for on that cross as leaven gleamed forth Christ, so that I cannot find in sample worry. But he who takes his cross and follows Christ again will pardon me what I omit, seeing in that aurora light in Christ. From horn to horn and twixt the top and base lights were in motion, brightly scintillating as they together met and passed each other. Thus level and aslant and swift and slow we here behold renewing still the sight, 
the particles of bodies long and short. Across the sunbeam move, wherewith is listed sometimes the shade, which for their own defense people with cunning and with art contrive. And as a lute and harp, accordant strung with many strings, a dulcet tinkling make to him by whom the notes are not distinguished. So from the lights that there to me appeared I gathered through the cross a melody, which wrapped me, not distinguishing the hymn. Well was I where it was of lofty laud, because there came to me. As unto him who hears and comprehends not, so much in amort I became therewith, that until then there was not anything that here had fettered me with such sweet bonds. Perhaps my word appears somewhat too bold, postponing the delight of those fair eyes, into which gazing my desire has rest. But who bethinks him that the living seals of every beauty grow in power ascending, and that I there had not turned round to those? Can me excuse, if I myself accuse to excuse myself, and see that I speak truly, for here the holy joy is not disclosed, because ascending it becomes more pure. A will benign in which reveals in self ever the love that righteously inspires, as in that iniquitous cupidity. Silence imposed upon that dulcet lyre, and quieted the consecrated chords, that heaven's right hand doth tighten and relax. How unto just entreaties shall be deaf those substances, which, to give me desire of praying them with one accord, grew silent. Tis well that without end he should lament, who for the love of thing that doth not last eternally despoils him of that love. As through the pure and tranquil evening air there shoots from time to time a sudden fire moving the eyes that steadfast were before, and seems to be a star that changeth place, except that in the part where it is kindled nothing is missed, on this endureth little. So from the horn that to the right extends unto that cross's foot there ran a star out of the constellations shining there. Nor was the gem dissevered from its ribbon, but down the radiant flame ran along, so that fire seemed it behind alabaster. Thus Paetus did Anchises' shade reach forward, if any faith our greatest muse deserve, when in Elysium he his son perceived. O Sengis Miss! O super infusa gratia dei, sicca tibi chi bis unquam collegenia reclusa. Thus that effulgence whence I gave it he then round unto my lady turned my sight, and on this side and that was stupefied. For in her eyes was burning such a smile that with mine own methought I touched the bottom both of my grace and of my paradise. Then pleasant to the hearing and the sight, the spirit joined to its beginning things I understood not. So profound it spake. Nor did it hide itself from me by choice, but by necessity for its conception above the mark of mortal set itself. And when the bow of burning sympathy was so far slackened that its speech descended towards the mark of our intelligence. And I be thou, O trine and one who hast unto my seat so courteous been. Thou hast appeased, my son, within this light in which I speak to thee by grace of her who to this lofty flight with plumage clothed thee. Thou thinkest that to me thy thought doth pass from him who is the first, as from the unit, if it be known, ray out the five and six. And therefore who I am thou askest not, and why I seem more joyous unto thee than any other of this gladsome crowd. Thou think'st the truth because the small and great of this existence look into the mirror wherein, before thou think'st thy thought thou showest. But that the sacred love, in which I watch with sight perpetual, and which makes me thirst with sweet desire, may better be fulfilled. To Beatrice I turned me, and she heard before I spake, and smiled to me a sign, that made the wings of my desire increase. For in the sun, which lighted you and burned with heat and radiance, they so equal are, that all similitudes are insufficient. But among mortals will and argument, for reason that to you is manifest, diversely feathered in their pinions are. Whence I, who mortal am, feel in myself this inequality, so give not thanks, save in my heart, for this paternal welcome. A leaf of mine, in whom I pleasure took in while awaiting, I was thine own rut. 
a son of mine and thy great grandsire was well it behoves thee that the long fatigue thou shouldst for him make shorter with thy works florence within the ancient boundary from which she taketh still her tears on nuns abode in quiet temperate and chaste no golden chain she had nor coronal nor ladies shod with sandal shoon nor girdle that cut the eye more than the person did not yet the daughter at her birth struck fear into the father for the time and dower did not or on this side or that the measure no houses had she void of families not yet had thither come sardanapalus to show what in a chamber can be done not yet surpassed at montemolo been by your excelitajo which surpassed shall in its downfall be as in its rise the lynch and Bertie saw I go begirt with leather and with bone, and from the mirror his dame depart without a painted face. And him of Nerle saw, and him of Vecchio contented with their simple suits of buff and with the spindle and the flax their dames. Of fortunate women! And each one was certain of her own burial place, and none as yet forsake of France was in her bed deserted. One o'er the cradle kept her studious watch, and in her lullaby the language used that first delights the fathers and the mothers. Another, drawing tresses from her distaff, told her among her family the tales of Trojans and of Fessel and Rome. As great a marvel then would have been held a love of Saltarello, a Shanghella, as Cincinnati or Cornelia now. To such a quiet, such a beautiful life of the citizen, to such a safe community, and to so sweet an end. Did Mary give me, with loud cries invoked, and in your ancient baptistry at once Christian and Kakshigod I became. Morantu was my brother, and Elisu from Val di Pedu came to me my wife, and from that place thy surname was derived. I followed afterward the Emperor Conrad, and he begirt me of his chivalry, so much I pleased him with my noble deeds. I followed in his train against that law's iniquity, whose people doth usurp your just possession through your pastor's fault. Thereby that execrable race was I released from bonds of the fallacious world, the love of which defileth many souls. O thou our poor nobility of blood, if thou dost make the people glory in thee down here where our affection languishes, A marvellous thing it ne'er will be to me, for their where appetite is not perverted, I say in heaven, of thee I made a boast. Truly thou art a cloak that quickly shortens, so that unless we piece thee day by day, time goeth round about thee with his shears. The view, which Rome was first to tolerate, wherein her family less perseveres, yet once again my words beginning me. Lens Beatrice, who stood somewhat apart, smiling, appeared like unto her who coughed at the first failing writ of Ganever. So many rivulets with gladness fill my mind, that of itself it makes a joy because it can endure this and not burst. Then tell me, my beloved root ancestral, who were your ancestors, and what the years that in your boyhood chronicled themselves. As at the blowing of the winds a coal quickens to flame, so I beheld that light become resplendent at my blandishments. And as unto mine eyes it grew more fair, with voice more sweet and tender, but not in this modern dialect, it said to me. Unto its lion had this fire returned five hundred fifty times on thirty more, to reinflame itself beneath his paw. My ancestors and I our birthplace had where first is found the last ward of the city by him who runneth in your annual game. Suffice it of my elders to hear this but who they were, and whence they thither came, silence is more considerate than speech. All those who at that time were there between Mars and the Baptist fit for bearing arms were a fifth part of those who now are living. But the community, that now is mixed with Campion, Sertoldu, and Feigheim, pure in the lowest artisan was seen. Oh, how much better it were to have as neighbors the folk of whom I speak, and at Galuzo and at Trespino have your boundary, and have them in the town, and bear the stench of Egalian's churl, and him of Signa who has sharp eyes for trickery already. Had not the folk, which most of all the world degenerates, been a step to Caesar, but as a mother to her son Benignant. 
some who'd turn Florentines on trade and discount would have gone back again to Simifant there where their grandsires went about as beggars. At Montemerlo still would be the Counts, the Searcher and the Parish of Acon, perhaps in Valdegrieve the Bon del Monte. Ever the intermingling of the people has been the source of malady in cities, as in the body food it surfeits on. And a blind bull more headlong plunges down than a blind lamb and very often cuts better and more a single sword than five. If Luni thou regard under Basiglia how they have passed away and how our passing Chiusi and Sinigat lay after them. To hear how races waste themselves away will seem to thee no novel thing nor hard, seeing that even cities have an end. All things of yours have their mortality, even as yourselves, but it is hidden in some that a long while endure, and lives are short. And as the turning of the lunar heaven covers and bears the shores without a pause, in the like manner fortune does with Florence. Therefore should not appear a marvellous thing what I shall say of the great Florentines of whom the fame is hidden in the past. I saw the Ahi, saw the Catalini, Filippi, Gracie. Or many, and Alberici, even in their fall illustrious citizens. And saw, as mighty as they ancient were, with him of La Sanella, him of Arca, and Soldanier, Ardinghe, and Bostice. Near to the gate that is at present laden with a new felony of so much weight that soon it shall be jetsam from the bark. The Ravenini were from whom descended the county Guido, and who were the name of the great Belinchon since hath taken. Mighty already was the column there, Sacchetti, Giuce, Fefant, and Baroxi, and Galli, and they who for the bushel blush. The stock from which were the Calfucks of born was great already, and already chosen two cruel chairs, the Sese and Aregixi. Oh, how beheld I those who are undone by their own pride! And how the balls of gold Florence and Florid in all their mighty deeds! So likewise did the ancestors of those who evermore. When vacant is your church, fattened by staying in consistory. The insolent race, that like a dragon follows whoever flees, and unto him that shows his teeth or purse is gentle as a lamb. Already rising was, but from low people so that it pleased not Hubert and Donato that his wife's father should make him their kin. Already had Caponsacco to the market from Fessel descended, and already Judah and Infangito were good burghers. I'll tell a thing incredible, but true one entered the small circuit by a gate which from the Del Par took its name. Each one that bears the beautiful escutcheon of the great baron whose renown and name the festival of Thomas keepeth fresh. Thy hood and privilege from him received the with the populace unites himself today the man who binds it with a border. Already were Galterata and Importuna, and still more quiet would the Borgo be if with new neighbors it remained unfit. The house from which is born your lamentation, through just disdain that death among you brought and put an end unto your joyous life. Vaz honored in itself and its companions. O Guandelmont, how in evil hour thou floods the bridal at another's promptings. Many would be rejoicing who are sad. If God had thee surrendered to the Ema the first time that thou camest to the city. But it behoved the mutilated stone which guards the bridge, that Florence should provide a victim in her latest hour of peace. With all these families, and others with them, Florence beheld I in so great repose, that no occasion had she whence to weep. With all these families beheld so just and glorious her people, that the lily never upon the spear was placed reversed. Verity so canto exfly. As came to Clamine, to be made certain of that which he had heard against himself, he who makes father's chari still two children. Even such was I, and such was I perceived by Beatrice, and by the holy light that first on my account had changed its place. So thou beholdest the contingent things ere in themselves they are, fixing thine eyes upon the point in which all times are present. While I was with Virgilius conjoined upon the mountain that the souls doth heal, and when descending into the dead world, were spoken to me of my future life some grievous words, although I feel myself in sooth foursquare against the blows of chance. 
Thus did I say unto that self same light that unto me had spoken before, and even as Beatrice will was my own will confessed. Not in vague phrase, in which the foolish folk ensnared themselves of old, there yet was slain the Lamb of God who taketh sins away. But with clear words and unambiguous language responded that paternal love, hid and revealed by its own proper smile. Necessity, however, thence it takes not, except as from the eye in which tis mirrored, a ship that with the current down descends. From thence, in as there cometh to the ear sweet harmony from an organ, comes in sight to me the time that is preparing for thee. As forth from Athens went Hippolytus, by reason of his stepdame false and cruel, so thou from Florence must perforce depart. Already this is willed and this is sought for, and soon it shall be done by him who thinks it, where every day the Christ is bought and sold. The blame shall follow the offended party in outcry as is usual, but the vengeance shall witness to the truth that doth dispense it. Thou shalt abandon everything beloved most tenderly, and this the arrow is which first the bow of banishment shoots forth. Thou shalt have proof how sever thou salt the bread of others, and how hard a road the going down and up on other stairs. And that which most shall weigh upon thy shoulders will be the bad and foolish company with which into this valley thou shalt fall. For all in great, all mad and impious will they become against thee, but soon after they, and not thou, shall have the forehead scarlet. Of their best shall it their own proceedings shall furnish proof, so twill be well for thee a party to have made thee by thyself. Thine earliest refuge and thine earliest inn shall be the mighty Lombard's courtesy, who on the ladder bears the holy bird. Who such benign regard shall have for thee that twixt you twain in doing and in asking, that shall be first which he is with others last. With him shalt thou see one who at his birth has by this star of strength been so impressed, that notable shall his achievements be. Not yet the people are aware of him through his young age, since only nine years yet around about him have these wheels revolved. But ere the Gascon cheat the noble Henry, some sparkles of his virtue shall appear in caring not for silver nor for toil. So recognized shall his magnificence become hereafter, that his enemies will not have power to keep mute tongues about it. On him rely, and on his benefits by him shall many people be transformed, changing condition rich and mendicant. When by its silence show that sainted soul that it had finished putting in the woof into that web which I had given it wart. Began I, even as he who yearneth after, being in doubt, some counsel from a person who seeth, and uprightly wills, and loves. Therefore with foresight it is well I arm me, that, if the dearest place be taken from me, I may not lose the others by my songs. Down through the world of infinite bitterness, and o'er the mountain from whose beauteous summit the eyes of my own lady lifted me. And afterward through heaven from light to light, I have learned that which, if I tell again, will be a sever of strong herbs too many. The light in which was smiling my own treasure which there I had discovered, flashed at first as in the sunshine doth a golden mirror. But nevertheless, all falsehood laid aside, make manifest thy vision utterly, and let them scratch wherever is the each. For if thine utterance shall offensive be at the first taste, a vital nutriment will leave thereafter when it is digested. This cry of thine shall do as doth the wind, which smiteth most the most exalted summits, and that is no slight argument of honour. Therefore are shown to thee within these wheels, upon the mount and in the dolorous valley, only the souls that unto fame are known. Because the spirit of the hearer rests not, nor doth confirm its faith by an example which has the root of it unknown and hidden. Now was alone rejoicing in its word that so beatified, and I was tasting my own, the bitter tempering with the sweet. And the lady who to God was leading me said, Change thy thought, consider that I am near unto him who every wrong disburdens. Unto the loving accents of my comfort I turned me round, and then what love I saw within those holy eyes I here relinquish. Not only that my language I distrust, but that my mind cannot return so far above itself, unless another guide it. Thus much upon that point can I repeat, that her again beholding my affection from every other longing was released. 
while the eternal pleasure which direct rayed upon Beatrice from her fair face contented me with its reflected aspect. Conquering me with the radiance of a smile, she said to me, Turn thee about and listen not in mine eyes alone is paradise. Even as sometimes here do we behold the affection and the look, if it be such that all the soul is wrapped away by it. So, by the flaming of the fulgence holy to which I turned, I recognized therein the wish of speaking to me somewhat farther. Our blessed spirits that below, ere yet they came to heaven, were of such great renown that every muse therewith would affluent be. I saw athwart the cross a splendor drawn by naming Joshua, even as he did it, nor noted at a word before the deed. And at the name of the great Maccabee I saw another move itself revolving, and gladness was the whip unto that top. Likewise for Charlemagne and for Orlando, two of them I regard attentive followed as followeth I its falcon flying. William thereafter ward, and Renard, and the Duke Godfrey did attract my sight along upon that cross, and Robert Giscard. Then moved and mingled with the other lights, the soul that had addressed me showed how great an artist was among the heavenly singers. To my right side I turned myself around, my duty to behold in Beatrice either by words or gesture signify. And so translucent I beheld her eyes, so full of pleasure, that her countenance surpassed its other and its latest wont. And as, by feeling greater delectation, a man in doing good from day to day becomes aware his virtue is increasing. So I became aware that my duration with heaven together had increased its arc, that miracle beholding more adorned. And such as is the change and little lapse of time in a pale woman, when her face is from the load of bashfulness unladen. Such was it in mine eyes, when I had turned, caused by the whiteness of the temperate star, the six, which to itself had gathered me. Within that jovial torch did I behold the sparkling of the love which was therein delineate our language to mine eyes. And even as birds uprise from the shore, as in congratulation or their food, make squadrons of themselves, now around, now along. So from within those lights the holy creatures sang flying to and fro, and in their figures made of themselves now D, now I, now L. First singing they to their own music moved then one becoming of these characters, a little while they rested and were silent. O divine Pegasi, thou who genius dost glorious make, and render it long lived, and this through thee the cities and the kingdoms. Illume me with thyself, that I may bring their figures out as I have them conceived. Apparent be thy power in these brief verses. Themselves then they displayed in five times seven vowels and consonants, and I observed the parts as they seem spoken unto me. Diligit justicium, to these were first verb and noun of all that was depicted, quite judicates tyram were the last. Thereafter in the M of the fifth word remained they so arranged, that Jupiter seemed to be silver therewith gold inlaid. And other lights I saw descend where was the summit of the M and pause their singing the good, I think, that draws them to itself. Then, as in striking upon burning logs upward there fly innumerable sparks, whence fools are wont to look for auguries. More than a thousand lights seem thence to rise, and to ascend some more, and others less, even as the sun that lights them had allotted. And each one being quiet in its place, the head and neck beheld I of an eagle delineated by that inlaid fire. He who there paints has none to be his guide but himself guides, and is from him remembered that virtue which is form unto the nest. The other beatitude, that contented seemed at first to bloom a lily on them by a slight motion followed out the imprint. O oh, gentle star! But and how many gems did demonstrate to me? that all our justice effect is of that heaven which thou ingemest. Wherefore I pray the mind, in which begin thy motion and thy virtue, to regard whence comes the smoke that vitiates thy rays, so that a second time it now be wroth with buying and with selling in the temple whose walls were built with signs and martyrdoms. O soldiery of heaven, whom I contemplate, implore for those who are upon the earth all gone astray after the bad example. 
Once twas the custom to make war with swords, but now tis made by taking here under the bread the pitying father shuts from none. Yet thou who writest but to cancel, think that Peter and that Paul, who for this vineyard which thou art spoiling died, are still alive. Bid before me with its wings outspread the beautiful image that in sweet fruition made jubilant the interwoven soul. Appeared a little ruby each, wherein ray of the sun was burning so enkindled that each into mine eyes refracted it. And what it now behoves me to retrace, nor voice has it reported, nor ink written, nor was by fantasy or comprehended. For speak I saw, and likewise heard, the beak, and utter with its voice both I and me, when in conception it was we and our. So doth a single heat from many embers make itself felt, even as from many loves issued a single sound from out that image. Excelling, break within me the great fast which a long season has in hunger held me, not finding for it any food on earth. Well do I know that if in heaven its mirror justice divine another realm doth make, yours apprehends it not through any veil. Even as a falcon, issuing from his hood, doth move his head, and with his wings applaud him, showing desire, and making himself fine. So I become that standard, which of lauds was interwoven of the grace divine, with such songs as he knows who there rejoices. Could not the impress of his power so make on all the universe, as that his word should not remain in infinite excess? And this makes certain that the first proud being, who was the paragon of every creature, by not awaiting light fell immature. And hence appears it, that each minor nature is scant receptacle unto that good which has no end, and by itself is measured. In consequence our vision, which perforce must be some ray of that intelligence with which all things whatever are replete, cannot in its own nature be so potent, that it shall not its origin discern far bound that which is apparent to it. Therefore into the justice sempiternal the power of vision that your world receives, as I into the ocean penetrates, which, though it see the bottom near the shore, upon the deep perceives it not, and yet tis there, but it is hidden by the depth. There is no light but comes from the serene that never is or cast, nay, it is darkness or shadow of the flesh, or else it's poison. Amply to thee is open now the cavern which has concealed from thee the living justice of which thou madst such frequent questioning. For saidst thou born a man is on the shore of Indus, and is none who there can speak of Christ, nor who can read, nor who can write. And all his inclinations and his actions are good, so far as human reason sees, without a sin in life or in discourse. He dieth unbaptist and without faith, where is this justice that condemneth him? Where is his fault, if he do not believe? Now who art thou that on the bench would sit in judgment at a thousand miles away, with the short vision of a single span? Truly to him who with me subtilizes, if so the scripture were not over you, for doubting there were marvellous occasion. O oh, animals, tyrann, O oh, stolid minds, the primal will, that in itself is good, ne'er from itself, the good supreme has moved. Even as above her nest goes circling round the stork when she has fed her little ones, and he who has been fed looks up at her. So lifted I my brows, and even such became the blessed image, which its wings was moving by so many counsels urge. Circling around it sang and set. As are my notes to thee who dost not comprehend them, such is the eternal judgment to you mortals. Those lucent splendors of the Holy Spirit grew quiet then, but still within the standard that made the Romans reverent to the world. But look thou many crying are, Trist, Trist. But the judgment shall be far less near to him than some shall be who knew not Christ. Such Christians shall the Ethel condemn, when the two companies shall be divided, the one forever rich, the other poor. But to your kings may not the Persians say, when they that volume open shall behold in which are written down all their dispraises. There shall be seen among the deeds of Albert, and which ere long shall set the pen in motion, for which the realm of Prague shall be deserted. 
there shall be seen the woe that on the same he brings by falsifying of the coin, who by the blow of a wild boar shall die. There shall be seen the pride that causes thirst, which makes the Scot and Englishmen so mad that they within their boundaries cannot rest. Be seen the luxury and effeminate life of him of Spain, and the Bohemian, who Velar never knew and never wished. Be seen the cripple of Jerusalem, his goodness represented by an eye, while the reverse in him shall represent. Be seen the avarice and poltroonery of him who guards the island of the fire wherein Anchis has finished his long life. And to declare how pitiful he is shall be his record in contracted letters which shall make note of much in little space. And shall appear to each one the foul deeds of uncle and of brother who a nation so famous have dishonored on two crowns. And he of Portugal and he of Norway shall there be known, and he of Russia too, who saw in evil hour the coin of Venice. O oh, happy Hungary, if she let herself be wronged no farther. And Navarre the happy if with the hills that gird her she be armed. And each one may believe that now, as Hansel the Rav, Dunicasia and Famagust lament and rage because of their own beast. Verdi so cantux. When you all the world illuminates out of our hemisphere so far descends that on all sides the daylight is consumed. The heaven, that erst by him alone was kindled, doth suddenly reveal itself again by many lights, wherein is one resplendent. And came into my mind this act of heaven, when the ensign of the world and of its leaders had silent in the blessed beak become. Because those living luminaries all, by far more luminous, did songs begin lapsing and falling from my memory. O oh, gentle love, that with a smile dost cloak thee, how ardent in those sparks didst thou appear, that had the breath alone of holy thoughts. After the precious and pellucid crystals, with which be gemmed the sixth light I beheld, silence imposed on the angelic bells. I seemed to hear the murmuring of a river that clear descendeth down from rock to rock, showing the affluence of its mountain top. And as the sound upon the cithern's neck taketh its form, and as upon the vent of rustic pipe the wine that enters it. Even thus relieved from the delay of waiting, that murmuring of the eagle mounted up along its neck, as if it had been hull. There it became a voice, and issued thence from out its beak, in such a form of words as the heart waited for wherein I wrote them. The part in me which sees and bears the sun and mortal eagles. For of the fires of which I make my figure, those whence that I doth sparkle in my head of all their orders the supremest are. He who is shining in the midst as pupil was once the singer of the Holy Spirit, who bore the ark from city unto city. Now knoweth he the merit of his song, in so far as effect of his own counsel, by the reward which is commensurate. Of five that make a circle for my brow, he that approacheth nearest to my beak did the poor widow for her son consul. Now knoweth he how dearly it doth cost not following Christ, by the experience of this sweet life and of its opposite. He who comes next in the circumference of which I speak upon its highest arc, did death postpone by penitence sincere. Now knoweth he that the eternal judgment suffers no change, albeit worthy prayer maketh below tomorrow of today. The next who follows, with the laws on me, under the good intent that bore bad fruit became a Greek by ceding to the pastor. Now knoweth he how all the ill deduced from his good action is not harmful to him, although the world thereby may be destroyed. And he, whom in the downward ark thus ceased, Guglielmo was, whom the same land deplores that weepeth Charles and Frederick yet ally. Now knoweth he how heaven in Amor is with a just king, and in the outward show of his effulgence he reveals it still. Who would believe, down in the errant world, that ere the Trojan Ripus in this round could be the fifth one of the holy lights? Like as a lark that in the air expatiates, first singing and then silent with content of the last sweetness that doth satisfy her. Such seemed to me the image of the imprint of the eternal pleasure, by whose will doth everything become the thing it is. And notwithstanding to my doubt I was as glass it is to the color that invests it, to wait the time and silence it endured not. 
What things are these? Extorted with the force of its own weight, weighed I so great joy of coruscation. Thereafterward, with I still more enkindled, the blessed standard made to me reply, to keep me not in wonderment suspended. Thou dost as he doth, who a thing by name well apprehendeth, but its quiddity cannot perceive, unless another show it. Brinum colorum suffereth violence from fervent love, and from that living hope that overcometh a divine volition. Not in the guise that man overcometh man, but conquers it because it will be conquered, and conquered conquers by benignity. The first life of thy row on the fifth caused the astonishment, because with them thou seest the region of the angels painted. They passed not from their bodies as thou thinkest Gentiles, but Christians in the steadfast faith of feet that were to suffer and had suffered. Or one from hell, where no one returns back unto good will, returned unto his bones, and that of living hope was the reward. Of living hope, that placed its efficacy in prayers to God made to resuscitate him, so that twere possible to move his will. The glorious soul concerning which I speak, returning to the flesh, where brief it stay, believed in him who had the power to aid it. And in believing, kindled to such fire of genuine love, that at the second death worthy it was to come unto this joy. The other one through grace, that from so deep a fountain wells that never hath an eye of any creature reached its primal wave, set all his love below on righteousness, wherefore from grace to grace did God unclose his eye to our redemption yet to be. Whence he believed therein, and suffered not from that day forth the stench of paganism, and he reproved therefore the folk perverse. Those maidens three whom at the right hand wheel thou didst behold were unto him for baptism more than a thousand years before baptizing. O thou predestination, how remote thy root is from the aspect of all those who the first cause do not behold entire. And you, O oh mortals! Hold yourselves restrained in judging for ourselves, who look on God, we do not know as yet all the elect. After this manner by that shape divine, to make clear in me my short-sightedness, was given to me a pleasant medicine. And as good singer a good lutenist accompanies with vibrations of the chords, whereby more pleasantness the song acquires. So, while it spake, do I remember me that I beheld both of those blessed lights, even as the winking of the eyes concords. Moving on to the words, their little flames. Already so can't Already on my lady's face mine eyes again were fastened, and with these my mind, and from all other purpose was withdrawn. And she smiled not but. She unto me began. Thou wouldst become like Semele when she was turned to ashes, because my beauty, that along the stairs of the eternal palace more enkindles, as thou hast seen, the farther we ascend. If it were tempered not, is so resplendent that all thy mortal power and its effulgence would seem a leaflet that the thunder crushes. We are uplifted to the seventh splendor, that underneath a burning lion's breast now radiates downward mingled with his power. He who could know what was the pasturage my sight had in that blessed countenance, when I transferred me to another care, would recognize how grateful was to me obedience unto my celestial escort by counterpoising one side with the other. Within the crystal which, round the world revolving, bears the name of its dear leader, under whom every wickedness lay dead. Colored like gold on which the sunshine gleams, a stairway I beheld to such a height uplifted that mine I pursued it not. Likewise beheld I down the steps descending so many splendors, that I thought each light that in the heaven appears was there diffused. And as accordant with their natural custom the rooks together at the break of day bester themselves to warm their feathers cold. And some of them fly off without return, others come back to where they started from, and others, wheeling round, still keep at home. Such fashion it appeared to me was there within the sparkling that together came, as soon as on a certain step it struck. She thereupon, who saw my silentness and the sight of him who seeth everything, said unto me, 
the blessed life that dost remain concealed in thy beatitude, make known to me the cause which draweth thee so near my side. Thou hast thy hearing mortal as thy sight. It answer made to me they sing not here, for the same cause that Beatrice has not smiled. Thus far adown the holy stairway steps have I descended but to give thee welcome with words, and with the light that mantles me. Nor did more love cause me to be more ready for love as much and more up there is burning as doth the flaming manifest to thee. Dead I, O sacred lamp! Our love unfettered in this court sufficeth to follow the eternal providence. No sooner had I come to the last word than of its middle made the light a center, whirling itself about like a swift millstone. Of which the virtue with my sight conjoined lifts me above myself so far, I see the supreme essence from which this is drawn. Hence comes the joyfulness with which I flame, for to my sight, as far as it is clear, the clearness of the flame I equal make. But that soul in the heaven which is most pure, that seraph which his eye on God most fixes, could this demand of thy not satisfy? Because so deeply sinks in the abyss of the eternal statute what thou askest from all created sight it is cut off. Unto the mortal world, when thou returnest, is carry back, that it may not presume longer towered such a goal to move its feet. Such limit did its words prescribe to me, the question I relinquished, and restricted myself to ask it humbly who it was. That feeding only on the juice of olives lightly I passed away the heats and frosts, contented in my thoughts contemplative. That cloister used to render to these heavens abundantly, and now is empty grown, so that perforce it soon must be revealed. I in that place was Peter Damiano, and Peter the sinner was I in the house of Our Lady on the Adriatic shore. Little of mortal life remained to me, when I was called and dragged forth to the hat which shifteth evermore from bad to worse. Came Saphas, and the mighty vessel came of the Holy Spirit, meagre and barefooted, taking the food of any hostelry. Now some one to support them on each side the modern shepherds need, and some to led them, so heavy are they, and to hold their trains. At this voice saw I many little flames from step to step descending and revolving, and every revolution made them fair. Round about this one came they and stood still, and a cry uttered of so loud a sound, it here could find no parallel, Nora. Purdy so can't exi. Oppressed with stupor, I unto my guide turned like a little child who always runs for refuge there where he confideth most. And she, even as a mother who straightway gives comfort to her pale and breathless boy with voice whose wont it is to reassure him. After what wise the singing would have changed thee and I by smiling, thou canst now imagine, since that the cry has startled thee so much, in which if thou hadst understood its prayers already would be known to thee the vengeance which thou shalt look upon before thou diest. The sword above here smiteth not in haste nor tardily however it seemed to him who fearing or desiring waits for it. As it seemed good to her mine eyes, I turned, and saw a hundred spirules that together with mutual rays each other more embellished. I stood as one who in himself represses the point of his desire, and ventures not to question, he so feareth the too much. And now the largest and most luculent among those pearls came forward, that it might make my desire concerning it content. But that by awaiting thou mayst not come late to the high end, I will make answer even unto the thought of which thou art so chary. That mountain on whose slope Casino stands was frequented of old upon its summit by a deluded folk and ill-disposed. And I am you first up that bore the name of him who brought upon the earth the truth that so much sublimateth us. And such abundant grace upon me shone that all the neighboring towns I drew away from the impious worship that seduced the world. These other fires, each one of them, were men contemplative, and kindled by that heat which maketh holy flowers and fruits spring up. In me have so my confidence dilated as the sun doth a rose, when it becomes as far unfolded as it hath the power. Their perfect is, unripened, and complete, every desire within that one alone is every part where it has always been. 
for it is not in space, nor turns on poles, and unto it our stairway reaches up, whence thus from out thy sight it steals away. Up to that height the patriarch Jacob saw it extending its supernal part, what time so thronged with angels it appeared to him. But to ascend it now no one uplifts his feet from off the earth, and now my rule below remaineth for mere waste of paper. The walls that used of old to be an abbey are changed to dens of robbers, and the cowls are sacks filled full of miserable flour. But heavy usury is not taken up so much against God's pleasure as that fruit which maketh so insane the heart of monks. For whatsoever hath the church in keeping is for the folk that ask it in God's name, not for one's kindred or for something worse. The flesh of mortals is so very soft that good beginnings down below suffice not from springing of the oak to bearing acorns. Peter began with neither gold nor silver, and I with orison and abstinence, and Francis with humility his convent. And if thou lookest at each one's beginning, and then regardest whither he has run, thou shalt behold the white changed into brown. Thus unto me he said, and then withdrew to his own band, and the band closed together then like a whirlwind, all was upward wrapped. The gentle lady urged me on behind them up o'er that stairway by a single sign, so did her virtue overcome my nature. Nor here below, where one goes up and down by natural law, was motion or so swift that it could be compared unto my wing. Read it her as I may unto that devout triumph return, on whose account I often for my transgressions weep and beat my breast. Thou hadst not thrust thy finger in the fire and drawn it out again, before I saw the sign that follows Taurus, and was in it. O glorious stars, O light impregnated with mighty virtue, from which I acknowledge all of my genius, whatsoever it be. With you was born and hid himself with you, he who is father of all mortal life, when first I tasted of the Tuscan air. And then when grace was freely given to me to enter the high wheel which turns you round, your region was allotted unto me. Thou art so near unto the last salvation. Thus Beatrice began, Thou oughtest now to have thine eaves unclouded and acute, and therefore, ere thou enter farther in, Look down once more, and see how vast a world thou hast already put beneath thy feet. I with my sight returned through one and all the sevenfold spheres, and I beheld this globe such that I smiled at its ignoble semblance. And that opinion I approve as best which doth account at least and you thinks of something else may truly be called just. I saw the daughter of Latona shining without the shadow, which to me was cause that once I had believed her rare and dense. The aspect of thy son Hyperion, here I sustained, and saw how moved themselves around and near him my own Dion. Thence there appeared the temperateness of Jove twixt son and father, and to me was clear the change that of their whereabout they make. And all the seven made manifest to me how great they are, and eke how swift they are, and how they are in distant habitations. The threshing floor that maketh us so proud, to me revolving with the eternal twins, was all apparent made from hill to harbor. Then to the beauteous eyes mine eyes I turned. Even as a bird, mid the beloved leaves, quiet upon the nest of her sweet brood throughout the night, that hideth all things from us. Ooh, that she may behold their longed for looks and find the food wherewith to nourish them, in which, to her, grave labors grateful are. Anticipates the time on open spray and with an ardent longing waits the sun, gazing intent as soon as breaks the dawn. Even thus my lady standing was, erect and vigilant, turned round towards the zone underneath which the sun displays less haste. So that beholding her distraught and wistful, such I became as he is who desiring for something yearns, and hoping is a peace. But brief the space from one when to the other of my awaiting, say I, on the seeing the welkin grow resplendent more and more. And Beatrice exclaimed, Behold the hosts of Christ's triumphal march, and all the fruit harvested by the rolling of these spears. It seemed to me her face was all aflame, and eyes she had so full of ecstasy that I must needs pass on without describing. 
as when in night serene of a full moon smiles trivia among the nymphs eternal who paint the firmament through all its gulfs. Saw I, above the myriads of lamps, a sun that one and all of them enkindled, e'en as our own doth the supernal sights. And through the living light transparent shone the lucent substance so intensely clear into my sight that I sustained it not. As fire from out a cloud unlocks itself, dilating so it finds not room therein, and down, against its nature, falls to earth. So did my mind, among those elements becoming larger, issue from itself, and that which it became can't remember. Open thine eyes, and look at what I am. Thou hast beheld such things, that strong enough hast thou become to tolerate my smile. I was as one who still retains the feeling of a forgotten vision, and endeavours in vain to bring it back into his mind. When I this invitation heard, deserving of so much gratitude, it never fades out of the book that chronicles the past. If at this moment sounded all the tongues that Polymnia and her sisters made most lubrical with their delicious milk, to aid me to a thousandth of the truth it would not reach, singing the holy smile and how the holy aspect it illumined. And therefore, representing paradise, the sacred poem must perforce leap over, even as a man who finds his way cut off. But who thinketh of the ponderous theme, and of the mortal shoulder laden with it, should blame it not, if under this it tremble. It is no passage for a little boat this which goes cleaving the audacious prow, nor for a pilot who would spare himself. Thus Beatrice and I, who to her counsels was wholly ready, once again beckoned me unto the battle of the feeble brows. As in the sunshine that unsullied streams through fractured cloud, ere now a meadow of flowers mine eyes with shadow covered or have seen. So troops of splendors manifold I saw illumined from above with burning rays, beholding not the source of the fountains. O power benignant that dost so imprint them! Thou didst exalt thyself to give more scope there to mine eyes that were not strong enough. The name of that fair flower I invoke morning and evening utterly enthralled my soul to gaze upon the greater fire. And when in both mine eyes depicted were the glory and greatness of the living star which there excelleth, as it here excelled. Athwart the heavens a little torch descended formed in a circle like a coronal, uncinctured it and world itself about it. Whatever melody most sweetly soundeth on earth, and to itself most draws the soul, would seem a cloud that rent asunder thunders. Compared unto the sounding of that lyre wherewith was crowned the sapphire beautiful, which gives the clearest heaven its sapphire hue. Thus did the circulated melody seal itself up and all the other lights were making to resound the name of Mary. The regal mantle of the volumes all of the world, which most fervid is unliving with breath of God and with his works and waste, extended over us its inner border, so very distant, that the semblance of it there where I was not yet appeared to me. Therefore mine eyes did not possess the power of following the incoronated flame, which mounted upward near to its own seat. And as a little child, that towards its mother stretches its arms, when it the milk has taken, through impulse kindled into outward flame. Each of those gleams of whiteness upward reached so with its summit, that the deep affection they had for Mary was revealed to me. For after they remained there in my sight, Regina Cully singing with such sweetness, that ne'er from me has the delight departed. Oh, what exuberance is garnered up within those richest coffers, which had been good husbandmen for sowing here below. There they enjoy and live upon the treasure which was acquired while weeping in the exile of Babylon, wherein the gold was left. There trampeth beneath the exalted Son of God and Mary in his victory, both with the ancient council and the new. Birdie so can't accept. If by the grace of God this man foretaste something of it which falleth from your table, or ever death prescribe to him the time. Thus Beatrice and those souls beatified transformed themselves to spheres on steadfast poles, flaming intensely in the guise of comets. 
and as the wheels in works of horologes revolve so that the first to the beholder motionless seems and the last one to fly. So in like manner did those carols, dancing in different measure, of their affluence give me the gauge as they were swift or slow. From that one which I noted of most beauty beheld I issue forth a fire so happy that none it left there of a greater brightness. And around Beatrice three several times it whirled itself with so divine a song my fantasy repeats it not to me. Therefore the pen skips, and I write it not, since our imagination for such folds much more our speech is of a tint too glaring. O holy sister mine, who us implorest with such devotion, by thine ardent love thou dost unbind me from that beautiful sphere. Thereafter, having stopped the blessed fire unto my lady did direct its breath, which spake in fashion as I here have said. This one examine on points light and grave, as good be thee about the faith by means of which thou on the sea didst walk. If ye love well and hope well, and believe, from thee tis hid not for thou hast thy sight there where depicted everything he has seen. That is baccalaureate arms himself, and speaks not until the master doth propose the question, to argue it, and not to terminate it. So did I arm myself with every reason while she was speaking, that I might be ready for such a questioner on such profession. J, the good Christian, manifest thyself, what is the faith? Where had I raised my brow unto that light wherefrom was this breathed forth? Then turned I round to Beatrice, and she prompt signals made to me that I should pour the water forth from my internal fountain. Began I. To the great centurion cause my conceptions all to be explicit. Then heard I. Very rightly thou perceivest, if well thou understandest why he placed it with substances and then with evidences, that they exist there only in belief, upon the which is founded the high hope, and hence it takes the nature of a substance. If whatever is acquired below by doctrine were thus understood, no sophist subtlety would there find place. But tell me if thou hast it in thy purse. And I. Yes, both so shining and so round that in its stamp there is no peradventure. And then I heard. The ancient and the new postulates that to thee are so conclusive, why dost thou take them for the word divine? The proofs which show the truth to me are the works subsequent, whereunto nature ne'er heated iron yet, nor anvil beat. Was answered me. Day. Who assureth thee that those works ever were the thing itself that must be proved, not else to thee affirms it, were the world to Christianity converted? I said, without miracles, this one is such, the rest are not its hundredth part. This being finished, the high holy court resounded through the spheres. In melody that there above is chanted, and then that baron who from branch to branch examining had thus conducted me, Till the extremest leaves we were approaching. O holy Father, Spirit, who beholdest what thou believest, so that thou o'ercamest towards the sepulchre more youthful feet. And I respond in one God, I believe, soul and etern, who moved all the heavens with love and with desire, himself unmoved. And of such faith not only have I proofs physical and metaphysical, but gives them likewise the truth that from this place rains down. Through Moses, through the prophets, and the Psalms, through the Evangel, and through you, who wrote after the fiery spirit sanctified you. In persons three turn believe, on these one essence I believe, so one and trine they bear conjunction both with son and best. With the profound condition and divine in which now I touch upon, doth stamp my mind off times the doctrine evangelical. Even as a lord who hears what pleaseth him his servant straight embraces, gratulating for the good news as soon as he is silent. So, giving me its benediction, singing three times encircled me, when I was silent, the apostolic light, at whose command. I spoke and had, in speaking I so pleased him. If here it happened that the poem sacred, to which both heaven and earth have set their hand, so that it many a year hath made me lean. 
Where come the cruelty that bars me out from the fair sheepfold where a lamb I slumbered, an enemy to the wolves that war upon it? With other voice forthwith, with other fleece poet will I return, and at my font baptismal will I take the laurel crown. Because into the faith that maketh known all souls to God there entered I, and then Peter for her sake thus my brow encircled. Thereafterward towards us moved a light out of a band whence issued the first fruits which of his vicar's Christ behind him left. And then my lady, full of ecstasy, said unto me, Look, look, behold the baron for whom below Galicia is frequented. In the same way as, when a dove alights near his companion, both of them pour forth, circling about and murmuring their affection. So one beheld I by the other grand prince glorified to be with welcome greeted, lauding the food that there above is eaten. But when their gratulations were complete, silently Cora me each one stood still, so incandescent it overcame my sight. Lift up thy head, and make thyself assured, for what comes hither from the mortal world must needs be ripened in our radiance. This comfort came to me from the second fire wherefore mine eyes I lifted to the hills which bent them down before with too great weight. So that, the truth beholden of this court, hope, which below there rightfully enamours, thereby thou strengthen in thyself and others. And the compassionate, who piloted the plumage of my wings in such high flight, did in reply anticipate me thus. Therefore it is conceded him from Egypt to come into Jerusalem to see, or ever yet his warfare be completed. The two remaining points, that not for knowledge have been demanded, but that he report how much this virtue unto thee is pleasing. As a disciple, who his teacher follows, ready unwilling where he is expert, that his proficiency may be displayed. Jedi is the certain expectation of future glory, which is the effect of grace divine and merit precedent. From many stars this light comes unto me, but he instilled it first into my heart who was chief singer unto the chief captain. Sprint in tea, but in the high theory he saith, those who know thy name and who knoweth it not, if he my faith possess. While I was speaking in the living bosom of the combustion quivered an effulgence, sudden and frequent, in the guise of lightning. Moses say that each one garmented in his own land shall be with twofold garments, and his own land is this delightful life. And first, and near the ending of these words, from over us was heard, to which responsive answered all the carols, thereafterward a light among them brightened, so that, if cancer one such crystal had, winter would have a month of one sole day. And as uprises, goes, and enters the dance a winsome maiden, only to do honor to the new bride, and not from any failing. Even thus did I behold the bright and splendor approach the two, who in a wheel revolved as was beseeming to their ardent love. Into the song and music there it entered and fixed on them my lady kept her look, even as of bride silent and motionless. This is the one who lay upon the breast of him our pelican, and this is he too the great office from the cross elected. My lady thus, but therefore none the more did move her sight from its attentive gaze before or afterward these words of hers. Even as a man who gazes, and endeavours to see the eclipsing of the sun a little, and who by seeing sightless doth become. For thin the earth my body is, and shall be with all the others there until our number with the eternal proposition tallies. And at this utterance the flaming circle grew quiet, with a dulcet intermingling of sound that by the trinal breath was made. As to escape from danger or fatigue the oars that erst were in the water beaten are all suspended at a whistless sound. Ah, how much in my mind was I disturbed, when I turned round to look on Beatrice, and her I could not see, although I was close at her side and in the happy world. While I was doubting for my vision quenched, out of the flame refulgent that had quenched it issued of breathing that attentive made me. Begin then, and declare to what thy soul is aimed, and count it for a certainty sight is in thee bewildered and not dead. The selfsame voice that taken had from me the terror of the sudden dazzlement, to speak still farther put it in my thought. 
In verity with finer sif behoveth thee to sift thee it behoveth to say who aimed thy bow at such a target. For good, so far as good, when comprehended, doth straight and kind love, on so much greater as more of goodness in itself it holds. Then to that essence whose is such advantage that every good which out of it is found is nothing but a ray of its own light. More than elsewhere must the mind be moved of every one in loving, who discerns the truth in which this evidence is founded. Such truth he to my intellect reveals who demonstrates to me the primal love of all the sempiternal substances. The voice reveals it of the truthful author, who says to Moses, speaking of himself, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. The holy purpose of the eagle of Christ not latent was, nay, rather I perceived whither he fain would my profession led. The being of the world on my own being, the death which he endured that I may live, on that which all the faithful hope, as I do. With the forementioned vivid consciousness have drawn me from the sea of love perverse, and of the right have placed me on the shore. As soon as I had ceased, a song most sweet throughout the heaven resounded, and my lady said with the others, And as at some keen light one wakes from sleep by reason of the visual spirit that runs unto the splendor passed from coat to coat, and he who wakes abhorreth what he sees, so all unconscious is his sudden waking until the judgment cometh to his aid. So from before mine eyes did Beatrice chase every moat with radiance of her own, that cast its light a thousand miles and more. And better after than before I saw, and in a kind of wonderment I asked about a fourth light that I saw with us. And said my lady, there within those rays gazes upon its maker the first soul that ever the first virtue did create, even as the bow that downward bends its top at transit of the wind, and then is lifted by its own virtue, which inclines it upward. Likewise did I, the while that she was speaking, being amazed, and then I was made bold by a desire to speak wherewith I burned. Sometimes an animal, when covered, struggles so that his impulse needs must be apparent, by reason of the rapage following it. And in like manner the primeval soul made clear to me athwart its covering how jubilant it was to give me pleasure. For I behold it in the truthful mirror, that of himself all things parhelion makes, and none makes him parhelion of itself. A fain wouldst hear how long ago God placed me within the lofty garden, where this lady unto so long a stairway thee disposed. And how long to mine eyes it was a pleasure, and of the great disdain the proper cause, and the language that I used and that I made. Now, son of mine, the tasting of the tree not in itself was cause of so great exile, but solely the o'erstepping of the bounds. There whence thy lady moved Virgilius, Four thousand and three hundred and two circuits made by the sun, this counsel I desire. And him I saw return to all the lights of his highway nine hundred times and thirty, whilst I upon the earth was tarrying. The language that I spake was quite extinct before that in the work interminable the people under Nimrod were employed. For never more result of reasoning because of human pleasure that doth change, obedient to the heavens was durable. A natural action is it that man speaks, but whether thus or thus, doth nature leave to your own art, as seemeth best to you. There I descended to the infernal anguish, that was on earth the name of the chief good, from whom comes all the joy that wraps me round. He then was called, and that is proper, because the use of man is like a leaf on bough, which goeth on another cometh. Upon the mount that highest or the wave rises was I in life, or pure or sinful, from the first hour to that which is the second. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and Holy Ghost. All paradise began, so that the melody in every eight made me, what I beheld seemed unto me a smile of the universe, for my embriation found entrance through the hearing on the sight. Of joy! O oh, gladness inexpressible! O oh, perfect life of love and peacefulness! O oh, riches without hankering secure! Before mine eyes were standing the four torches enkindled, and the one that first had come began to make itself more luminous. 
and even such in semblance it became as Jupiter would become if he and Mars were birds, and they should interchange their feathers. That providence, which here distributeth season and service, in the blessed choir had silence upon every side imposed. He who usurps upon the earth my place, my place, my place, which vacant has become before the presence of the Son of God. With the same color which, through sun and verse, painteth the clouds at evening or at morn, beheld I then the whole of heaven suffused. And as a modest woman, who abides sure of herself, and at another's failing from listening only, timorous becomes. Even thus did Beatrice change countenance, and I believe in heaven was such eclipse, when suffered the supreme omnipotence. Thereafterward proceeded forth his words with voice so much transmuted from itself, the very countenance was not more changed. But in a quest of this delightful life, Sixtus and Pius, Urban and Calixtus, after much lamentation, shed their blood. Our purpose was not that on the right hand of our successors should in part be seated the Christian folk, in part upon the other. Nor that the keys which were to me confided should e'er become the escutcheon on a banner that should wage war on those who are baptized. Nor I be made the figure of a seal to privileges venal and mendacious, where I often redden and flash with fire. In garb of shepherds the rapacious wolves are seen from here above o'er all the pastures. O wrath of God, why dost thou slumber still? To drink our blood the Corsans and Gascons are making ready. O thou good beginning, unto how vile an end must thou needs fall! But the high providence, that with Scipio at Rome the glory of the world defended, will speedily bring aid, as I conceive. As with its frozen vapors downward falls in flakes our atmosphere, what time the horn of the celestial goat doth touch the sun? For in such a ray saw I the either become unflaked with the triumphant vapors which there together with us had remained. My sight was following up their semblances, unfollowed till the medium by excess the passing farther onward took from it. Where the lady, who beheld me freed from gazing upward, said to me, Cast down thy sight, and see how far thou art turned round. Since the first time that I had downward looked, I saw that I had moved through the whole arc which the first climate makes from midst to end. So that I saw the mad track of Ulysses' past gates on this side, well nigh the shore wherein became Europa a sweet burden. And of this threshing floor the sight to me were more unveiled, but the sun was proceeding under my feet, a sign and more removed. My mind in moored, which is dallying at all times with my lady, to bring back to her mine eyes was more than ever ardent. And if or art or nature has made bait to catch the eyes and so possess the mind, in human flesh or in its portraiture, all joined together would appear as not to the divine delight which shone upon me when to her smiling face I turned me round. The virtue that her look endowed me with from the fair nest of leaded tore me forth, and up into the swiftest heaven impelled me. Its parts exceeding full of life and lofty are also uniform, I cannot say which Beatrice selected for my place. But she, who was aware of my desire, began, the while she smiled so joyously that God seemed in her countenance to rejoice. And in this heaven there is no other where than in the mind divine wherein is kindled the love that turns it, and the power it reigns. Within a circle light and love embrace it, even as this doth the others, and that precinct he who encircles it alone controls. Its motion is not by another meted, but all the others measured are by this, as ten is by the half and by the fifth. And in what manner time in such a pot may have its roots, and in the rest its leaves, now unto thee can manifest be made. O covetousness, that mortals dost ingulf beneath thee so! that no one hath the power of drawing back his eyes from out thy waves. Full fairly blossoms in mankind the will, but the uninterrupted rain converts into abortive wildings the true plums. Fidelity and innocence are found only in children afterwards, they both take flight or the cheeks with down are covered. One while he prattles still, observes the fasts, who, 
when his tongue is loosed, forthwith devours whatever food under whatever moon. Another while he prattles, loves and listens unto his mother, who when speech is perfect, forthwith desires to see her in her grave. Even thus is swarthy made the skin so white in its first aspect of the daughter fair of him who brings the morn and leaves the night. Thou that it may not be a marvel to thee think that on earth there is no one who governs whence goes astray the human family. Their January be unwintered wholly by the centesimal on earth neglected, shall these supernal circles roar so loud. The tempest that has been so long awaited shall whirl the popes about where are the prows so that the fleet shall run its course direct. After the truth against the present life of miserable mortals was unfolded by her who doth impair it as my mind. As in a looking glass at taper's flame he sees who from behind is lighted by it, before he has it in his sight or thought, and turns him round to see if so the glass tell him the truth and sees that it accords therewith as doth a music with its meter. In similar wise my memory recollected that I did looking into those fair eyes, of which love made the springs to ensnare me. And as I turned me round, and mine were touched by that which is apparent in that volume, whenever on its gyre we gaze intent. A point beheld I, that was ring out light so acute, the sight which it enkindles must close perforce before such great acuteness. And whatsoever star seems smallest here would seem to be a moon if placed beside it. And as one star with another star is placed, perhaps at such a distance as appears a halo cincturing the light that paints it, when densest is the vapor that sustains it. Thus distant round the point a circle of fire so swiftly whirled that it would have surpassed whatever motion soonest girds the world. And this was by another circumstance, that by a third, the third, then by a fourth, by a fifth, the fourth, and then by a sixth, the fifth. The seventh followed thereupon in width so ample now, that Juno's messenger entire would be too narrow to contain it. Even so the eighth and ninth and every one more slowly moved, according as it was in number distant farther from the first. And that one had its flame most crystalline from which less distant was the stainless spark, I think because more with its truth imbued. But in the world of sense we can perceive that evermore the circles are diviner as they are from the center more remote. Wherefore if my desire is to be ended in this miraculous and angelic temple that has for confines only love and light, if thine own fingers unto such a knot be insufficient, it is no great wonder, so hard hath it become for want of trying. The circles corporal are wide and narrow according to the more or less of virtue which is distributed through all their parts. The greater goodness works the greater wheel, the greater wheel the greater body holds, if perfect equally are all its parts. Therefore this one which sweeps along with it the universe sublime doth correspond unto the circle which most loves and knows. On which account, if thou unto the virtue apply thy measure, not to the appearance of substances that unto thee seem round, even as remaineth splendid and serene the hemisphere of air, when Boris is blowing from that cheek where he is mildest, because is purified and resolved the rack that erst disturbed it, till the welkin laughs with all the beauties of its pageantry. Thus did I likewise, after that my lady had me provided with her clear response, and like a star in heaven the truth was seen. And soon as to a stop her words had come, not otherwise does iron scintillate when molten, than those circles scintillated. Their coruscation all the sparks repeated, and they so many were, the number makes more millions than the doubling of the chess. I heard them sing house in a choir by choir to the fixed point which holds them at the bay, and ever will, where they have ever been. The primal circles that have shown the seraphim and cherubim, thus rapidly they follow their own bonds, to be as like the point as most they can, and can as far as they are high in vision. Those other loves, that round about them go, thrones of the countenance divine are cold, because they terminate the primal tread. 
and thou shouldst know that they all have delight as much as their own vision penetrates the truth, in which all intellect finds rest. From this it may be seen how blessedness is founded in the faculty which sees, and not in that which loves, and follows next. And of this seeing merit is the measure, which is brought forth by grace, and by good will thus on from great to great doth it proceed. The second triad, which is germinating in such wise in this sempiternal spring that no nocturnal Aries dispose. Perpetually Hosanna warbles forth with threefold melody that sounds in three orders of joy with which it is entrained. The three divine are in this hierarchy, first the dominions, and the virtues next, and the third order is that of the powers. Then in the dance is twain penultimate the principalities and archangels wheel the last is holy of angelic sports. These orders upward all of them are gazing, and downward so prevail, that unto God they all attracted are and all attract. And Dionysius with so great desire to contemplate these orders set himself, he named them and distinguished them as I do. But Gregory afterwards dissented from him wherefore, as soon as he unclosed his eyes within this heaven, he at himself did smile. And if so much of secret truth a mortal proffered on earth, I would not have thee marvel, for he who saw it here revealed it to him. At what time both the children of Latona, surmounted by the ram and by the scales, together make a zone of the horizon. As long as from the time the zenith holds them in equipoise, till from that girdle both changing their hemisphere disturb the balance. So long her face depicted with a smile, did Beatrice keep silence while she gazed fixedly at the point which had overcome me. Not to acquire some good unto himself, which is impossible, but that his splendor in its resplendency may say, subsisto. And his eternity outside of time, outside all other limits, as it pleased him, into new loves the eternal love unfolded. Nor as if torpid did he lie before, for neither after nor before preceded the going forth of God upon these waters. Matter and form unmingled and conjoined came into being that had no defect, in as three arrows from a three-stringed bow. And as in glass in amber, or in crystal a sunbeam flashes so, that from its coming to its full being is no interval. So from its Lord did the triform effect ray forth into its being altogether without discrimination of beginning. Order was concreted and constructed in substances, and summit of the world where those were in the pure act was produced. Pure potentiality held the lowest part midway bound potentiality with act such bond that it shall never be unbound. Jerome has written unto you of angels created a long lapse of centuries or ever yet the other world was made. But written is this truth in many places by writers of the Holy Ghost, and thou shalt see it, if thou lookest well thereat. And even reason seeth it somewhat, for it would not concede that for so long could be the motors without their perfection. Now dost thou know both where and when these loves created were, and how so that extinct in thy desire already are three fires. Nor could one reach in counting unto twenty so swiftly, as a portion of these angels disturbed the subject of your elements. The rest remained, and they began this art which thou discernest, with so great delight that never from their circling do they cease. The occasion of the fall was the cursed presumption of that one whom thou hast seen by all the burden of the world constrained. Those whom thou here beholdest modest were to recognize themselves as of a goodness which made them apt for so much understanding. On which account their vision was exalted by the enlightening grace on their own merit, so that they have a full and steadfast will. I would not have thee doubt, but certain be, tis meritorious to receive this grace, according as the affection opens to it. Now round about in this consistory much mayst thou contemplate, if these my words be gathered up, without all further aid. But since upon the earth, throughout your schools, they teach that such is the angelic nature that it doth hear, and recollect, and will. More will I say. 
that thou mayst see and mix the truth that is confounded there below, equivocating in such like prelections. These substances, since in God's countenance they jocund were, turn not away their sight from that wherefrom not anything is hidden. Hence they have not their vision intercepted by object new, and hence they do not need to recollect through interrupted thought. So that below, not sleeping, people dream, believing they speak truth, and not believing and in the last is greater sin and shame. And even this above here is endured with less disdain than when is set aside the holy writ, or when it is distorted. They think not there how much of blood it costs to sow it in the world, and how he pleases who in humility keeps close to it. Each striveth for appearance, and doth make his own inventions, and these treated are by preachers, and the evangel holds its peace. One saith that the moon did backward turn in the passion of Christ, and interpose herself so that the sunlight reached not down below, and lies for of its own accord the light hid itself whence to Spaniards and to Indians, as to the Jews, did such eclipse respond. Florence has not so many lepe and binde as fables such as these, that every year are shouted from the pulpit back and forth, in such wise that the lambs who do not know, come back from pasture fed upon the wine, and not to see the harm doth not excuse them. Christ did not to his first disciples say, Go forth, unto the world preach idle tales, who but unto them a true foundation gave. And this so loudly sounded from their lips, that in the warfare to enkindle faith, they made of the evangel shields and lances. Now men go forth with jests and drolleries to preach, and if but well the people laugh, the hood puffs out, and nothing more is asked. But in the cow there nestles such a bird, that, if the common people were to see it, they would perceive what pardons they confide in. For which so great on earth has grown the folly, that, without proof of any testimony, to each indulgence they would flock together. By this Saint Anthony his pig doth fatten, on many others, who are worse than pigs, paying him money without mark of coinage. But since we have digressed abundantly, turn back thine eyes forthwith to the right path, so that the way be shortened with the time. This nature doth so multiply itself in numbers, that there never yet was speech nor mortal fancy that can go so far. And if thou notest that which is revealed by Daniel, thou wilt see that in his thousands number determinate is kept concealed. The primal light, that all irradiates it, by modes as many is received therein, as are the splendors wherewith it is mated. And synesmic as on the act conceptive the affection followeth, of love the sweetness therein diversely fervid is or tepid. The height behold now in the amplitude of the eternal power, since it hath made itself so many mirrors, where tis broken. Perchance six thousand miles remote from us is glowing the sixth hour, and now this world inclines its shadow almost to a level. When the midheaven begins to make itself so deep to us, that here under a star ceases to shine so far down as this depth, and as advances bright exceedingly the hand made of the sun, the heaven is closed light after light to the most beautiful. Not otherwise the triumph, which forever plays round about the point that vanquished me, seeming enclosed by what itself encloses. Little by little from my vision faded, where it to turn mine eyes on Beatrice, my seeing nothing and my love constrained me. If what has hitherto been said of her were all concluded in a single praise, scant would it be to serve the present turn. Not only does the beauty I beheld transcend ourselves, but truly I believe its maker only may enjoy it all. Languish do I confess me by this passage more than by problem of his theme was ever or come the comic or the tragic poet. For as the sun the sight that trembles most, even so the memory of that sweet smile my mind depriveth of its very self. From the first day that I beheld her face in this life, to the moment of this look, the sequence of my song has ne'er been severed. But now perforce this sequence must desist from following her beauty with my verse, as every artist at his uttermost. 
such as I leave her to a greater fame than any of my trumpet, which is bringing its arduous matter to a final close. Light intellectual replete with love, love of true good replete with ecstasy, ecstasy that transcendeth every sweetness. Even as a sudden lightning that disperses the visual spirits, so that it deprives the eye of impress from the strongest objects. Thus round about me flashed a living light, and left me swathed around with such a veil of its effulgence that I nothing saw. Ever the love which quite of this heaven welcomes into itself with such salute, to make the candle ready for its flame. No sooner had within me these brief words and entrance found, than I perceived myself to be uplifted over my own power. And I with vision new rekindled me such that no light woke ever is so pure but that mine eyes were fortified against it. And light I saw in fashion of a river folded with its effulgence, twixt two banks depicted with an admirable spring. Out of this river issued living sparks, and on all sides sank down into the flowers like unto rubies that are set in gold. And then, as if inebriated with the odors, they plunged again into the wondrous torrent, and as one entered issued forth another. There is no babe that leaps so suddenly with face towards the milk, if he awake much later than his usual custom is. That is I did, that I might make better mirror still of mine eyes, down stooping to the wave which flows, that we therein be better made. And even as the penthouse of mine eyelids drank of it, it forthwith appeared to me out of its length to be transformed too round. Then as a folk who have been under masks seem other than before, if they divest the semblance not their own they disappeared in. Thus into greater pomp were changed for me the floats and the sparks, so that I saw both of the courts of heaven made manifest. O oh, splendor of God! By means of which I saw the lofty triumph of the realm veracious, give me the power to say how it I saw. There is a light above, which visible makes the Creator unto every creature, who only in beholding him has peace. And it expands itself in circular form to such extent that its circumference would be too large a girdle for the sun. The semblance of it is all made of rays reflected from the top of primal motion, which takes therefrom vitality and power. And as a hill and water at its base mirrors itself, as if to see its beauty when affluent most in verdure and in flowers. So, ranged aloft all round about the light, mirrored I saw in more ranks than a thousand all who above there have from us returned. And if the lowest row collect within it so great a light, how vast the amplitude is of this rose in its extremest leaves. My vision and the vastness on the height lost not itself, but comprehended all the quantity and quality of that glideness. There near and far nor add nor take away for there where God immediately doth govern, the natural law and not is relevant. Into the yellow of the rose eternal that spreads, and multiplies, and breathes an odor of praise unto the eververnal sun. Behold how vast the circuit of our city! Behold our seats so filled to overflowing, that here henceforward are few people wanting. On that great throne where thine eyes are fixed for the crown's sake already placed upon it, before thou surpassed at this wedding feast. Shall sit the soul that is to be Augustus on earth of noble Henry, who shall come to redress Italy ere she be ready. Blind covetousness, that casts its spell upon you, has made you like unto the little child, who dies of hunger and drives off the nurse. And in the sacred forum then shall be a prefect such, that openly or covert on the same road he will not walk with him. But long of God he will not be endured in holy office, he shall be thrust down where Simon Magus is for his deserts. In fashion then as of a snow-white rose displayed itself to me the saintly host, whom Christ in his own blood had made his bride. But the other host, that flying sees and sings the glory of him who doth and him are it, and the goodness that created it so noble. Even as a swarm of bees that sinks in flowers one moment, and the next returns again to where its labor is to sweetness turned. Sank into the great flower that is adorned with leaves so many, 
and thence rescended to where it love abideth evermore. Their faces had they all of living flame, and wings of gold, and all the rest so white no snow unto that limit doth attain. From bench to bench into the flower descending, they carried something of the peace and ardor which by the fanning of their flanks they won. Nor did the interposing twixt the flower and what was or it of such plenitude of flying shapes impede the sight and splendor. Because the light divine so penetrates the universe, according to its merit, that naught can be an obstacle against it. This realm secure and full of gladsomeness, crowded with ancient people and with modern, unto one mark had all its look and love. Of train of light, that in a single star sparkling upon their sight so satisfies them, look down upon our tempest here below. If the barbarians, coming from some region that every day by Hellas is covered, revolving with her son whom she delights in, beholding Rome and all her noble works, were wonderstruck, what time the later and above all mortal things was eminent. A who too the divine had from the human, from time unto eternity, had come from Florence to a people just and sane. But what amazement must I have been filled! Truly between this and the joy, it was my pleasure not to hear and to be mute. And as a pilgrim who delighteth him in gazing round the temple of his vow, and hopes some day to retell how it was. So through the living light my way pursuing directed I mine eyes o'er all the ranks, now up, now down and now all round about. Faces I saw of charity persuasive, embellished by his light and their own smile, and attitudes adorned with every grace. The general form of paradise already my glance had comprehended as a whole, in no part hitherto remaining fixed. And round I turned me with rekindled wish my lady to interrogate of things concerning which my mind was in suspense. One thing I meant, Another answered me I thought I should see Beatrice, and saw an old man habited like the glorious people. O'erflowing was he in his eyes and cheeks with joy benign in attitude of pity as to a tender father is becoming. She, where is she? Instantly I said once he to put an end to thy desire, me Beatrice hath sent from mine own place. Without reply I lifted up mine eyes, and saw her, as she made herself a crown reflecting from herself the eternal rays. Not from that region which the highest thunders is any mortal eye so far removed, in whatsoever sea it deepest sinks. As there from Beatrice my sight, but this was nothing unto me because her image descended not to me by medium blurred. Of whatsoever things I have beheld, as coming from thy power and from thy goodness, I recognize the virtue and the grace. Thou from a slave hast brought me unto freedom, by all those ways, by all the expedients, whereby thou hadst the power of doing it. Thus I implored, and she, so far away, smiled, as it seemed, and looked once more at me, then unto the eternal fountain turned. Fly with thine eyes all round about this garden, for seeing it will discipline thy sight farther to mount along the array divine. As he who peradventure from Croatia cometh to gaze at our Veronica, who through its ancient fame is never sated, but says in thought the while it is displayed. My Lord, Christ Jesus, God of very God, now was your semblance made like unto this? Even such was I while gazing at the living charity of the man, who in this world by contemplation tasted of that peace. Began he, will not be known to thee by keeping ever thine eyes below here on the lowest place. I lifted up mine eyes, and as at morn the oriental part of the horizon surpasses that wherein the sun goes down. Thus, as if going with mine eyes from vale to mount, I saw a part in the remoteness surpass in splendor all the other front. And even as there where we await the pole that paid and drove badly, blazes more the light, and is on either side diminished. So likewise that pacific oriflamme gleamed brightest in the center, and each side in equal measure did the flame abate. And at that center, with their wings expanded, more than a thousand jubilant angels saw, each differing in effulgence and in kind. I saw there at their sports and at their songs a beauty smiling, which the gladness was within the eyes of all the other saints. 
and if I had in speaking as much wealth as in imagining, I should not dare to attempt the smallest part of its delight. Bernard, as soon as he beheld mine eyes fixed and intent upon its fervid fervor, his own with such affection turned to her, that it made mine more ardent to behold. Absorbed in his delight, that contemplator assumed the willing office of a teacher, and gave beginning to these holy words. Within that order which the third seats make is seated Rachel, lower than the other, with Beatrice, in manner as thou seest. Sarah, Rebecca, Judith, and her who was ancestress of the singer, who for dole of the misdeed said Miser May. Canst thou behold from seat to seat descending down in gradation, as with each one's name I through the rows go down from leaf to leaf, and downward from the seventh row, even as above the same, succeed the Hebrew women, dividing all the tresses of the flower. Because, according to the view which faith in Christ had taken, these are the partition by which the sacred stairways are divided. Upon this side, where perfect is the flower with each one of its petals, seated are those who believed in Christ who was to come. Upon the other side, where intersected with vacant spaces are the semicircles, are those who look to Christ already come. And as, upon this side, the glorious seat of the Lady of Heaven and the other seats below it, such a great division make, so opposite doth that of the great John, who, ever holy, desert and martyrdom endured, and afterwards two years in hell. And under him thus to divide were chosen Francis, and Benedict, and Augustine, and down to us the rest from round to round. Behold now the high providence divine, for one and other aspect of the faith in equal measure shall this garden fill. And know that downward from that rank which cleaves midway the sequence of the two divisions, not by their proper merit are they seated, but by another's under fixed conditions, for these are spirits one and all assoiled before they any true election had. Well canst thou recognize it in their faces, and also in their voices, puerile, if thou regard them well and hearken to them. Now doubtest thou, undoubting thou art silent, but I will loosen for thee the strong bond in which thy subtle fancies hold thee fast. Within the amplitude of this domain no casual point can possibly find place, no more than sadness can, or thirst, or hunger. For by eternal law has been established whatever thou beholdest, so that closely the ring is fitted to the finger here. And therefore are these people, festinate unto true life, not sign cause it here more and less excellent among themselves. The king by means of whom this realm reposes in so great love and in so great delight that no will ventureth to ask for more. In his own joyous aspect every mind creating, at his pleasure dowers with grace diversely and let here the effect suffice. And this is clearly and expressly noted for you in holy scripture, and those twins who in their mother had their anger roused. According to the color of the hair, therefore, with such a grace the light supreme consented that they worthily be crowned. Without then any merit of their deeds stationed are they in different gradations, differing only in their first acuteness. Tis true that in the early centuries, with innocence, to work out their salvation sufficient was the faith of parents only. After the earlier ages were completed, behoved it that the males by circumcision unto their innocent wings should virtue a but after that the time of grace had come without the baptism absolute of Christ, such innocence below there was retained. On her did I behold so great a gladness rain down, borne onward in the holy minds created through that altitude to fly. And the same love that first descended there, Ave Maria, gracia plena, singing in front of her his wings expanded wide, unto the canticle divine responded from every part the court beatified, so that each sight became cerner for it. Thus I again recourse had to the teaching of that one who delighted him in Mary as doth the star of morning in the sun. Because he is the one who bore the palm down unto Mary, when the Son of God to take our burden on himself decreed. But now come onward with thine eyes, as I speaking shall go, 
and note the great patricians of this most just and merciful of empires. Those two that sit above their most in rapture as being very near unto Augusta are as it were the two roots of this rose. He who upon the left is near her place the father is, by whose audacious taste the human species so much bitter tastes. Upon the right thou seest that ancient father of holy church, into whose keeping Christ the keys committed of this lovely flower. And you all the evil days beheld before his death, of her the beauteous bride who with the spear and with the nails was one. Beside him sits, and by the other rests that leader under whom on manna live the people in great, fickle, and stiff -necked. Opposite Peter seest thou Anna seated, so well content to look upon her daughter, her eyes she moves not while she sings Hosanna. And opposite the eldest household father Lucius sits, she who thy lady moved when to rush downward thou didst bend thy brows. But since the moments of thy vision fly, here will we make full stop, as a good tailor who makes the gown according to his cloth. And unto the first love will turn our eyes, but looking upon him thou penetrate as far as possible through his effulgence. Truly lest pure adventure thou recede, moving thy wings believing to advance, by prayer behoves it that grace be obtained. Verdi so can't say. Thou art the one who such nobility to human nature gave, that its creator did not disdain to make himself its creature. Within thy womb rekindled was the love, by heat of which in the eternal peace after such wise this flower has germinated. Here unto us thou art a noonday torch of charity, and below there among mortals thou art the living fountainhead of hope. Lady, thou art so great, and so prevailing, that he who wishes grace, nor runs to thee, his aspirations without wings would fly. Not only thy benignity gives succor to him who asketh it, but oftentimes forerunneth of its own accord the asking. In thee compassion is, in thee is pity, in thee magnificence, in thee night's waiter of goodness is in any creature. Now doth this man, who from the lowest depth of the universe as far as here has seen one after one the spiritual lives, Supplicate thee through grace for so much power that with his eyes he may uplift himself higher towards the uttermost salvation. And I, who never burned for my own seeing more than I do for his, all of my prayers proffer to thee, and pray they come not short. That thou wouldst scatter from him every cloud of his mortality so with thy prayers, that the chief pleasure be to him displayed. Still farther do I pray thee, Queen, who canst whatever thou wilt that sound thou mayst preserve after so great a vision his affections. The eyes beloved and revered of God, fastened upon the speaker, showed to us how grateful unto her our prayers devout. Then unto the eternal light they turned, on which it is not credible could be by any creature bent and eyes so clear. And I, who to the end of all desires was now approaching, even as I ought the ardor of desire within me ended. Bernard was beckoning unto me, unsmiling, that I should upward look, but I already was of my own accord such as he wished. Because my sight, becoming purified, was entering more and more into the ray of the high light which of itself is true. From that time forward what I saw was greater than our discourse, that to such vision yields, and yields the memory unto such excess. Even as he is who seeth in a dream, and after dreaming them printed passion remains, unto his mind the rest returns not. Even such am I, for almost utterly ceases my vision, and distilleth yet within my heart the sweetness born of it. Even thus the snow is in the sun and sealed, even thus upon the wind in the light leaves were the soothings of the civil lost. O light supreme, that dost so far uplift thee from the conceits of mortals, to my mind of what thou didst appear relent a little, and make my tongue of so great puissance, that but a single sparkle of thy glory it may bequeath unto the future people. For by returning to my memory somewhat, and by a little sounding in these verses, more of thy victory shall be conceived. I think the keenness of the living ray which I endured would have bewildered me, if but mine eyes had been averted from it. 
and I remember that I was more bold on this account to bear, so that I joined my aspect with the glory infinite. O grace abundant, by which I presume to fix my sight upon the light eternal, so that the seeing I consumed therein. I saw that in its depth far down is lying bound up with love together in one volume, what through the universe and leaves is scattered. Substance, and accident, and their operations, all interfused together in such wise that what I speak of is one simple light. The universal fashion of this not methinks I saw, since more abundantly in saying this I feel that I rejoice. One moment is more lethargy to me than five and twenty centuries to the emprise that startled Neptune with the shade of Argo. My mind in this wise holy in suspense, steadfast, immovable, attentive gazed, and evermore with gazing grew enkindled. In presence of that light one such becomes that two would draw there from four other prospect it is impossible your consent. Shorter henceforward will my language fall of what I yet remember than any infant who still his tongue doth moisten at the breast. Not because more than one unmingled semblance was in the living light on which I looked for it is always what it was before. But through the sight that fortified itself in me by looking, one appearance only to me was ever changing as I changed. Within the deep and luminous subsistence of the high light appeared to me three circles, of threefold color and of one dimension. And by the second seemed the first reflected as iris is by iris, and the third seemed fire that equally from both is breed. Oh, how all speech is feeble and falls short of my conceit, and this to what I saw is such, tis not enough to call it little. O oh, light etern, soul and thyself that dwellest, so knowest thyself, and known unto thyself, and knowing, lovest and smallest on thyself. That circulation, which being thus conceived, appeared in thee as a reflected light, when somewhat contemplated by mine eyes. Within itself, of its own very color, seemed to me painted with our effigy, wherefore my sight was all absorbed therein. As the geometrician, who endeavors to square the circle, and discovers not, by taking thought, the principle he wants, even such was I at that new apparition I wished to see how the image to the circle conformed itself, and how it there finds place. But my own wings were not enough for this had it not been that then my mind there smote a flash of lightning wherein came its wish. Ere vigor failed the lofty fantasy but now was turning my desire and will, even as a wheel that equally is moved. Appendix Six Sonnets on Dandy's Divine Comedy by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow 18,071,882 Oft have I seen at some cathedral door a laborer, pausing in the dust and heat, lay down his burden, and with reverent feet enter, and cross himself, and on the floor kneel to repeat his paternoster, or far off the noises of the world retreat the loud vociferations of the street become an undistinguishable roar. So as I enter here from day to day, and leave my burden at this minster gate, kneeling in prayer, and not ashamed to pray, the tumult of the time disconsolate to an articulate murmurs dies away, while eternal ages watch and wait. How strange the sculptures that adorn these towers! This crowd of statues, in whose folded sleeves birds build their nests while canopied with leaves parvis on portal bloom like trellised bowers, and the vast minster seems a cross of flowers. But fiends and dragons on the gargoyled eaves watch the dead Christ between the living thieves, and underneath the traitor Judas lowers. Ah! From what agonies of heart and brain, what exultations trampling on despair, what tenderness, what terrors, what hate of wrong, what passionate outcry of a soul in pain uppers this poem of the earth and air, this may I have a miracle of song. I enter, and I see thee in the gloom of the long aisles, O poet Saturne, and strive to make my steps keep pace with thine. That air is filled with some unknown perfume, the congregation of the dead make room for thee to pass the votive tapers shine like rooks that haunt ravenous groves of pine, the hovering echoes fly from tomb to tomb.
From the confessionals I hear arise rehearsals of forgotten tragedies and lamentations from the crypts below and then a voice celestial that begins with the pathetic words. Although your sins as scarlet be, and ends with, if, with a snow-white veil and garments as a flame, she stands before thee, who so long ago filled thy young heart with passion and the from which thy song in all its splendors came. And while with stern rebuke she speaks thy name, the ice about thy heart melts as the snow on mountain heights, and in swift overflow comes gushing from thy lips in sobs of shame. A makest full confession and a gleam as of the dawn on some dark forest cast seems on thy lifted forehead to increase lady and you know the remembered dream and the forgotten sorrow bring at last that perfect pardon which is perfect peace. I lift mine eyes, and all the windows blaze with forms of saints and holy men who died, here martyred and hereafter glorified, and the great rose upon its leaves displays Christ's triumph. And the angelic round lays, with splendor upon splendor multiplied, and Beatrice again at Dante's side no more rebukes, but smiles her words of praise. And then the organ sounds, and unseen choirs sing the old Latin hymns of peace and love and benedictions of the Holy Ghost, and the melodious bells among the spires or all the housetops, and through heaven above proclaim the elevation of the host, a star of morning and of liberty, a bringer of the light whose splendor shines above the darkness of the Apennines, foreigner of the day that is to be. The voices of the city and the sea, the voices of the mountains and the pines, repeat thy song, till the familiar lines are footpaths for the thought of Italy. Thy fame is blown abroad from all the heights, through all the nations, and a sound is heard, as of a mighty wind, and men devout, strangers of Rome and the new proselytes. In their own language hear thy wondrous word, and many are amazed and many doubt.